Hello? Hello? Oh, hello? 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 Damn, no one says hello back. Cringe. Cringe. Just rude. <sighs> Yikes. <laughs> D how have we how have we already done a D colon within the first minute of streaming? A D colon within a minute? This just makes no sense. How is that even possible? <laughs> I pet detective, thank you so much for the four months. Hell yeah, dude. We're back on the grind. We're back on the grind. I want this dude's weapon. Now I want... He didn't drop it. Is this going to spawn at 30? There it is. 25. I gotta dodge that dude or... Or I will die. Candles, we have a sensitive stream? Is it a sensitive stream today? The only thing I'd be sensitive about is Desu's perf. Desu's disgusting rust program. Didn't have to send that to me, but you did. So that was fucking nice. Yeah, way to be a way to be a dick, okay? Oh god, I was just going to get the health too. I don't like this map. It's this map's fault. It's not me. It's not me being bad. Candles arrived? Yeah, the candles are here. And they are awesome. Uh... I need to, like, get my weapon. I need to get my weapon. I need to get some ammo. I need to get some health. And we need to make some shit happen. Do, do. Do 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 Stop abu abusing the machine gun. It's pretty good. Let's be honest, it's pretty damn good. I need the mortar. This is like a new zoonotic map and I don't know it. Oh fuck me. Do 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 I put the maps on five minutes. I'm actually gonna lose this battle. Holy shit. Let's go, let's go get some ammo. Let's do this the right way. Unsafe. Yeah, Desu's code is unsafe. Okay, we got this. We'll go get the mortar. The mortar is right here. It's not spawned, so we're fucked. I also turned it down to four bots. I think four bots is a better amount. Oh my god, that rocket came right in my face, dude. Oh, I spawned right down here. Nice. Without that mortar, I'm I'm desperate. This map seems really low for uh, health, to be honest. Someone just picked up that mortar. Tragic. Oh, he stole my kill! That was my kill! <laughs> Got scammed! Okay, we got the mortar. We got a reasonable amount of health. I don't like that he just got that health. I'm out of ammo. Oh, shit. Dude has a rocket. Uh, and he followed me. <laughs> oh fuck yeah get fucked noobs <laughs> noobs I'll pick up that rocket I don't even want the rocket for myself but I, I want to make sure that these bots don't have it because these bots fuck with that rocket oh god I killed myself one minute left Oh, we won. Oh my god, we might not win. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. We might not win. There we go. That should secure our win. <laughs> it's 
such a such a short oh god i'm dead oh do i kill this dude do i go for the greed now that he has aggro on someone else oh this dude has the fucking necks let's laser him oh i'm so dead oh no i'm gonna lose who got two kills who got two kills that fast holy shit oh my god how did they know to get health Oh my god, we lost. We lost by five kills. Okay, that dude somehow got five kills instantly. Holy shit. Okay, this map sucks. <laughs> how the fuck? Well, how did that bot rack up? What did it get? It got seven kills in what? 40 seconds? Jesus Christ. It's the map. It's the map. Let's go to... How many of these do I know? Let's go to Final Rage. Lost against bots! Okay, okay, we know this map, kind of. Let's, uh, let's go get stocked up on shit. Let's just go immediately get stocked. Okay, the bots... This is the problem with weapons respawning after 30 seconds. Okay, it wasn't 30. That was 15. Uh, where's the mortar? Oh, that's a new portal. I really need to get the mortar. This dude's about to teleport. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm playing like shit! Oh! Oh! Oh, I need health! Ah! No! No! Holy shit. Dude, these bots are wild, man. It's really hard. I really want this sniper. Oh, and they just picked up the health? I feel like I'm topping people off so they take all the damage. Oh, the bots know to, like, camp the spawn of the items. Dude, they never knew how to do that in Nexius. Dude, these bots are very smart. These are, like, Twitch chat bots. Dude, they do so- they- oh my god, they're unreal! These bots are so much better than normal players. <laughs> it's actually ridiculous, dude. How are these bots better than normies? Where's the mortar? That's the rocket. Woo! Okay, we got this. Where's the mortar on this map? Down here in the corner. Ooh! Oh my god, dude. You just get instantly killed. Holy shit. How are these bots so good? This is unreal, dude. Oh my god. I can't even pick up fucking resources because they, they camp the whole map. Dude, these rockets. Oh my god. How are these bots so good? Jesus Christ! Dude, these bots have full control of the map. I can't get anything. There, I finally got the mortar, but this dude fucking almost kills me. And that- What? The dude picking up the fucking necks right under me. Okay, okay. We're established now. Let's cool off. We're good. We're good, okay? We've got the high ground, we've got the map, we've got a little bit of ammo. Someone's gonna steal that kill from me once again. Thank God, that now someone didn't steal a kill. Dude, what the fuck? How are people getting all these kills? I'm doing, I'm hitting them with the necks, taking off 80 health, and then by the time I get to them around a corner, they're dead. Who killed him? Who, who even killed him? <laughs> Let's see, okay, are we good? We have health. Let's start, oh my god. No one died from that? Ah! Dude, 
Dude, people die so fast. I can't find anyone on the map. Let's find someone. Dude, that did got me with a good comp. I'm gonna lose this match. Holy shit. Oh, uh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? How do I clutch it? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Oh my God, dude. Oh God, oh God, I need this kill. I need this kill. I need to not throw away a kill. How do they know to camp this shit? How are these bots so good? <laughs> Fuck. Sudden death? What does that mean? What's sudden death? Oh, okay, it's just the- it's the first person to get a frag, and I had no one on my side of the map? How's that fair? Will you be at DEF CON? No. No. Alright, let's go to Zoilent. Let's fuck these dudes up. We're gonna- we're gonna- we're gonna show these scrubs. How to play this fucking game. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh my God, I already messed up. Okay, there we go. We got the vortex. We need to get the mortar. The mortar's already taken. That leaves us with pretty bad combos here. Got the electro. Oh. It feels so bad. I keep getting people so low and then people steal the kills. Get me out of here. Dude, how does that- okay, the rocket spawns right behind me and gives it to the bot? Oh my god, this is such a scam. Dude, these bots are so good. I really would like the mortar, dude. I need it. It's the only way I know how to play this game! <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna lose. I'm literally gonna lose. I, I think there's just too many bots, man. This is too chaotic. People are like, Dude, I've hit- How many of these next shots have I hit and I'm not getting any kills off them? Fuck, dude. That might put him off the edge. No. God, these bots are wild, dude. I need to disable that menu. I haven't been able to get them order because there's just, there's too many people on this map, dude. Too small of a map for this many people. There it is. Now we can start fucking people up. Yeah, now they got no fucking chance. Now they look like little bitches. Uh-huh. How did... Was that a spawn? Oh my god, I'm so low health. Oh, please give me health. Hopefully this is spawned. It's not. Shit. Yep, someone's gonna get that kill. Oh, I... I landed on the health. Okay, that was big. That was big. Definitely planned. Du -du -du. Du -du -du -du. 
Really? I got none of those kills? I landed so much damage, I got none of those kills? Woo! Rip. Dude, I'm still gonna lose this. What the ever-loving fuck are these bots? How are they finding these kills? Are they just suiciding for kills? They have to be. I killed myself. Yeah, they're just suiciding. We need to like turn up respawn times. These bots shouldn't be able to just kill themselves, dude. That's not fair. The bots are literally feeding each other. The Crylink? Yeah. I'm not very good with this weapon. It's arguably not a great weapon. Machine gun? I can make this work. Ban the botters. Ah! Ah! Oh my god, dude! He didn't even drop it too after I killed him. Fucking cringe, dude. All right, we won. We won a round. We won a round. All right. Jesus. My man is perfect even while playing. I got pretty lucky there. Let's be honest. Uh, what do I want here? Warfare is not a great map for me. Let's try it. Quit while you're ahead. Nah, these bots literally can never win. I'll get, I'll get map. Okay, I need to turn that shit off. Settings. Inputs. Console, 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 con console, 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 console. Okay. All right, we're already starting behind. We're going to get this health and we're going to we're going to fuck people up. Did no one pick it up for that long? When did it despawn? There it is. 12. All right, let's go. Let's go, chat. Let's fucking go. This time, I'm pulling out all the stops. Pulling out all the stops this time. We need to get we need to get all of our weapons right now. Let's get the Vortex. There's no Vortex on this map. Okay, so we're fucked, because that's the only way I know how to play this game. Woo! I didn't get that kill? Are you fucking kidding me, dude? Oh. Oh. Unbelievably scammed. Unbelievably scammed. I did like 200 health to that dude, and I didn't get the kill. What a scam of a game. Uh, I think machine gun's gonna be good on this map. Good. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We're falling behind, we're falling behind. We gotta get this kill. Oh my god, I'm not gonna get the kill. Nope, someone else took it. Jesus Christ. How, dude? Every time someone else gets the kill. This is unreal. I swear to God, I'm not gonna get that kill. I didn't get that kill! Are you kidding me? What the fuck? How is that fair? Dude, they're like sliding, they, they like know how much health the other players have and they're sliding into those DMs. Okay, I got lucky there. I got two kills I didn't deserve. Just click on their heads. Ah! Ah! Okay, this weapon, they tuned this weapon. This weapon's way better than it used to be. That weapon used to suck. I'm fucked on health right now. Oh my god, are you, someone got that kill? He like landed in that balcony and there was someone there to receive him, to kill him? 
Holy shit, dude, this is tilting. I'm better than this. I'm better than this. I'm better than this. It's not me who's washed up. It's it's the bots cheating, okay? I am so fucked in this corner here. Oh, I cannot go back there. Oh, they removed the portal. There used to be a portal there. There's someone behind me. I also am playing without sound, so that does make it a little difficult. Or the sound is so quiet, it, it's basically useless. Oh, I got the rocket launcher? Okay, I can, I can, I can make the rocket launcher do damage. I don't even know where it was. I must have picked it up off someone. Oh. This is cringe. Cringe incarnate. Am I gonna win? I might not win! Holy shit! I might not win! I have 10 kills in a row and I might not win. These bots do so well on this, in, in this environment, where there's just so many things to kill and they can just clean things up. Because they don't get punished for dying. Ooh, I'm dead. Somehow not. Oh, easy. Get fucked, noobs. Get fucked, noobs. Woo! 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 Kill secured. Dude. Like, I had one death. And I'm still sweating. That's the problem with, like, having too many players on one map is you can play, like, shit and die a lot, and it's still okay. Like, if that was heads up, like, if this is heads up, I'm just going to crush these bots. Do you, do you want to see what happens when I play these bots heads up? Is that what you want to see, chat? You want to see what happens? Let's try one bot. Uh, w what do we want to do? Let's try godlike. There's a chance that these are really hard. Uh, and I think this will start on the map that I suck at. All right, let's go. So now it's more about map control. It's more about getting pickups. And this is the more competitive form of this game. Like, no one, no one plays this game. So I need to find... I literally have never been on this map before so i don't even know how it works so i need to get the fuck out of here because i am not ready for that fight all right until i get better gear i'm not ready for that fight and it's totally okay because unlike the other mode i'm not getting punished by not fighting right now i can just work on map control i can work on building things up i can figure out where the vortex is this dude's blasting my ass but really what i want to do is i want to learn this map I want to figure out where I am. Okay, there's the vortex. So this is big. So now we have the vortex. Now we can go on O. Okay. Already hit that shot. Oh my god, dude. Those... Holy shit, they're good. Okay, I still had them though. I killed myself with splash damage. That was a mistake. But that's okay. We're really not that far behind. We're only one kill behind. It's not like he's gaining 50 kills every time I'm not out fucking around. So, he'll probably come to this, I would imagine. That would probably be programmed in the bots. I probably shouldn't leave it. There we go. I got this. So, now I go on the prowl. And I have this. Bam. Holy shit. I did 240 damage and he didn't die. Unreal. Yeah, I got the fuck out of here, kid. No chance, dude. No chance. Show yourself. Oof. That was a mistake. That was a misplay. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's start building up resources again. I want to find that mortar. It's apparently over there. I don't know how to navigate this map. I've literally never seen this map before, so this is uh, a little tough. Okay, let's get some health. Let's get some armor. 
There's like a mini health. Okay, we're like pretty geared up for a fight. So let's get in there. Now I just need to find him. If I was playing with sound, I'd be able to probably just tell where he is by vo uh, by hearing him. Fuck! I could have totally had that. That was... Okay, these bots are really good, dude. These bots are so good. You could actually get so good playing offline with these bots. Okay, the mortar's right next to that. Here's the mega power-up, which I missed. And he took it, which is really, really, really big loss for me. Uh, he has a huge health advantage on me right now. Oh! Oh! Oh my god, he's so tanky. Let's go. I needed that ammo as well. Let's get some health. Holy shit, dude. Dude, these bots are so good. And they're not like, they're not like aimbot bots that are like good, but, but unfair. Like, I feel like all of these fights I could have won if I played better. That's what's wild. They really seem to stock up on health, which is not something that bots normally do. Like, traditionally in games, bots don't really prep. Like, they just, their accuracy improves, but they don't, like, strategically do things better. I would like to find him while I have this power-up. Where is he? Okay. He evaded me for 30 seconds? Uh, do I pursue him here? Maybe. I want this. This map's a little big for... God. Damn it, dude. Woo! 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 God, they're so good! Holy shit! Holy shit! I need the next... I need to get a kill now. Well, I don't need to. It'll go into sudden death. Oh, he killed himself at some point. Uh, let's go get the rockets. Dude, these... Holy shit, dude. These bots are wild. You could actually get so good. So I played against bots for like years offline until I actually played online. And then it turns out I got really good from bots. Like, literally the first time I played the game on... Um, did I somehow close the game? <laughs> I swear I wasn't about to die. We'll go right back in. I played on uh, Unreal Terminant bot. Ter terminant? Yes, Terminant bots. Uh, what button did I possibly hit there? Or did it crash? Yeah, I, I definitely didn't even get close to F10. It crashed because that setting didn't save. Weird. Okay, we'll do a 10 minute battle and we'll start programming here. Create one bot. God, uh, uh, godlike. One bot. Just me. Let's set a. Dude, why does this not drag? Okay, nice. Uh, frag limit. I could play to like 15 frags. Let's do that. Let's do 15 frags. And then we'll maybe switch until we get a good map. Dude, this game's so good. CSGO with nice shaders. I don't know why the load times are so bad. They never used to be this bad, and they did something. It makes no sense. They probably, uh, they probably converted it to JSON or something dumb. And then it, like, loads twice. Okay, uh, what map is this? Okay, this is the map that I've kind of been learning now <laughs> over the past two streams because we've played this map, what, three times now? So I think I know where everything is now. At least all of the things I care about. So let's try and get the next. Let's try and get the mortar, which we'll be able to get right around here. And then I need to really make sure I don't kill myself by running into lava like I've been doing. I have no idea what weapons he has right now. He has the rocket. Um, the bots do pretty well with the rockets. If I keep distance, I can dodge the rockets. 
So, I guess we're playing this to 15 frags. So really what I want to do is just play well. Okay, that's cool. I can get up top doing that. This map might be a little too big for two. Because I can't find... Oh, there he is. Holy shit! Woo! Woo! I hit him with that. Okay, he's really weak right now. Do I go on the prowl? Holy shit, these bots are insane! And that wasn't unreasonable. Like, that would have happened in, like, a, a relatively good game. He closed the distance. He got his melee off. I am thoroughly impressed. Now, I should get control of this, but he's here! He's here! He's here to defend! Oh my god! Fuck! Now he has that. Now he's gonna probably get two kills on me, and there's, there's literally nothing I can do. Um... He might come down that way. No. Okay, sweet. Holy shit, dude. These bots are wild. Uh, we've got like uh, 15 seconds we probably want to kill. Just get resources. Yeah, we can't get hit by him here. He will one hit us and he just grabbed that. Oh, fuck, we're dead. Dude, I, dude they stock up so much health. He should be really weak right now. How does he have so much health? Okay. They don't, like, spawn with more health, do they? Like, dude, how does he have 300 health every time I engage him? I mean, I should be doing that, but I'm bad. I don't have the map control. Let's get good ammo. We've got good ammo on that. We need to get the mortar now. And we've only gotten one kill? Okay. Let's, uh, let's get comfy. Let's set up shop, and we'll establish some dominance here. We'll get the mortar. I really don't want to engage him until I have the mortar and the vortex. Okay. And he has every spawn right now. Every single health and ammo spawn. So I want to get control over this. So I need to see when this spawns. And I need to get a timer running. Holy shit! God damn, they're strong, dude! <sighs> Oh my god, he just got that. Uh, but I can pick up my old necks. God damn it, dude! Oh! Bah! Bah! Oh! 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 My god, dude! I don't want to move off this, but I want to move! I want to move! I don't want to be standing here! Okay. Go, 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 go. Okay, uh, I don't have the mortar. I'm not really set up right now. I need more health. I need more, uh, armor. Like, like, stat. Okay, I have no idea where he is. We've got the mortar, so he doesn't like to get the mortar on this map. It must not be path to that. I do want to defend against the Devastator. And I think the Vortex, and I got nothing out of that strength. I literally couldn't find him. There he is. Okay. Oh, God damn. Fuck. Holy shit. Dude, let me, let me regen, dude. Rude, rude, rude. Holy shit. I'm not going to win this. There's no way I'm going to win this, dude. This dude is unbelievably strong. Oh my god, dude. The map control. I was expecting they would just have really good aim, but I would just two-hit him every time. But no! They're getting really, really, really good map control. Holy shit! Dude, this is insane! These bots are really good. Someone must have, like, spent a lot of time working on these bots. This must, this must have been someone's, like, passion project for a while, is working on these bots. I had to hit three, three vortex shots and two mortars to kill him? Are you fucking kidding me? That's insane! That is insane! He was at like 200 health and armor. Where is he getting that from? Oh my god, dude. This dude's a Chad. Oh, I killed myself. Okay. I got out, but he's gonna get that... Yeah, he just picked up strength. So what I probably want to do is avoid. Uh, we're just going to do bitch strats. I don't know if they go more aggressive. 
during this phase. But right now, he would one-hit me with an X. 240. So I really need to not see him for another, like, 20 seconds. Oh, my God. We can win this. Like, this bot... It's not like these bots are broken. Like... God, they're just really good. Armor, 606. Oh, yeah, we got this. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, 12 to, uh, 6 to 12. 6 to 12 on those. So let's keep our eyes open for those and control those now. So at, at 36, we need to get back to the armor, and we need to be in a rotation to get back to there. As long as I don't die here and lose my control, and I'm going to. Oh my god, these bots! I can't jump up there right now. The armor just spawned, but I can't get up there without killing myself. Oh my god, fuck! Dude, these bots! There's the... F okay, that's not a 50 now. Oh, oh. We, can, we can win this. We can turn this around. We have to... We just have, we have to get in it. Holy shit, Chad. Dude, these bots are, like, really fun. Uh, what did I say? 50 on that? I think 50. So we want to get in position for this spawn right now. Bam. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, I switched away from that at a bad time. Uh, I kind of need to contest that strength. Okay, since I'm not going to be able to contest the strength, he got it. He got it. We're going to grab this armor while he's... Oh my god, he's going to one-hit me if he... God damn it. So that's one place where a human would play way differently. A human there would um absolutely aggress and follow me in the hallway. So 51 right now. We really need to not die. Uh, we're doing great on health and armor right now. We could honestly go and get this spawn of armor. I think, like, right now? Yeah, there it is. Uh, seven. So we're on 52 and seven right now. I also need to find where there's, like, individual spawns. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can see how much weaker he is now that I have map control. Map control is so big. Um, it can get really snowbally and hard to recover from that if you lose control of the map here. So I'm going to gain t uh, this now, 39. And I'm a little behind. I think we're at 55 on the other spawn now. Um, Did he just pick up strength? Did that spawn and I didn't pay attention? I think so. I think he picked up strength. Okay, there we go. Uh, 60. Da -da -da. Oh my god, chat. Yeah. See how much weaker he is? Uh, it's not because I'm hitting or playing better. It's because he's not getting these armors. So we need to get back to that at 60. I can just so aggressively chase him down here because I know he's going to die in a couple hits. Oh, I really don't want him to get this strength. And there. That was really good. That was really big. Uh, this is now spawned. He went for it. Uh, but that's okay. I cleaned him out. So we lost that respawn, which really sucks. And I killed myself. Oh, I didn't. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to recover from this. I have really good ammo here, and I don't want to die. Really don't want to die. Uh, there's probably a way to get up there without shooting myself causing damage to myself. So this is at like 05, I think now. Let's try and defend it. Please. There it is. 05. Uh, we need to get armor. We have no armor right now. Okay, that's not spawned. Woo! So he's going to have good armor, but not much health. Okay. Are these so intense, dude? Yeah, I wonder what the way to get up there is. Uh, 35. Here we go. Here we go. Bam. All right, we're in it. We're in it. We need to get an armor cycle. 
He should be pretty weak right now, but I'm not going to chase him because that's really far and I don't want to close distance into a rocket. So we really need to figure out this armor timing. Uh, health is about to spawn, so we have to make our way there. We're actually going to be late. Oh. Okay, we're good. Uh, seven. And we still have not yet found, uh, armor cycle. There it is. There it is. Uh, 18. Seven and 18. Okay, we're so much better now. Did he kill himself? What happened there? Uh, we gotta get strength. The fastest way is this. He's gonna pick it up right away. He's behind me. Ooh, this is for strength. This is for strength. I have to chase him. Oh, let's go! Let's go, baby! Oh, oh I really didn't want to lose map control while he had strength. Okay, so uh, this just spawned. So that's now 49. The other one, he probably has gotten that. He has. So that's probably like a 45. We have to guess because we can't hear it. Dude. Dude, these bots are cycles 30, 30. Yes, for the big power-ups. I thought I just saw him. I did. Oh. Oh. Let's go. Let's go. This is ours. So that was like uh, 19, I think. He clearly got armor. Wow. Wow, he was tanky. So he got the armor above. Holy shit, he was tanky there. And that those extra hits, I mean, you're just, you're on cooldown. You can't instantly uh, shoot again. Uh, we're doing great on ammo. Let's go pick this up. Um... <laughs> he just got the armor. Uh, and he's got a really good weapon set up, and I'm missing everything right now! Shit! 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 I killed myself, but I got the frag. Uh, so we have to resupply now, and, uh, that should have just spawned down here, and he got it. So he's gonna be really, really tanky right now. So I have to disengage. Oh my god, dude. This is wild! <laughs> Kinda, kinda wasn't expecting this intensity. Is he gonna get that strength? I really hope not. Let's go contest it. I got it. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, we need health and armor. We're very weak right now. And I'm a little scared. <sighs> Holy shit. I would like, I think I literally need to get like this health and armor up here. Like literally scraps right now. Um... If I'm fast on a shot, I can win off of this strength just from raw damage. No. Okay. Um, I'm see, I've never been good at utilizing the mini spawns of health and armor, and I need to get better about that. Uh, he's somewhere. Where is he? He must have just taken the portal. There we go. I just got that at 30. That's not spawned. I would really like to get that armor. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, nine seconds on this spawn. We're going to take the health. Oh, fuck, I'm an idiot. Why did I leave the spawn? Oh, my God, I threw so hard. Oh, my God, that was so dumb. <laughs> oh, I knew it was spawning. I had the timer, too. What am I doing? <laughs> Monkas. We can still lose this, chat. If we misplay here, we can still lose this. So let's get this rocket, this devastator here. Mm, he has such an upper hand and he got that armor. I'm gonna have to go for the strength mm, I killed him he fell into the lava 
Uh, let's go get the next now. I think that's the play. Next, this, and let's see if we get either armor. Okay, we get armor. That's great. We've been 53 on the armor. I don't have the mortar. And we missed all those shots. I should have aggressed. I forgot I had strength. Let's see. Oh, he just got that, so he's gonna be tanky as fuck again! Oh! Oh, I landed so much damage on him there. That was a really, really, really good combo there. Uh, okay. Jesus, let's grab the mortar. Whew, what do you enjoy more, this or, this or programming? I mean, this is intense as fuck. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I didn't want to close the distance because these bots are really good at close range. And we that's game. I guess it's uh, 15 points, not 15 kills. You legitimately could get really good. You could legitimately get really good. I mean, this is the hardest difficulty. This is like the on the godlike bot settings. That was legitimately an intense fight. Like, if I if I didn't map control, you saw how much easier it was when I had both the armor and the health on control. When I don't have control of those, it's it's so snowbally. Um like, legitimately, if I didn't get that map control at, like, the five-minute mark, I probably would have lost. So, uh, we'll come back to this uh, later. That is really good to know. That is really good to know that we can have an absolute blast uh, playing that. Um, <laughs> shit. Okay, I'm gonna grab Pop-Tart. Be right back. Wow. Holy shit. Pop tart well deserved. That was that was intense. That was intense, man. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh. Let's see if I can move the microphone out of frame. I should make my own microphone stand. I think I could make a way better one than this one. I actually need it closer to my face, unfortunately. I want a Noga mount for my uh, microphone. Do they do that? Noga microphone stand. Oh, the big one. I mean, man, I've been pretty good. You could make the base of the mic stand so flat. No, I I want like a a Noga thing. I don't know if uh. Modular holders. 
Like an M6? I could just make an adapter, I think. Got mine at Guitar City? <laughs> Folk Advisor t-shirt? Hell yeah. We're repping the Folk Advisor tonight, baby. Got my out of business box stores crossed. <laughs> oh, got my out of business box stores crossed. <laughs> Guitar Center's not out of business. They still do fine. After I got my guitar. God damn. Any theory crafting lately? No, I haven't been really playing WoW aggressively. Hmm. Really? I thought they went online only? At least not in my area. Maybe they have a special case. Wanted, uh, I want to try some theory crafting for off-world trading company. A space civ clone? Let's see what this is. Let's see how dumb this game is. Oh, it looks good. Hmm. Oh my god, it's cheap. Dude, that Steam sale though. Graphics look great. This looks really cool. Competition is fierce in this fast-paced economic RTS from Civ for uh, lead designer. Shit. So it's like a... So it's like a long-term RTS. Unlike a StarCraft where you have like short battles. It's like a, it's like a longer uh, RTS. That's pretty good. In just one pandemic year, Guitar Center went from bankruptcy to IPO. <laughs> I love how right now companies are just arbitrary in their, like, valuations. Hmm. I need to do some dynamic modeling to figure out uh, what to build and where to place things. You mean you would need to do some machine learning and artificial intelligence? Are you going to fit some curves to some other curves? Make some lines a best fit? Tesla worth more than the whole car industry. <laughs> what you refer to as ML slash AI is actually GNU slash AI. Gonna hit those correlations hard. Uh, I mean, you're gonna do nested ifs. GNU AI. <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, today, chat. We have to do some hard programming. Like, the things we have to do today are pretty difficult. Um, and I'm kind of scared, okay? Raise your hand if you're scared. I'm scared. Hands up. I love hard programming. I got top kick ML shit posting to share. Oh yeah, dude, I'm all about top top shit posting. Hands up, it's actually GNU Ozo. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> Holy shit. I do have a question regarding reverse engineering tooling. Maybe you could help me out. Are you familiar with the Python con with Python construct or Kai Tai struct? No, no. See, my trick is I actually don't know how to do reverse engineering. I'm just very good at figuring out when I do it. But in no way am I a power user of any reverse engineering tools. I'm not good at IDA, not good at Binja, not good at scripting those things, not good at using GDB, not good at GDB script. I'm good at WinBag. I'll, I'll give you that. I'm good at WinBag. Not good at like all the tracing things that people write. What's the fucking Frida? Yep. See, I just don't know what I'm doing. I'm just a big poser. Um, mainly because I just write all my own tools. That doesn't make me more effective, but it, but I have more fun doing it. And, uh, and chat, that's the one thing I've learned in the past few years. I'm just doing this shit for fun, man. <laughs> First time completing a puzzle, this shit is easy. <laughs> that's pretty good. Just a poser streamer? Yeah. To be honest, all, all streamers are posers. No streamers are actually good at what they do. I mean, look at Primogen. Dude doesn't know how to write Rust. But somehow people watch him write Rust, right? Cringe as fuck. Uh... <laughs> Is there at least a decent hex editor you could recommend? Dude, okay. Here's what's going to blow your fucking mind. No. And that's not because I'm not familiar with every hex editor on the market. All of them suck in different ways. I don't understand why, but like some of them really struggle with large files. You open something like 100 meg plus, let alone a couple gigs, catastrophically unusable UI. You have things that like have really bad selection and insertion and overwrite support. Things that save to like really shitty backup names by default, which makes it like actually annoying to use. Like legitimately every hex editor I use sucks ass. Imhex is quite nice. The Imhex UI theoretically is really nice. I like the Im brand of things. I like, I think that it's that person, dudes, they's, uh, their like library that they use for like making their UIs. But it's really rough. It's really rough. Like, I've had many issues with it not working. And I can't recall what. But I remember I tried it. I was like, holy shit. Finally, Imhex. This is going to be the replacement to all hex editors. It's open source. It's got a great UI. It's got a big community around it. And it's got weeb mascots. And... It failed me, and that was probably a year ago, maybe six months ago, because I have very high hopes for that, such that I keep revisiting it. But every time I go to use it, I'm disappointed to the point that I don't continue using it. <laughs> Primogen has so much energy, yeah, it's the cocaine. Um, I've got a lifetime of free upgrades in 2000 for $150 for what? Ultra edit? Oh, nice. I, honestly, I'm a proud payer of Hex Workshop. And I think Hex Workshop is the best Hex editor. I still think it sucks. But it's still the best one I've used. Um, actually, I had like 6.7. And I think they came out with 6.8 and the license was per version. So I got fucked. Uh, but I don't use Windows anymore, so it doesn't matter. Um, MX just crashes whenever it likes to. Yeah, I had a terrible experience with it. Okay, I'm glad I don't have the same experience. Like, I'm glad it's not like something weird I was doing. Legitimately, I don't understand how it's a hard problem. We could make a hex editor in one stream that is better than all the other hex editors. Like, trivially. We could make it super fast. 
We could give it buttery smooth 144, 240 hertz updating. We could have it use like sub 2% CPU usage when idle. We could have it uh, load massive files instantaneously, allow seeking and searching of them using threads to search. So we could split up a file in chunks so you could like parallel use fucking 100 cores to search a file, split it up to 100 chunks and then like add the padding so that you can look for things that maybe straddle one of those boundaries. Like, legitimately, it'd be so easy to do. <laughs> it really wouldn't be that hard. It really wouldn't be that hard, okay? Um... <sighs> Try Ultra Edit. Does it work on Linux? It does. A Deb, an RPM, and a TAR. And Idea Inc. So, okay. Here's one of the things that I've always wondered. How do these companies, like, exist? Like, I'm pretty sure there are people, like, full-time making hex editors. And there's people full-time making, like, WinRAR and MIRC, like... Maybe these are like side businesses, supplemental income. But if I were to make a really good hex editor and charge like 10 bucks for perpetual support, or maybe charge like 10 bucks, but it's open, but closed source, where like you pay 10 bucks and you get access to the private GitHub or some shit. Uh, obviously people would just like leak it or some shit, but like, can you make money doing that? <laughs> because I'm pretty sure I could just rewrite every utility I use. I can make something that greps files, I could rewrite C tags to use threads so that you can see tags faster. I could make C tags be namespace aware so it actually works on C++ files. I could make a hex editor. Um, I could maybe make like a disassembler, not like an IDA level disassembler, but like ob jump, ob dump with a graph view so that when you don't want to open up Ida and spend five minutes analyzing something you just open this thing up you get a graph view immediately you get symbol support for every target but it's not an actual like reverse engineering disassembler it's more for like looking at code after you've compiled it i'd probably do gui for everything i love tuis don't get me wrong i love tuis but you can make a vulcan accelerated text-based application that will just outperform anything in any terminal and give a consistent user experience. Blazing fast hex editor written in Rust, yeah. Is this one tool or a bunch should pay 100 for the suite? Legitimately, there's so many of these issues that just suck, dude. Like, hex editors never open large files. Disassemblers never open large files. There's no reason th that shouldn't be inherently parallel. Perhaps you don't sell that many units, and that's why people don't spend much time and energy in it. Maybe? I don't know. I mean, if I started doing that, if I started making stuff that I sold, um, and I would make it work on Mac, Linux, and Windows, like all of the things, after a few years, I might have a big enough portfolio where I could make, like, maybe enough money to pay for a bill. Um, throw a few gigs in Ultra Edit. Uh, I'll try that later. I don't want to go on too long of a tangent. <sighs> Terminal written in Rust raised 20 mil? What? Huh? What? How do you... Yeah, and I bet it's... I bet this is gonna be... Let's see. Is it fast? It says no electron. And if you say no electron or web tech on the front page, you understand how bad those things are. So this is probably pretty good. Oh, is this one of those iOS only things? Because for some reason, people who like making nice software only develop for iOS. Is it iOS only? Yeah, a classic. Yeah. AI command search? Can't say I really give a shit. I mean, yeah, to raise VC, you probably need to say you have AI command search, but in reality, it's like a couple stir stirs and case insensitivity. Don't worry, they only make a re web request every time you type enter. Oh, nice. 
Yeah. I... I'm not impressed. I feel like they're going in the right direction and that they realize they recognize what is wrong with modern software, but then they just do those things. Ultra, I used Ultra Edit back in like 1998. Yeah. Super fast web request. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how I deal with like piracy though. If I ever wanted to like sell software, I wouldn't want to bloat and fuck up my programs. I would honestly prefer to ship my programs with like full debug symbols so that people could give me good bug reports. Um, but I don't know the best way to handle like sales. What I really would want to do is just trust and be like, I'm going to make it not trivial to just find it online where people would rather pay $10 and just get the fucking software than like go to some sketchy links. People who pay, pay. People who don't, don't. Yeah. Just do what Sublime does. What does that do? Single key file. People who pirate will likely not buy it anyways. Yeah. I kind of agree with that. I do believe that if I were to do something where it's like open source behind a paywall, where like you pay 10 bucks and then get access to the source, someone's going to clone it and put it up on GitHub. Although, that wouldn't necessarily be maintained. And, like, you're mainly paying for support and maintenance. You're paying to get access to the repo that stays up to date. I don't know. I think that would be interesting. People who pirate are future users, that's absolutely true. I've paid for a lot of software that I pirated when I was a kid and couldn't afford it. If source is uploaded to GitHub, you can DMCA it. Yeah. I mean, even if it's up there and it's not getting taken down, like... It would eventually fall behind. I don't know. That would be interesting. Can always open source and do paid support. The problem is there's a massive financial difference between those. Like, it's very obvious that people who make passion projects, open source, put a lot of effort into them, don't make jack shit through donations. Like, I like that a lot. I seriously do. I like that model. But if I were to have $10 to get access to the source... I would probably have 10x the amount of paying people and the same user base. Like, it's just psychologically different. Binge has a pay to update model. Yeah, I suspect that'll eventually change. I don't think that is uh, sustainable. I don't think it's sustainable. It also gives you perverse incentives to not ship good products. Like, I'm not saying they're not doing that. Uh, but, like, for me, for a hex editor, I would just want it to work on day one. Like, really responsive UI, really good support for loading massive files, good support for copy and pasting in different formats, so you can, like, copy and paste it into, like, a Rust thing, in a C thing, in, like, a bin ASCII hexified format. Like, copy it into a bunch of different formats. And then, like, what am I upselling? What am I upselling as support there? Obviously, bug fixes when people find mistakes or issues or... Things where it doesn't work on different monitors. Maybe I update the UI. Maybe I add support for a new language export feature. Stuff like that. But... Um... But legitimately, I need to start thinking about how to, like, monetize a lot of the things that I have a passion for. So that I stop being so fucking salty. <laughs> Employees make their companies pay for tooling, so make it expensive. Yeah. But a complete reverse engineering tool isn't a hex editor. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, exactly. A hex editor could even be a binge feature. So binge really pushes their hex editor, but honestly, even after, like, Jordan bragging to me about the hex editor in binge and how there's no reason to use any other hex editor, it has all of the same problems of every other hex editor I've ever used. Not responsive when you're doing a search. Has pop-up dialogues when you're doing a search so you lose control of, like, where you were or maybe you can't scroll while a scan or a search is happening. Can't use wildcards in searches. Or maybe you can now. I don't know. It's been a while. Uh, opening large files causes, like, the whole UI to hang and freeze. Let alone, like, scrolling then goes from 
buttery smooth scrolling to now the larger the file affects the caching the way the file is displayed and rendered which then causes it to be like really laggy and jittery to use it's it's tough man supporting development is a difficult insensitive problem yeah so open source but you have to build it yourself if you want a binary uh just pay a couple bucks i actually like that i think that works pretty well uh, especially if you have an update system. Um, yeah. Did you follow the Casey uh, Muratoria saga of the Windows terminal struggling to do 30 FPS? No, I'm not surprised at all. It's all written in JavaScript. That being said, the project manager of Windows terminal is probably one of my favorite project managers, Kayla, uh, Kayla Cinnamon. Even though I disagree with the you know, perf and focus on emojis and and animations and col and fancy colors and stuff over like the core functionality of a good working terminal. Um, I think she runs a project really well. She gets people hyped. She hypes up shit for her team. She gives credit for her team members. So even though I personally think the new terminal has a lot of issues, a lot of the things that we see in software nowadays where things just get slower and more bloated and use more memory and are JavaScript based and just getting shittier over time. I do think from like a leadership perspective, she runs that shit really well, dude. Um, that being said, I've never worked with her personally. Um, so maybe she's an asshole in person. Probably not. But, you know, you never know. People can have a different face online. Enterprise license so you can make uh, big bucks on companies. Yeah, I, I could do something like that. Um, I really want to make uh, a disassembler that's not like it doesn't recover functions. It works with like symbols, but it allows you to very quickly like search uh, for just things, whether it's strings or references. That's one thing that's really annoying is like you can't really search for an address anymore in programs because you have to search for the rip relative address, but it's not hard to make a thing that programmatically searches for rip rel references, like disassemble every instruction or disassemble everything as if it's an instruction, see if it has a relative offset and add an extra for it. Like I legitimately think you could make a perfectly parallel, like linearly scaling with cores disassembler that works with recovering, like, XRefs and stuff. Um, I don't know. So are you going to make this perfect editor? Probably not. I mean, it depends. Uh, it depends how, like, work stuff goes. Like, right now, I feel I'm a little behind on, on what I want done. That's why we're, like, working on this project. Um, but if this is really fruitful, then, yeah, maybe I have a year or two where I just coast and re don't really give a shit. Windows Terminal is not JavaScript, IRC. No, it's not. Um, they told him on GitHub the rendering that rendering monospace response would be a PhD level topic. So he wrote a terminal that does all UTF-8 correctly at thousands of FPS in a weekend. Yeah, like, yeah, no shit. Windows Explorer file search is the worst? No, 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 no. No, what are you talking about? Windows Explorer file search is terrible. But what about... Windows default zip extraction. Explorer.exe unzipping. It literally does the exact same thing as all the other things. It's not like it's a lossy thing where, like a search. Like a search, you could say that maybe it's slower, but maybe it works better for corporate users. Like unzipping literally is a lossless thing. You get the exact same bits out. Somehow it's like fucking 10x slower, and it has been forever. I don't get it. I don't get it. Has nobody, has nobody Im like thought to improve that since what NT or I think Windows 2000 is maybe where that came out. It's unusable. It's literally unusable. You can, if you have like a hundred meg zip file, which is not a very big zip file, you literally can un start unzipping it in Windows Explorer. Realize it's taking a long time. Open a browser. Navigate to 7-Zip, download 7-Zip, install 7-Zip, and extract it with 7-Zip, and it will finish before fucking Windows Explorer does. 
Why are all compressors single threaded? A lot of them are moving away from that. Pig Z is really good. Um, and XZ can also uh, thread. So XZ, if you pass like dash T0, it uses all the cores on your box. And it works pretty well. The higher the compression level, like the larger the window is, the worse it scales. But with the default compression level of six, um, you'll get like, I have no problem using like 40 threads uh, when compressing stuff with uh, XZ. That being said, XZ is very, very, very slow uh, compared to like GZip. Like Pig Z is probably like 10 to 15 times faster, but XZ saves you maybe 30%. It's usually quite a bit better. I think the guy who wrote the Windows Explorer zip integration in the late 90s talked about it on YouTube. Oh, no way. Windows users are just used to things being trash. I mean, every user. Do you use a browser? Okay, you're used to things being trash. Um, Files go back to the Stone Age granddad. Us cool kids only use apps. Oh, shit. Cringe. Um, at least according to that Verge article from uni professors who uh, were complaining that new undergrads didn't know what a directory was. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, uh, it also goes the other way that the uni professors don't know how to write code other than 1985 ANSI C or Java. And, uh, anything newer than that is foreign to them. And they're all like, Dude, every time I meet someone who's super anti-Rust, it's either A, they had a bad run-in with someone in the community who was an asshole to them. We've talked about those Rust community assholes. But then, you have the other side. You have the, like, uh, I don't want to say boomers, because I'm not trying to, like, make it entirely an age thing, even though it's very correlated with age. People are just scared that their skill set that they think is difficult, which is knowing C, literally, like, a two-week fucking skill set... That's like their only self-worth, so they're terrified that a new language comes out and replaces it because they spent their entire life becoming passably good at writing C. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'd be a little scared as well if, if things that 12-year-olds can pick up and learn uh, in a couple weeks is uh, threatening your career. So, you know. And CC89. Um, I actually learned Python at uni in 2003. That's wild. That's very progressive. Uh, that would have been... Was that even Python in the ones? That wasn't even Python 2, was it? Um, maybe it was very early Python 2. My uni professors, uh, would steal non-working code from Stack Overflow and tell us to fix their shit code. Nice. I think Python 1, yeah. I... I remember using game cheats that were written in Python back then. That was crazy. Any update on your fuzzing book? Yeah, no, no plans on it right now. It's just, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't make me money right now, so it's not my focus. Um, and not to be greedy or anything, but um, my goal is to pretty aggressively get my business up and running and uh, have infinite avenues for cash before I do something extracurricular. Uh, you're not scared of new languages. Let's do TypeScript next. Gross. Evil. Wrong. Writing book equals hard. Expected money equals small. Yeah. It would be very difficult. And yeah, I would make no money off. Like, legitimately, I would maybe make... Even if it was a very popular book where, like, everyone in Fuzzing got this book, which they won't because it will be, like, niche and perf-oriented. It's not going to be oriented towards, like using AFL, um, I would probably make five grand, 10 grand tops, which is like, you can, you can literally make that in like a couple days doing contracting work. Have you done B2B sales of software? No, I've never done software sales. AFL for dummies would make bank though. Yeah, it would. I mean, it would, it would probably make a hundred or 200 grand, which compared to the amount of time that you have to put into making the book, kind of not worth it. Uh, the trick to writing tech books is to write hundreds of them, then coast. Yeah, that's another way to do it. Uh, any plans for a milkshake? Was super excited to see that working on stream. We'll probably... Uh, that's the IL. Uh, so milkshake... 
No, I'm probably going to only work on that offline from this point. The OS that I'm working on now is for Milkshake, and I don't want to dev that on stream, and I don't want to dev Milkshake on stream, and it's just really good. I don't know. I miss the Matrix monitors in the background. Yeah, I shut that computer down just to see what it's like to have it off. I'm curious how much that changes acoustics or heat in this room. Um, but what about training courses on fuzzing? Yeah, there's good money in that. Yeah, like it, it would be like I would charge 5k a seat minimum. Um, the downside is when you give trainings at conferences, uh, you um, the conference probably takes like half of it. But for businesses, that's really easy. Uh, the problem with trainings, once again, the problem with trainings is you have to make the training, which it would probably take like three months full time three months to make a good training and that is assuming that you are really focused on making a training and that's three months that I could be contracting or looking for bugs or doing some other research um so basically like the first one or two trainings that you give are basically at a loss even if you make 100k on each training you're losing money because you spent so much time working on the training but then eventually once you have the material you start making money so I do plan on doing trainings, but trainings are going to be like supplemental side income to me. Um, go on site to 14500s. Yeah, that's exactly what I plan on doing. Um, <laughs> any recommendations for, uh, for software to go bug hunting in at this moment? I mean... No, <laughs> like my good leads, I'm not going to share. So I just share bad leads with you. So that's just not helpful. <laughs> like I have plenty of things that I think are going to be great attack surfaces. Um, but that's kind of what makes them great attack surfaces, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's just the nature of it, right? Um, have his fine if they get you like 3x students. Yeah, I probably wouldn't want to do a training for fewer than 15 people, and I probably wouldn't want to go over 5k a seat. That's kind of like where I'm at right now, and I'm not going to develop a training until I already have committal to a training by someone. And more specifically, I know this sounds greedy, but it's not meant to be greedy if it's kind of easy to do. I'm pretty sure I will be able to find a company that will pay me on a contract for like three or four months to develop a training and then give it to them for free where I like don't charge for the training itself. And thus I risk free can develop a training while making the same money I would get from giving the training without any of the risk. And then I could give that training from that point on easily. Um, I don't know. But then again, I don't really want to rely on trainings. I personally don't think I would want to do more than four trainings a year. Because that would basically be like four weeks a year where I'm traveling. I'm not at home. I'm not in my elements. I probably have to knock things off my calendar. I'm probably distracted uh, from like other projects. The week or two up to it, I'm probably stressing out about polishing or updating the training. Um, I don't know. I think four four trainings a year is probably the most I'd want to give. But I think it'd be pretty easy to book that. So, I don't know. I've been doing contract work for the past, uh, like, year now. Um, and I think I'm comfortable understanding, like, roughly what workloads and expectations are for different, like, pay levels and hourly rates. And I'm pretty sure that I can diversify pretty heavily. Like, that's my plan is to basically have, like three or four contracts that I'm working, some short-term contracts, some long-term contracts that I rely on, and then some like mid-term, like six month plus contracts that I'm kind of just like devving stuff for. It's like actually actual work you need to do uh, to earn money, yeah. Where do you get your contract? It varies. 
Uh, right now, I've been doing contracting uh, with Margin. That's where I released... Uh, what did I name that tool? Cannoli. Um, how much do you charge an hour? It really varies. Uh, it really it really depends. Like, if you want me on retainer, probably like 75 bucks an hour, paid monthly, as if I'm working full-time, for me to do like a couple of days of work a month. <laughs> if you want me to do shit work, like big tech, 500 plus an hour, minimum. Minimum. Like... If, like, fucking Facebook or Microsoft or Google or Amazon was up in my DMs wanting to do a contract, anything less than 500, go fuck yourselves. Like, I know, I know whatever work you want me to do is gonna suck ass. Um, fuck you. <laughs> I'm not gonna lift a finger for that shit. Fuck no. Um, but yeah. I think, like, basically, I would com I would commit to, like, maintaining stuff, supporting things, helping out. Keep in mind, like, Cannoli is a great example of, like, I would love to be in a position where I get paid, I don't know, 5 to 10k a month to maintain Cannoli, which is probably three days of work a month tops, maybe every couple months, like, a, a hackathon where I'm, like, on it for, like, a week or two. Um... But I'm pretty sure that's a reasonable price because that's tooling that other people cannot make. Um, it's weird, but it turns out that 10 days of labor from me can result in tooling that gets created that literally other people cannot make. It's not like a time thing or a budget thing or like a money thing. It's, it's literally you just would not get it otherwise what is cannoli it's uh it's the kimu uh tracing thing i wrote uh commands and cannoli 10k a month for 10 days of work seems fine yeah exactly right and and this is where it's fucked up um, where it's fucked up is I'm pretty sure, um, the other side would be very happy with that as well, right? Like, I, I, I don't think that's, uh, I don't think I'm ripping someone off by that. It's not me like, oh, I'm trying to milk this for as much as I, no, I think, I think legitimately they would be very happy to pay that little to get tooling like that. <laughs> Even if it means I'm not pretending to be working on it 24-7. Um, heard about people getting multiple remote jobs and getting full-time pay from all of them? Yeah. So, I don't really recommend that. Um, I do recognize that that's a thing. There's, like, a Reddit thing for that. Um, so, um... Basically, like, with normal jobs... You need to kind of be involved with a team. You need to be involved with le leading or leadership or being in meetings or like doing that sort of thing. Obviously, here's the thing. If you are hired to deliver, like contract work is a great example. If, if your contract is like, we want you to maintain this. Well, if you maintain that, it doesn't matter how much time you spend on it. And that what is really new to me, right? I like I'm talking about this stuff like I have no idea what I'm doing and that's because I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm really used to basically you pay me enough to basically cover my bills and I work 24/7 for you. But now when I'm looking at contracting stuff, it's turning more into like you tell me what is reasonable for X amount of pay a month. And if I can do that, it doesn't really matter how much time I spend on it. Um, you get blackballed if you get caught doing that shit? Absolutely, and I would, I would hope so. Um, when you're working salaried, you are... You are basically being, like... Companies, even though companies want you to and they expect you to be performing at all times... Companies are very, very lenient, right? 
you can coast for a pretty long time and get away with it, with the exception of some, like, really hard-ass companies. And that's kind of expected. It's kind of expected that you're there, you're kind of on retainer, you're there to do support, you're there to work on the big things, and you're there to deliver stuff relevant to what the company wants. Um, and working multiple, like, full-time salary jobs that are not based on deliverables and are more based on your existence there to, like, communicate and work with the team and come up with ideas and new strategies, like, even not as a lead or as a, like, you know, really steering, like, design, salary is more of, you're being, you're being paid EV, right? You're being paid with a, it smooths out, you know, the curve so that your spiky performance is a little bit more smoothed out. You get a little bit more shafted on pay. Um, but in exchange, they expect you to be there for them when they need you to be, right? Um, so it's definitely like, I don't know, like contracting suits me well because companies pay you as if you're working 40 hours a week, right? I want to get paid as if I'm working 100 hours a week because I'm working 100 hours a week. Uh, a lot of my, like, tiltedness about companies and, like, I can't fucking stand a lot of companies and I can't fucking stand a lot of security direction is because people are getting paid based on 30 or 40 hours a week of existing, like, five hours a week of actually coming up with ideas and deving things, 30 hours a week sitting in meetings so that you can claim that what you did that week was sit in meetings. So it's like this vicious cycle where in the next status meeting, you can be like, well, last week I went to these meetings. Sick. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But that is me, right? When I complain about these things, when I complain about security not being good enough, when I complain about companies not giving a shit, when I complain about technical jobs not paying well enough, it's because these companies don't know who I am, right? They, they, they have no, like, to a manager who has only ever worked the bare minimum or worked hard to, you know, rise the chain or whatever, they, they can't empathize or understand that I want to do 100 hours a week of technical work. So if you don't reward that differently than someone who does 10 hours a week of technical work with the same number of years experience, even though they've been doing 10 hours of work that whole time and I've been doing 100 hours of work that whole time, I I'm just not going to fucking care. That's my fault because I can't disconnect from work, right? I can't stop thinking about this shit. And thus, I feel like I'm not getting paid for my time because I'm not. Because they don't even know that I'm doing that. <laughs> right? It's hard when uh, people uh, have hired engineers that are coasting and they think their engineers are working as fast as humanly possible. So it's not possible to go faster. I do feel like I have kind of realized that before. Imagine how many millions it would cost to make cannoli with average devs. Yeah, and it was a four or five day project. It was like a tangent project. It wasn't even supposed to exist. It was not tasking. It was not a goal. It was like I saw people continuously having this issue and I'm like, oh, let's make a good, let's make a good tracing engine. Um, hold on, Mr. Gamosa. Uh, these are some important concerns, but we aren't in solution mode today. We need to reschedule this meeting for next week so you can re-explain your issues. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. And I recognize that I gatekeep other people with the amount of time that I work. But here's the, here's the crux of all of my issues. I am going to be pissed or think that people are underperforming or not doing good work when I see that they are making the same amount of money that I'm making doing way less work. Right? <laughs> um, and that's my fault for working that hard. But it kind of makes sense in my head of like, okay, well, other people are getting promos promotions and raises and stuff 
based on their wall clock time, and I'm getting the same promotions and raises based on my wall clock time, and it doesn't really matter what the output is, so then I just get salty. And then I just feel like other people aren't working hard enough, when in reality, the other people are working plenty hard. They're doing plenty good work. I'm just underpaid. <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> The reason I'm salty 99% of the time is probably because I'm just being underpaid. Uh... <laughs> is that a Fulkervisor shirt? Yeah, it is. This is the classic, the classic Fulkervisor shirt. Um... Less work doesn't mean less productivity? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, makes me wonder, is money that important? Not in terms of resources, but in terms of semantics? No. And I'm trying to, like, get a lot better about that. Um, go work for a trading firm? I legitimately have never really considered that until the past, like, few months. Because I feel like I am not a programmer. But I'm pretty sure at this point, trading firms would love to have me. Because every fucking person that I see a blog from that I'm like, wow. That's actually an interesting blog on Perf. They work at a trading firm. And I'm pretty sure if I were to talk with any one of them and they were to see my work or see what my passions are, they'd be like, holy shit, you belong here. <laughs> they care so much about high performance stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's something I've thought about maybe dabbling into. Um, and I actually have pretty good knowledge of trading stuff. Uh, do you have any cool perf blogs to read? Not off the top of my head. The lowest latency stuff is now all FPGA. There's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, Val work, but it's all C++. Yeah, I mean, even that, though, like, I, I'm not convinced on the FPGA stuff. I'm really not. Like, I recognize that theoretically, it should be the best way to go for latency. But I also think none of these firms have ever seen an RTOS running on X86. Like, I've seen X86 and computers in a completely different way than most people have. When most people think computers, they think like 1 to 5 millisecond context switches, interrupts, you know, interrupt batching, delays on those things, queues, you know, putting things on work queues when things come off a nick. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's people have who have, like, done really low-level stuff, but I wouldn't be surprised if I were to join a trading firm that I would be one of the first people there who has actually written, like, polling-based real-time operating systems on x86. Um... The cutting edge uh, firm, uh, wire to wire, is less than 100 nanos. Can't even afford PCI latency. Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds pretty good. We don't have time for that shit. Yeah. I've worked at UBS Schwab. Okay. I mean, like, I'm mainly speaking from like some of the tech blogs I've seen, which might be like higher level things. I'm sure their direct high frequency trading stuff is there, but also. There's a lot more to trading than execution decisions, right? There's a lot more. And, like, being able to quickly turn around an order is kind of different than being able to process that sort of stuff. We also have CRUD apps. I don't know what CRUD is, but I imagine that's what, exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but ultimately, like, an FPGA is going to be, like a hundred times slower than like an x86 cpu in terms of like computation and analysis um unless you're doing like a really basic thing like obviously like moving averages and basic like mathematical transforms that you do on like data you can do way faster on an fpga because you can just do them basically in real time but if you're doing things where you have to, like, loop, like, anything that basically requires you have 
instructions where you need like a Turing complete engine rather than like a hard discrete transform. I just highly doubt FPGAs are the way to go there. Most FPGAs have built in low latency dumb arm cores. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, create, update, delete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, literally everything is pre-computed and loaded into the FPGA as a lookup table. There's no inline processing. Like, so, the thing is, here, here's the thing. I agree with you. I agree that all of these firms have those things. But I strongly disagree when people talk about these things as if this is like 99.9% .9 of all of their stuff. When in reality, it's like a tiny sliver of what they do. And at the end of the day, they still have a shit ton of people running like analysis stuff in Python scripts, right? Like even in the high frequency departments, you know, you have the FPGA devs, the people doing that shit. Keep in mind, I'm talking on my ass because I've never worked in this field. But there's just no way all of these people are doing FPGA dev and, like, branchless, conditionless logic. Like, a lot of this shit is going to be people doing ML and shit in Python and analysis and in that environment. Um... <laughs> um... And, like, that's where I would come in probably best, is, is doing a lot of stuff like that. Um, I think that I could potentially make those Python scripts run in a real-time environment, where maybe you could do quicker turnarounds by higher-level programmers to execute traits, like a Turing-complete x86 machine that runs Python very fast, shit like that. Uh, can confirm testing high frequency stuff with Python. Yeah, like that's the, that's the biggest problem with a lot of the like uh, performance gotchas is in reality. Yes, like, yes, there's some blog by their most distinguished engineer who makes $10 million a year. Yes, they, they have some crazy fucking tech. Uh, but there's probably a lot of room to improve for a lot of stuff <laughs> that's what i mean when i say like there's a lot of shit where i think i could provide a new perspective and gains uh i'm not saying that i could universally make everything better at those places um if you could rewrite pandas to be 10 times faster but uh keep a hundred percent compatible api you could charge millions yeah i'm pretty sure i could write a like glibc compatible linux replacement where basically it implements all of the syscalls that you would use in like a, a libc glibc application and i'm pretty sure i could just make that like 10 to 100 times faster than linux for like io bound stuff um like imagine you just take the read and write apis and the like send and receive apis and by default replace the Berkeley implementations with the same API, but under the hood, it just goes to an IOU ring. <laughs> Woo. Pandas is data processing stuff. Yeah, it's... It should be impossible to get a 10x speed up on anything that processes data. IO bound stuff and things with context switches are really where you should get those gains. AWS has positions uh, for you for those kinds of things. Well, AWS won't hire me for anything other than security because I have a history in security and no one wants to take a risk. Um, we use Kafka and hybrid on a hybrid confirm orders that weren't HFT or hybrid cloud orders that weren't HFT. Yeah, yeah. And like, that's where I think I could really, really help would be like, I could probably write my RTOS with my 100 gigabit networking driver that's designed for super low latency, doesn't care about CPU or power consumption, it like uses polling for all of the operations, doesn't queue things up, doesn't context switch, like a real time x86 operating system that is basically built around polling in user land uh, networking stacks by default. <laughs> um. Are you familiar with open onload and libvma? I'm familiar with libvma. I'm not familiar with open onload. 
the 100 gig networking driver is virtual uh what do you mean virtual in that case like a like a virtual nick <laughs> like uh uh do you think rewriting processing data do you think re rewriting data processing frameworks from scala to rust would achieve better perf uh god i would hope so um scale is a, lang a great language but perf i wouldn't say is its strength um and if you sell it B2B, B2 B, you could keep selling it to other companies. So that's something I've like thought of. And that's why I get like a little bit more scared of open sourcing stuff willy nilly. Or like doing stuff directly on stream. Because I feel like a lot of the shit that I dev, like the shit that I dev because it's a blocker and I like do it for a couple weeks to unblock the real project that I'm working on, I think in a lot of situations, if I marketed it, marketed it correctly and put some lipstick on it, I think I could sell it for like five, five plus million dollars for a lot of shit. Similar idea, Linux, but you core pin, disable context switches and do user space networking that takes over a network card. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically what I want to do. Um... Yeah. Uh, I will steal your ideas, develop a clone, um, and that not and not know how to sell it either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, and then not know how to sell it. Yeah, yeah. Halvar's uh, flag uh, also switched to optimization stuff. He can help you. Halvar's, Halvar has already reached out to me and said that if I ever have an idea, he's on board, um, which is some of the highest praise I've ever gotten in my life. Uh, but I think Halvar and I are pretty similar in that, in that realm. And uh, I also want to get out of security. And when I say get out of security, it sounds like it's like a big career change where I have to like study in reality, I think I'm, I've been more valuable outside of security, uh, like doing programming stuff or just high performance or literally like architecture and design um, just my whole life. Security as a career fucking blows. Yeah, it just... I would enjoy security or I would enjoy defensive security if the companies cared um and that's a mix of increasing staffing and that's a mix of higher pay it is amazing at high performance programming yes uh it's sad in so many ways they don't yeah exactly is there really a worker shortage in security i mean probably <laughs> i don't know i don't know for sure but every company that i know that does security is hiring except for uh, facebook <laughs> uh company cared as in your employer or your customers uh employer customers i, I don't really want to sell shit in security dude like s selling stuff in security sucks ass dude like dude everyone who sells commercial products in security all sell the same thing this they, they sell a th a thing that sits on your network or sits in your kernel and hashes shit, uploads it to the cloud, and then does ML and AI on it. It like none of them do anything. <laughs> like they literally do nothing. If anything, they add attack service. Here, we put we put Wireshark on the most critical part of your network. Like the top tier, the top of the hier hierarchy of your network, we put something that parses literally every packet that e exists. Like it parses WoW protocol stuff, Tibia protocol stuff, DTP, every protocol that's ever existed before. Oh yeah, and it does it very poorly. <laughs> See in Silicon Valley, they just want the box. Yeah, ultimately insecurity, everyone memes about it, uh, but people just want green lights. They don't want green lights in that they truly want a green light. They want something that they can be naive enough about such that they feel that they're doing something. Basically, 
you have to they're they're kind of looking the other way in that they're really they just don't know what the fuck they're doing like they probably got their role due to like nepotism or just everyone else quit because they hated working with this person so then that person gets promoted because that's how people get promoted basically all of these companies where like you lose all of your money after four years because you lose your starting stock if you just stay to six years, congratulations, you're like the person at the company now. Even though you don't have any idea what the fuck you're doing, you are like the person. So, all you need to do is convince that person that your security thing is good. <laughs> they just want to see a green light and put it on a PowerPoint and show uh, at those pointless meetings we all discuss. Uh, yeah, we discussed an hour ago. Yeah, uh, they want plausible deniability. So... I actually think that's true. Um, like, I, I genuinely believe that at a high enough level that that is a conscious decision. Like, I know we meme about it, but in reality, a lot of business decisions happen subconsciously. It's just the pacing, it's the speed a lot of things run. Um, if you get hacked, you want to show that you tried to stop it. Yes. And everyone likes to circle jerk when new CVEs came out and they're like, oh, we would have found this with this fuzzer. We would have, well, oh, well, and now we're putting it into production. Dude, no, you wouldn't have found it with that fuzzer because you didn't deploy that fuzzer, right? The reason you did not find it before is the same reason you will not find the next thing. It's not like putting something in to find something in hindsight is like, yes, theoretically, it might catch some, it, it, it might prevent you from shipping regressions. And it might, like fuzzers have that beautiful power where fuzzers might find new things. They might find new instances of past mistakes. That doesn't really get you very far. <laughs> like... <laughs> um here's the thing <laughs> god damn it chris nova how was your stream you stream at crazy hours ever since i saw your stream i've wanted to see like all of your streams uh but you stream like when i'm sleeping <laughs> but thank you so much for the raid i hope you had a fun stream we're on a rant right now we've been complaining about tech and management and big companies and security and stuff <laughs> so i hope i'm not a downer to anyone that's new here we can uh, we can pretend everything uh, is happy here everything's great everything's awesome <laughs> Woo! Woo! definitely wasn't just about to say that it's kind of embarrassing that multi not multi but trillion dollar companies think it's acceptable that a million dollars should get you access to every user's device all all hundreds of millions of users for a couple million dollars for a trillion dollar company and they say that they're like the pinnacle of security Woo! <laughs> that's my thing that's how i judge companies doing security i judge them by the fact that one person in six months of research can get access to every single iPhone in the world. I wouldn't say that we are very secure right now. <laughs> I would say that's pretty pathetic for a 50,000 person company with uh, multiple trillions of dollars. <laughs> Try you and open a 20 gig file if you want to smile about something. That could be a fun way to go. Just don't use an iPhone. I mean, iPhones are by far the most secure, like, mobile devices you can get. Uh, that being said, Android has gotten better. Um, Android's gotten a lot better. Better than a hacker coming up with a billion uh, people's police data and selling it. Yeah. So that happens uh, with China. Oh, are you referring to a specific story? Meanwhile, shitty crypto projects paying 10 mil for bugs. Yeah, because they directly lose money to bugs. <laughs> but how's everyone doing? How's the stream? How's Chris's stream? What was she working on? Just run raw Linux on your phones. Yeah, yep. 
Security through obscurity. Just run your own OS. Hey, hey. It'd probably work. <laughs> I'd probably need to be nation stated if I was running my own OS. Presses off button. Hack me, bud. <laughs> uh, too bad your Intel management engine is still running. <laughs> and so is your network card. <laughs> and your sound card. <laughs> On Reuters, uh, hacker claims to have stolen 1 billion records of Chinese citizens from police. Nice. I mean, we had the massive credit card, uh, not credit card, but uh, credit reporting agency in the US. Was it Equifax? I mean, they've all been hacked at some point. I think it was Equifax that just got completely cored out. Uh, which I'm not laughing because it's, it's good that it happened, but I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I feel, I feel bad for the consumers that had no choice in using Equifax. <laughs> OPM and Equifax. I mean, OPM is, OPM probably gets hacked yearly. We just don't even detect it. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. All right, chat. So we could do some, uh, we could do some dev. How about that? It's been two hours since we started the stream and we've done nothing except for a uh, rant. No one can hack my banana phone. All right. Who here had cool phones growing up? Like who here had like a hamburger phone or like, like a landline phone? Like who had cool phones? It's getting light behind you. Hell yeah. Sun's starting to peek out. Oh, Nokia, I had a landline. I, I mean, <laughs> I'd imagine most people here would have a landline at some point. Droid X Rooted was my baby. I had a French fry phone? What is a French fry? How do you turn a French fry into it? Was it like a bundle of French fries? Like it would have to be a bundle, right? Join for the rant? Hell yeah, we're always here to rant. I'm out of the loop. How did the Freedom Phone thing go? It went great, but we decided it was too real to do on stream. I had a Nokia drop from a fourth floor with no damage. You probably hurt the floor. <laughs> Motorola Razor. Honestly, Motorola Razors were fantastic. I was joking. I have no idea what a French fry phone would be. No, like, people know, like, the hamburger phones. Like, people know what I'm talking about, right? Hamburger phone. I had one of those phones that you had to put your finger in and rotate the dot. <laughs> a rotary? You had a rotary phone? <laughs> yeah, these. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone knows what a hamburger phone is. Dude, you're telling me she's not the happiest user of this phone ever? Like, come on, dude. She's got the juiciest gossip right now. I can just imagine laying down my bed. Arms, arms on the bed, hands on my chin in a, in a triangle shape, talking with my bestie, gossiping about the latest deets. <laughs> Someone had one of these in like, uh, like iCarly or something like, oh, it was Juno. It was Juno. This is exactly what I was thinking of. Yes. The Juno hamburger phone. I was like, what fucking show had the hamburger phone? It was Juno. A hundred percent. <laughs> Motorola Razor is still being sold? Really? I have, uh, I think, two Razors sitting around. That'd be a fun thing to hack. Dude, it's literally Juno, dude. This, is this Juno? That's not Juno, I don't think. This is Juno, I think. God, now I'm getting confused. Now every time I see a hamburger phone, I just think it's Juno. <laughs> oh, hamburger macaroons? Uh, or it looked like it were. I don't think they actually were. Um, all right. <laughs> it's a new razor. Oh, lame. You can't just call. You can't just call it a razor. There's a lot that goes into a razor. It has to be specifically a razor, which I still use for my alarm clock. I still use my old razor as an alarm clock, and it, the battery is four times thicker than it's ever been. I remember the Nokia banana phone. N -n Nokia banana phone. Thick.
Wait, what? Oh, this is a 4G phone. Is this the one you're talking about? Because you can get this in 4G. At yeah, 2018. Are you tell you're telling me you're not rocking this right now? <laughs> Damn, all the cool kids are. Wait, is that <laughs> Okay, okay, I think that's a security device that they're showing at like a kiosk. For a second I thought that was where the charge plug was and how you charged it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's uh that's a design. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've seen worse, right? We've seen Desu's code. Hey, oh, got him. All right, uh, uh, let's go take a look at what we got to do today. So today we have some very, very, very hard code planned. That's why I'm trying to put it off as long as I can, because it's going to be very difficult. Uh, so we're working on Alicado today, the best name ever. Damn the... Uh, that's gonna be a... Yeah, we're just gonna... We're just gonna do that. Yeah, no one saw that. No one saw anything. Uh... <laughs> broken Simlink equals Weed Shop. Yeah, I... Well, so... Uh... Weed Shop is compl... Well, we never... We haven't done Weed Shop yet on chat. Um... Where do I even have... <laughs> I feel like I maybe deleted what I was doing for Weed Shop. Maybe. No, it's in here, I think. I think it's in here. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Chat, you're gonna love this. We're gonna go on a very, very short ta tangent. Um, mainly because I'm, I'm very f afraid to write the code we have to write today because it is going to be the hardest code of this entire project. So let's put it off as long as we can. Okay. Uh, Weed Shop, update required. I want to play it on this computer. Okay, let's let's download Weed Shop. Uh, yeah, so Weed Shop is a fantastic game. If you've never played Weed Shop, um, it's a terrible game, but it's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> so, uh, was it Isle Spy? Hmm. Uh, weed. There it is. <laughs> so, so, um, <laughs> so look, chat, look, okay? So maybe Weed Shop is a Unity game. And maybe that Unity game means that we were able to, uh, uh, potentially, maybe theoretically, get this assembly C sharp decompiled, which is all 500,000 lines of code of the game. Um, from the, from the decompilation of the game. And then, uh, and then I probably don't have the make file here, but, uh, I can build this. <laughs> I can build it and replace it and use it. Uh, I don't remember where, I think I had a make file at some point. I don't know if I moved it, um, or did that somewhere else or did it in the weed shop directory. Uh, find star grep I weed shop. But call your clone Dab Shop. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, I have no idea where that actually is. But uh, I, I had a make file. It really wasn't too hard to build. It was just like a CS command. And then I have to, I had to give it all the DLLs that it pulled in as dependencies. Um, but yeah, it was pretty awesome. So yeah, I have all the stuff here. Um... So there's like a lot of boilerplate from like libraries that they pull in, but there's like the core like weed. Uh, what do they call the? I think almost is their engine because almost games is the company that made it. It's actually really hard to find information about like who made this. Um, but where's like grow? On grow. Hmm. Please set up more growth. Oh, here, like spawner, particle spawner, slime, firework spawner. Oh, this is for, 
This is probably for the 4th of July event. This is probably new code. Uni engines instanti instantiate uh, fire. Oh, no. This would be old because th I didn't disassemble the new game yet. Um, 277 hours of weed shop? Well, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Weed shop is, is fine because it's a, it's, a, it's a grindy game. So I just have it up in the background. <laughs> I just have it up in the background. I swear, chat. I swear. Object spawner, NPC spawner, I think. Class NPC spawner. Yeah, so like NPC spawner, all this stuff. But I can build this. Like, I thought I was going to have to do like IL patches because I wouldn't be able to build it. Nope, but I can literally build this code. I can build it and it produces a DLL that I can replace the original game DLL with and play the game. <laughs> it's it's pretty awesome dude um but yeah i was i was mainly doing this to do some theory crafting because i want to speed run this game so i want to find like exploits and stuff like super busted strategies i want to find like exactly how it computes like the probability that someone comes into your shop because there's probably some diminishing returns or there's probably some abusable thing. Like maybe there's some item you can spam a lot of. Maybe there's a certain variant of weed that you should make. I don't know. Uh, code signing. What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Once again, I'm not doing this because I'm trying to pirate or, or do something with the game. Uh, like that, I'm, I literally am just curious. If it was obfuscated and stuff, I'd just be deobfuscating it to do theory crafting. In fact, the fact that it's not obfuscated makes me very, very less interested in, in it. <laughs> I'm about to crash out. Have a great stream. See you around. Hell yeah. Weed pirate. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, but I built that DLL and then I got the Unity engine for Linux. And I actually got the game launching on Linux natively. They only ship a Windows version. However, it doesn't run. Like, it doesn't even get to the first screen because they use shaders that are DirectX specific, uh, unfortunately. But I'm pretty sure that if they didn't use DirectX specific shaders, that I would literally be able to just run it on Linux. Hook in DXVK. Maybe I let's be honest. Can't say can't say I'm particularly going to put too much investment into it. <laughs> Just write shaders yourself. So what I did think about doing is maybe, maybe, maybe we could write a, maybe we could compile their C sharp, and we could compile their logic engine of like the game physics of like people entering the shop, buying products, you know, stuff like that. What if we made, we ran the game engine, the internal like logic of the game, and then got rid of rendering entirely so that we could maybe run it at a thousand X native or scale it out to multiple cores and do like Sims and stuff. But I would hazard, since it's Unity, I bet that just wouldn't work because they probably literally do logic based on, like, ray tracing. Not, like, shadow ray tracing, but, like, ray casting and, like, collisions. Like, I don't know if NPCs will move unless they're rendered to the point that they can do, like collision detection on the models if that makes sense like i don't know if their game engine would work without graphics um headless game super task yeah right like wouldn't that be fun we could make our own uh like accelerated hud or like interface where we could have like you know we could have 50 copies of the game running running like one on each core and we would have like a we would have like a super top-down view of like where all the NPCs are and where they're moving. Um, there's legitimately a chance that we could do that. 
There's already people doing fuzzing on Quake 1 speedruns. Have you seen that? Yeah, I actually just saw that today. Took long enough. <laughs> I've been doing it for a long time with my helicopter game. <laughs> Terraflopter. Weed Megacorp. Weed Shop Distress. I don't know. Would people... Would people enjoy watching that? I guess so. You people enjoy watching anything because you're fucking weirdos. <laughs> but like... There's a 99% chance. It would probably take one day. It would probably take one day to determine whether or not it is possible. Like, we would try and find, like, the main entry point of their code, which probably, they probably don't have a main entry point. I would imagine Unity probably does a lot of, like, the initial object instantiation and, like, probably loads the map, which then causes, like, spawn triggers to fire. So we would maybe have to write like a Unity emulator or pull in, uh, in enough Unity. But the more you pull in, the less perf you get. So I would rather like directly call their C sharp functions that are like spawn NPCs. See this NPC spawn. If that gives me locations, then I, we can make that work. Hot tub stream when? <laughs> okay, chat. If this code works today then we'll do a weed shop stream. Because if we get this code working today, then I'm pretty happy with where this project is, and then I can upgrade my offline stuff to this, and then I will be way ahead of schedule. Uh, but if I don't get this done today, then th the world's over, because everything's binary in my, my brain chemistry. Are you on Cameo? I want a clip of you telling my friend his code sucks. I'm not. <laughs> but that would be hilarious. I could make some prefabbed ones. I could make some prefabbed 4K60 videos uh, that that have a, some common uh, conversations you would maybe want to have with the developer. Uh, I love my weirdness. I gloat to my friends that I watch your stream. That's pretty pathetic. Um, <laughs> say it now. I'd have to figure out my script. Changing into into cute bikini be right back. I gotta get my programmer socks on. Dude, the socks that I got for last year's Halloween costume are so programmer socks. Uh <laughs> looks like mono. I don't think the decompilation would be that easy. The IL2 CPP. I can't remember. Oh no, it is mono. Yeah, it's definitely mono. Um but yeah. Uh, it's definitely mono. And IL Spy was able to decompile it, and DN Spy was able to decompile it and modify it using uh, IL patches. And so is what is the NetBeans one? What's the NetBeans reverse engineering thing? Dot peak, I think. Is that NetBeans? It's not, I don't think. Never go full DGen. Dot peak, yeah, 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 yeah. Green screen background so we can overlay different code snippets. Jet brains. <laughs> I don't know. It's all the same shit to me, dude. Dot peak is jet brain. See? I told you. I told you. Did I say jet brains? I think I did. <laughs> I don't know. To me, all the IDEs are the same. Don't compare net beans to jet brain. I said net beans. <laughs> Kappa? Did I? Well, now I don't even know what I said. You got me questioning myself. Uh, okay. Uh, I think what we want is... Is it plans.txt? I think it's plans.txt. Yeah, it's plans. Okay. So, uh, here are the things that we didn't cross off on our list last time. Uh, we want to add mutable support for local pools. That will be pretty easy, but boilerplate-y. Uh, and then we want thread-safe type databases. Uh, no, I don't, I don't even care about that. I mean, we'll put that at the bottom of the list, but we want mutable support for local pools, and then we want, uh, we want support for pushing objects from the local pool to the NUMA pool. And we call this operation globalizing. Right. Uh, also known as turning the frogs gay is what we're really going to be focusing on. And that's, this is the hard part. Uh, this is boilerplate. We should be able to do this pretty easy. 
Uh, this one's hard. Uh, this one's really easy. <laughs> I'd rock a Net Beans t-shirt. Dude, I love, like, dank-ass t-shirts. Title, Turning the Frog Gay. <laughs> the Globalists. All right. Um, okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to add mutable support. So right now, we have four references, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let me grab my, uh, tablet. Why do you not use LSP language server stuff? Uh, cause they're just annoying as fuck. Because they, they just don't consistently work, in my opinion. Uh, which makes them unusable, in my opinion. Um, all right, uh, let's see. Okay, that's all set up. Let's go. Do you know the guy in Seattle who wrote the .NET pr uh, protector and Salamander back in the net? I have no idea. I'm not familiar at all. Uh, okay, let's try this and template for K. Uh, color, contents, layers, two, background color, hacker, background opacity, uh, that as, I think this will make a separate layer for the background. Nice. And the background's locked, which is what I want. Okay. So we've got hacker green. Um... Go to definition and find references work great with Rust. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, but I don't know. I just don't like the bloat, man. I I don't like I don't like things that help me write code because I, I, I think they make you write worse code. Um why does this allocator use global lists? Oh my god, I need more moderators to ban these fucks. <laughs> Time for some hacker green, Bob Ross. Hell yeah! All right. Uh, so right now, what we have <laughs> not happening. <laughs> uh, we're pretty bare bones here. Um. Then pay us. Hmm. Moderators on straight dude, my moderators are some of the least behaved people in my in my stream. It's a shame. Moderators are bloat. <laughs> Money. <laughs> Fuck you, pay me. Okay, so right now what we have is we have four different references. Okay, and the four different types that we have is we have a local ref. Uh, I feel like this is too big of a font. Uh, this. There we go. Alright, we'll try this again. Desu's feeling angry with 275 viewers. <laughs> here's, what, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll share some of the money I get from Twitch with my mods. Uh, which is none, so I've already done it. <laughs> okay, so uh, we have four different references. We have a local ref. And we have a uh, uninit local ref. And then we have a numa ref. And then we have an uninit numa ref. Okay. No way I'm rich. Zero divided by three. Millions, right? Yeah, it's a div it's a div of zero. Funny thing that all the mods are subs, so we already pay combo, so <laughs> yeah. yeah, simps. <laughs> okay. Uh anyways. Uh okay, so we have the local reference, and a local reference is read only. Um, it is deletable. 
Is there another E in deletable? Is deletable even a word? So we got a local refs, which are read only. Uh, deletable, uh, basically when you reset uh, the pool. You can't actually free an individual thing, but you can free the entire pool. Um, then you have an uninit local ref. This is uh, writes only and write once. This is also deletable. Delectable, delete, deletableable. Time to upgrade to tier three. I don't think tier three on my streams, uh, on my on my channel, get anything. Uh, there's no reward. So we got read only and deletable. We have write only, write once, uh, and it's deletable. Then we have this numeref, which is read only. Um, and it is. Uh, that's it. <laughs> It's just read only. It's just called two brothers. Debatable. So basically equivalent. No, no. Uh, oh, and we can say that this one is duplicated to each Numenode. Okay, then we have an uninit numeref. This is write only. And we have write once. Okay, and that's it. And it's also, uh, that's actually not duplicated until it's initialized. Duplicatable. <sighs> okay, so now you might be wondering, uh, okay, this sounds like it covers all your things. You can write once and you can read. No, we actually need to write multiple times. And the reason we need to do that is because we want to support globalizing of values. And what that means is we want to, this is the use case that we want to make work today, uh, which is going to be really hard. Um, I might cry if it doesn't work. So we have a little buffer here. We're going to call this buffer. We want to deserialize this. So we're going to deserialize that buffer into... This is a pool. This is the local pool. And we want to deserialize it into the local pool because we then have a decision to make. We have one path, which is uh, uh, uninteresting. Right? And in the uninteresting case, we just want to delete it. Right? Right? And that's why it has to be in the local pool, because only the local references are deletable. We cannot delete things from a numeref. So we need to be able to deserialize into our pool. We then need to, after it's been deserialized, we need to make a decision that it's uninteresting. For example, when we're fuzzing, this is likely uh, didn't cause coverage. Didn't cause coverage. Right? And if it didn't cause coverage, then we're not going to save that because we have limited storage. If it was interesting, then we want to then push this, which is what we're going to call globalize. And we're going to move that object into the NUMA pool. Okay? So this is one of the things that we need to write today. So we, we have... Uh, the buffer, the deserialization is done, the local pool is done, the NUMA pool is done, the deletion is done, the resetting of the local pool is done. Globalize, we need to do this today, right? This is, uh, we'll, we'll make a checkbox here and we'll come back here and, and check it off when we do it. Now, we also need to handle um, fuzzing. So this is like the deserialized loop. This is basically, this is not actually fuzzing. This is more uh, creating our corpus, right? This is deserializing payloads, putting them in a local pool, saving them if we want to keep them around forever, or deleting them if we don't find them interesting. So we can do all of that except for globalizing. But when we have fuzzing, and let's see if I can uh, resize canvas... 
Can I just like double it? Percent? 200 percent? Fuck yeah. It's just gonna get la laggier and laggier, I think. Oh, maybe not. It seems to handle a pretty large canvas pretty well. Even though it's a 90 meg canvas, but hell yeah. Uh, be back soon. Taking out the garbage while it's pouring? That's the worst time to take out the garbage. Why are you doing that? Uh, where'd my pen go? There it is. Okay. Um. <laughs> Geek Pirate's taking himself out. Ha <laughs> ha, get it? Got him! Uh, okay. Now, so this is, uh, let's put a little, uh, little box around it. Little dotted line. Chat, how do you like my art? Is this some good art, chat? Drawing scales logarithmically. I got a little moth in here, a little friend. Looks like shit, thank you. I appreciate it. Seven out of 10 is perfect, thank you. Uh, okay, so this is the, um, this is like corpus uh, workflow. Kindergarten level, hell yeah. Nothing but compliments. Do I, oh, do I have the meso bag on here? Um, cause I made like custom things when I made that video. So I have like custom stamps on here. Okay, so this is the corpus workflow. We need to add globalized support, which allows us to move objects from the local pool to the NUMA pool. Now keep in mind, Things in the local pool can have references to things in the NUMA pool or things in the local pool. So what we need to do is we need to, when we move an object into the NUMA pool, we need to recursively move every object that it references into the NUMA pool, which is very hard, okay? Um, that's difficult. We're scared, okay? We're a little bit scared. That's going to be hard code. That's why we're scared of globalizing because we need to recursively move every object in this pool, and we're going to have to do some macros and stuff. Yeah, monkas. Very monkas indeed. Okay, then we have the fuzz workflow. Um, oh, yeah, and then these uh, inside of these pools are their object pools, right? So when we deserialize objects, they are tagged and stored based on their types, such that we can, we can request, hey, local pool, what kind of objects do you have that are U32s? What do you have that are GUIDs? What do you have that's a DHCP header, right? So we have these object pools in both. So what we want to do when we fuzz, our fuzzing workflow is going to start by uh, grabbing a root object, uh, obj, right? So what we'll basically do is we'll ask both of these pools, one or the other, probably mainly the NUMA pool, but one or the other, and we'll basically ask this, yo dog, uh, can I get a DHCP packet? Okay, and let's say that a DHCP packet contains uh, an IP and uh, and uh, flags. Okay, so let's say this is a DHCP packet. So when we query this, this is like its own structure that has an IP field and a flag field. And these are objects themselves, right? IPs and flags. So we have gotten an existing packet that exists in one of these pools. It doesn't really matter if it's the local or the NUMA pool. We have been given access to an object that fits whatever we queried. We got a DHCP packet. Now, what we want to do is for each field, we want to have like some probability. Now, this is the mutator. At this point, it's, it's really up to the user how they want to do this. But let's say we go through each for each field in the object uh, we're going to say, like, we'll have a 10% chance of deciding to corrupt that object. And if we want to corrupt, let's say uh, we decide not to corrupt the flags, 
but we want to corrupt the IP. So what we need to do now is we need to make a copy. We need to make a copy of the structure. We can't mutate a field when that field is part of a read-only object, right? It's a numeref or a local ref. It's a read-only object. We cannot mutate these fields. So what we want to do is we want to copy into a local reference, right? So let's say this is stored in the NUMA pool. So we have something that's stored in our corpus permanently. It's a good DHP packet that we got from a previous fuzz run or a previous corpus collection run. Um, we grab that. So now we make a copy of that object, a shallow copy. And it's important that it's shallow because we only need to make a copy of what we want to mutate. So we make a copy of that to local. So now we have, right now, this would give us a local ref. But a local ref can't be mutated. Because a local ref is read-only. And since a local ref is read-only, we need to make, like, a local mute ref or something like that. Something that is exclusive and writable multiple times. The other option is that we would have to perform the mutation while the copy is in flight. So what a copy actually looks like, right? When we actually do this copy, what this would truly look like is we would, um, we grab this object. We then create an on an it, uh, I missed the letter, a uh, local ref. Right, we make an uninitialized local reference uh, that has the correct shape to hold this packet, to hold all the fields. And then uh, we want to mutate those fields here. Um, and basically, we have to do this in one write. Right, we can only write... We can only write once. Which means that if we don't support mutable references, then we kind of have to get everything right in one pass, if that makes sense. We have to basically instantiate a copy of the object with this mutation performed in like a local, and then we have to write that out uh, and then get our local ref. Uh, personally, I don't know if I like this. I think this would kind of suck. I think instead what I would rather do is get an uninit local ref, uh, initialize it, initialize it to the original version of the structure. Once it's been initialized to that original version, then we have a mutable copy, and then we do our mutations, we do our fuzzing, so we basically get a copy. We just can, we move it, uh, we don't move it, we copy the top level structure from the NUMA pool or the local pool into the local pool. We got a mutable reference to that. And then once we're done mutating and fuzzing it, then we commit that or, you know, call some function that turns it into a local ref. And at that point, it will be registered in the type databases and it will be uh, read only and shareable at that point. Um, local ref make mute. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that. So, this is the model that I think I want to do, and this is what we're going to implement. So, basically, uninitialized local refs, when you initialize them, they will turn into a, a like mute, local mute ref, um, and then you can mutate it, and it, once you commit it, then it registers the object and it goes read-only. You can do that if make mute clones. Yes. But it has to be different than... It has to be like a local mute ref. It has to be like a different object. But yeah, that's effectively what we're doing. I think I'm going to actually have it happen... Uh, well, I'm talking about the internal implementation, right? You, you can make make mute out of this. The internal implementation is that you create an uninit local ref. You initialize it with the original data initializing will give you a mutable copy and then mutable will call commit or something like that which will turn it into a local ref um so we need to support this so that we can do fuzzing 
and we need to support globalized so that we can actually start using our numa pool because right now we're not making any use of our numa pool we're only using the local pool and discarding it in a loop um so we're gonna do this first because it's really easy then we're gonna globalize and once this is done uh once it once this is done i think this this project is actually effectively complete um i don't think there are any other features i need obviously this object pool this object pool is user defined and you can implement a trait so i might experiment with a couple different object pools but i can have this one be a hash map of vectors and this one is a mutex hash map of vectors um all this code is no standard, but I can add a uh, I can add a standard flag so I can get access to mutexes, and then we can have that where, as long as you pull in standard, then you can use the mutex based global object pool, right? What's the command that renders numa topology? Um, ls topo, ls topology, ls topo. Uh, okay. So that's kind of the design. Um, is it like cow? It kind of is, but it's a bit more explicit. So what we're going to do is we're going to start breaking. Uh, can I do mute? Can I do mute on both pools? Do I want to do that? Do I want to make mutable copies that are right multiple? For both? I think so. I missed the stream. Can we restart? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just rewind. In both ca cases, you'd want to copy the data anyways. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out, like, if I want... Where I want to write this code. Um, like, structurally. Um, okay, so... I'm trying to think, would I ever really want to mutate in the Numa pool directly? Probably not. I think we're... N but I kind of want to have a consistent API. Anyways, so we have NumaRef here, which is clone and copy, because it's shareable. It's read-only and shareable. Uh, so we're going to make... Uh, Uninit NumaRef is not clone and copy, because you can't make copies of it, because it's the same as like a mutable reference, right? So we're going to make a copy of uninit numeref because we'll have the same semantics of that. Um, okay. So this is a reference to uninitialized data, which is write only. Uh, this is a reference to initialized data, which is writable. Um, oh, is the music over? Holy shit, we made it through the whole soundtrack. Um, Damn. I was watching some YouTube videos and I was thinking about just listening to them. Um but uh I've been binging like a lot of these like semi documentaries on YouTube that have been fucking fantastic, but uh no mutate inside Numa pool. Yeah, there's like no reason to really uh, a reference to uh, initialized data, which is writable. Um, this, uh, um, hmm. Uh, which is writable. Um, the data is not shared. Or the data is, this is similar to a mutable reference. In that there's only one um, one uh, reference to the data, um, uh, one reference active at a time. Once the uh, this also means that the uh, on an numeraf. This is. Uh, do I want to call it a Numa mute? Or do I want to call it a mute ref? I think Rust would say do Numa mute. I think that's kind of their convention. Um, this also means that the... 
Uh, this also means that the, uh, what does this mean? Uh, the object is not registered in the object databases. Um, only, uh, immutable objects are registered. Okay, this cannot be cloned copied, um, as their keys which allow for safe, uh, mutation. Uh... Uh, as mm, we need to preserve exclusive access while data is mutable. Okay. Uh, Alicado, cargo watch clear. Okay. So, um, so now I need to figure out how I want to design this API. What I personally kind of like is that when you allocate memory, you get an uninit numeref. When you initialize that memory, you get a numa mute. And then when you register the numa mute, you then get a numa ref. That's like. That last song sounded like MC Chris. Yeah, it's Krayshawn, dude. Um, that's kind of my idea. In theory, I could have different paths where uninit numeref can be converted directly into a ref or into a numa mute, but I think I'd rather have the core, the, the root level API design would be that uninit numerefs get initialized into numa mutes, which then are registered into numa refs. And I can make helper functions that do those multiple steps in one pass. And I think that's what I'm going to do, which means that I have to kind of do it for both Numa pool and local pool, which is totally fine. I can have mutable data in the, in the Numa pool. Uh, it doesn't really make sense. Because the Numa pool, I have to broadcast it to everything, and that would be like pretty slow. So I think we won't support that model for local references. Uh, so Numa Mute will only be for uh, local, which makes sense. Like you shouldn't be mutating things in the Numa pool uh, because you're basically committing to committing that object. Whereas the local pool is where you want to work on temporaries. Um, okay. But yeah, the problem with... Um, the problem with uh, mutating in the Numa pool is we literally cannot do it because you have four different copies. Let's say you have four Numa nodes. You have four copies of the same data. How do I, how do I know to update all four copies, right? I can update all four copies by writing over the entire object, but if you update just a single field of an object, I can't, I can't do anything there. I can't detect that you're only updating one field. Right? Like, in theory, I could with a massive, massively complex program. Uh, so, yeah, that's only going to be on local pool. Okay. Um, Numa mute here. So, here's how this is going to work. So, um, let's look at our APIs. What do we have to change? Um, we have alloc raw. Oh, yeah, and then also, I think what I want to do, um, so some of these functions take in numerefs. Well, actually, I think everything right now. So all of these functions for arguments take things by move. So, like, this consumes on a numeref. This actually has to be a consume. Um, but, like, this that takes in a numeref, this could be a reference to a numeref. Um... I think that's just slower and worse. We have to, for the Numa mutes, they have to take references because we can't implement clone and copy on Numa mute because allowing clone and copying of a Numa mute allows you to uh, have multiple references to the same data, which is not allowed. Um, well... You can't use them at the same time, 
But I think what we'll do is things that take a Numa mute will take a reference. Uh, so uninit Numa ref is okay that it's not common copy because you move it when you initialize it. And you it's right once, so you destroy the object by initializing it. But Numa mute is interesting that it's not clone and copy, but we also need to be able to use the same reference multiple times. Um... Which is the same semantics. This this has the semantics of a reference. Because references in Rust are clone and copy. Uh, this doesn't exist in Rust. There's no there's no concept of a write once thing in like core Rust. Obviously there's APIs for it. Uh, and then this is just a mutable reference which shouldn't be clonable. I, I don't like having to pass in as a reference. But I think it'll get inlined fine enough. So it'll be okay. Okay. So here's all our APIs. Alec raw. This doesn't work on references, so it doesn't matter. Uh, init unchecked doesn't operate on references, so this doesn't matter. Init. This takes in an uninit numeref, initializes it with T, and now we're going to change this to produce a numa mute. Right? Numa mute. And then we can't register the type yet. Um, if, uh, yeah. So we don't want to register the type yet. So this is just going to be uh, Numa mute. Get an accessor to the initialized data. So once it has been initialized, then we can get mutable access to that data. Does that make sense? Which then means that Alec is going to give a Numa mute because this will um this initializes that value. The last step is it initializes it, which now returns a Numa mute. Perfect. Um, then get unchecked doesn't use references. Get um. Can you fuzz a USB stack with it? You could fuzz anything with this. This is universal. Um, this would fuzz a USB stack quite well, to be honest. Um, this would be a great, great... That would be a great target for this. Uh, so get operates on a numeref. Yeah, I think we'll have get and we'll have get mute then. Um, Numa mute. Okay. Uninit gets an uninit. Passing in an uninit produces a Numa mute. Numa mute here is produced from Alec. Get unchecked. Get. We need to make a get mute. We'll do that in a second. Uh, uninit slice. That allocates a slice, initializes a slice. So here we go. This is going to mute. When uh, get an accessor. Okay, this is a numa mute. Alex slice. This is now a numa mute. Get unchecked. That doesn't operate it on on it. Get that takes a reference and then localize. Okay. So now, what we want to do is we want to write a get mute. Uh, get a mutable reference. Reference to a value in the pool. Um, get under mute. This will take a numa mute. It can't take it by move. It will take it by ref. Um, as to not destroy the uh, numa mute. And this will give an a ref mute t, and get unchecked. Um. <sighs> I think we'll make a copy of get unchecked for mute, which kind of sucks because we have to make two copies. I really wish you could make generic across mute in Rust. Anyways, um. 
Uh, and then here we can say all Numa mutes must be local references. So we don't even have to check if this is local or global uh, or Numa, right? Uh, that will return an a mute t to the object, and then that's get unchecked. Dude, I am, like, really tempted to have get unchecked, uh, return. Hmm. Well, this will need to borrow mute here. Does it have to? I don't think self needs to be mute there. Uh, it actually has to unless we use unsafe cell on the inside. But if we use unsafe cell, I think interior mutability would be okay with this model. Because it would be nice to be able to mutate multiple objects at the same time. Um... Okay, so we'll have get uncheck mute. We know that it's a local reference, so we'll just call get uncheck mute. As long as you have proper lifetimes, it should be fine. Yeah. Um, as a Go developer, I can say you'll be fine with no, 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 no. Generics are generics are very important. Uh, get mute takes in a reference to a numeref, a numa mute to not destroy the numa mute because it's not cloned and copy. Um, yeah, man, I kind of want to support multiple outstanding mutable references to data. Which then means we'd have to switch to the backing pool being unsafe cell again. But like... Uh, this if... So this... This would not be safe because you could call this function twice to get mutable references to the same thing. But this would be safe. This would ensure that you are using the only Numa mute for that index, which then means that this would be the only mutable reference, even though we're not mutable on self itself. Does that make sense? Because if, if with this prototype, we could call get mute with the same numa mute twice. But if we have that be mutable, then if that is mutable, um then you can't you can't possibly have called this twice with the same numa mute and this is not clone or copy so you can't make multiple of them. Um I think I like this. I, I like being able to, like, open up multiple objects for mutation. Unique mute ref to a unique mute ref, yeah. Okay, so that means we have to go back to uh, anything that was mute self now. Is no longer mute self. Uh, we'll get back to that. But it's okay that self is not mute there. I'm pretty sure. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's totally fine. So the only mute self we have now is there. Uh, this is now going to fail to build for many reasons. This now has to be a cell. This has to be, uh, however we do it here. Uh, maybe uninit unsafe cell. Uh, in a shared reference. 
um, e.g. Uh, getting multiple, uh, mul uh, getting m multiple, or getting mutable references to multiple, uh, Numa mutes. Right? Um, if we required, uh, mute self on the accessor, then we could only have uh, one object in the pool available for mutation at a time. Right? Does that make sense? Um, okay. So, maybe uninit unsafe cell. That is the correct ordering based on the Rust APIs. Uh, you want to have the uninit on the outside. Uh, this is now cell new. And then we also need cell. We need that in use has to be in a cell now. Um, dot set zero. So we're undoing. We actually switched this over to mute yesterday from this cell model. But uh, this is fine. Uh, get. And then in use dot set. Okay, so we've handled all the cell sides of things. Um, get mute. And we're just going to comment this out right now so that we can get buildable code. Um, okay. 209? Yes. So this is init unchecked. Uh, so now we'll have the same logic again. Get a pointer to the uninitialized data there. So this is on uh, self.pool.data, I think. Um, maybe uninit as pointer. Expected reference. Can I just ref on the box or do I need to ref deref it? I think that will... Uh, I guess we'll ref deref it. So deref it to get rid of the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Numa size, local size. Yep, this is local size. Okay, get a pointer to that. Then we can get the mutable data here. Uh, this is now local size. Get a pointer to the uh, node data, right? So now we take that pointer which is a const unsafe cell. Uh, we haven't worked with mutable yet, so now we make it mutable by raw getting uh, to the mutable pointer to that node data. Um, and then from this point on, we're mute. Uh, this is safe because it must be exclusive allocation to T in the pool. It cannot be shared. Um, okay. 281, so we'll have to do the same thing down below on get unchecked so here's get unchecked um we do not need mute in this case this technically builds this is fine but we can actually relax the mutability requirement here by doing this uh just keeping that constant in fact i think that would maybe fail on adder of um so there we go then we're gonna have a couple more of these 396 uh, self here, it expects mute self. In this case, it's just a ref self. Uh, 415. Same thing here, no longer mute. All right, we're making progress. We kind of know roughly what we have to do. It's a couple more of these sorts of things. Get a pointer to the data. This is for get unchecked slice. Um, so it's the same logic as get unchecked. Uh, which is this. Get unchecked slice. Elements. Down here. There's that adder of. So at this stage, we get an unsafe cell from the pool data. Constant. Everything's constant here. And we should have another mute for initializing in here as well. Actually, I don't think we have that here. Uh... Base, 
what's going on here? One eighty two. Oh, in lib. Oh, this is due to the mute changes. Um, okay, so let's keep working on this API then. Um, okay, so initializing an uninit leads to a numa mute. That creates a numa mute. Allocating produces a numa mute because it calls un uh, init under the hood. It's just a little wrapper. Uh, get unchecked. Uh, that gets that value, that gets this value, get mute, get a mutable reference uh, to a value in the pool. This takes a mutable numa mute, and this takes uh, returns a mute. Self is not mute, but that's okay. The unsafe cell, the unsafe cell allows for interior mutability. Otherwise, that would, fa that would fail Miri checks. Um, and... The numa mute is exclusive read write access to only that region, so it's fine. Uh, we're not giving mutable access to anything that anything else could access in self, so this is actually okay, right? This is fine. Uh, so now we need to unfortunately make a copy of get unchecked, which I don't want to do, but we have to because Rust doesn't allow generics across mute. Uh, get a mutable reference to an object in the pool at index. Uh, the color must ensure that index is properly aligned, allocated, and initialized to that in the pool. Um, uh, it must have... It must have exclusive access to the uh, memory referenced. Index must be a local reference. Yep. So this get unchecked mutes. Mute. Uh, now this raw get here, this is now mute, and then we want to maintain mute through the rest of this. This is gonna be adder of mute. Got a sub slice. Uh, is this get unchecked mute? I think it is. Mute here and mute here. You know what? This is the same logic as init unchecked, isn't it? We take an index and... And we go through this. Uh, so what we could do instead is we could just make this return the pointer. Um, so this is just going to be, uh, get mute pointer. Um, get a mutable pointer to a T at offset index. Must be validly aligned and blah, blah, blah. It must already be clear localed, right? And then this is going to yield a mutable uh, pointer to T. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes sense to me. And then uh, get unchecked mute. This doesn't need to exist. That's great. So now we don't have as much code duplication because I was a little worried about that. Um... And it unchecked. Uh, get mute pointer. I think I'm okay with this. Uh, so now this will be right val. Get mute pointer. Um, this is get mute pointer dot write uh, get mute pointer dot write okay and then get mute pointer get a mule pointer to t we don't need val anymore because it's not used uh the type of the value needs to be known at 248. What? 
Get mute pointer returns a mute T. Found reference. What? The type of this value must be known to call a method on a raw pointer. How is it not known? I mean, we could explicitly say T here. Okay, that did it. So get mute pointer T right val. Uh, okay, we'll do that everywhere just to be explicit then. Okay. Hey, babe, she really, really, really want to go hard. Um, then we can get unchecked mute. Oh, this is get mute. So this is now, um, this is get mute pointer and mute deref. Um, so we literally just deref the raw pointer and then turn it into a mutable reference, right? So we convert that into a mutable reference and return it. And then here we can do the same thing. We can be explicit about T. Okay. Uh, 323. Uh, number index. Uh, clear local. As you size. Shift by shift. Right? So we clear the local flag, we convert it to a U size, and then we shift it into the correct position. So anything that does get mute pointer should be doing those shifts. Um, clear local as U size shift. Clear local as U size shift. Clear local as U size shift. Uh, pool index has already been clear local as U size shifted uh, above. Okay. Nice. Uh, 348. On and it slice. Oh, that's not a T. This is a U size. On and it slice, this is initializing the header, which is a U size. Um, uh, this is just complaining about our API changes, I think. Okay, so now we have get mute, which takes a mutable reference to a numa mute, where t is poolable, uninit slice. So the only places we use numa mutes, they're produced when we initialize. They are produced when we alloc, which is initializing. They are um, referenced mutably when we get mute to get access to that specific member. They are produced when we initialize a slice. Uh, okay. Which means that they are also produced when we alloc a slice, uh, which initializes it. Okay. And then we have get uncheck slice. Um... And then get slice. Okay, so we're gonna make, I think now we have to make an uh, another implementation here. Get a mutable reference to ourselves in a given pool. Uh, get slice mute on a T. This has to be a numa mute. A mutable reference to a numa mute. This will give an A mute T. Um. I could also allow resizing downwards potentially here, but I, I don't know. I think I think I'm okay with these not resizing. Um, get mute. Uh, here we go. Okay, we know that it is a local reference. Um, then. We have to do this. We don't have this code anywhere else. We have to duplicate it. There's nothing else that does uh, this. Unlike the other one where we could 
get rid of some code duplication. This one we cannot. And since this is only used in one spot, we're not going to put it in an unsafe function. We're just going to do it here. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to get the number of elements uh, for the slice at index. Um, and R. And this takes in index. Get unchecked takes in an index. Yes. Okay. So that takes in an index as well. Uh, okay. So this is fine. So get the number of elements. That is correctly expecting um, a local reference. And index in this case is nr.index and then this is nr.index here convert that to u size by clearing local as u size shifting it we then compute the layout uh we get a pointer to the uninitialized data we then get a pointer to the node data this is where mute comes into play um and then everything from this point is now mute adder of mute Mute. Mute. Pointer as mute from raw parts. Mute. I think that's valid. I don't think we fucked that up, did we? Um, 517, get unchecked. Uh... On 5.17. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Nice. So everything through here should be mute, 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 mute. As mute pointer. Let's see if that complain. Does this complain? This should. On 5.20. Yes. Nice. That's what I like to see. Rust compiler coming in clutch. Hell yeah, it is. Um, okay, nice. And then I think we're good. So get slice mute takes a mute numa mute that. So now we can't create numa refs. So there's nothing that actually produces a numa ref anymore. Well, localize does uh, when we localize a um, numa ref from the numa pool. So we create an uninit from uninit. We create an uninit and uninit slice. And then we consume uninit. We consume an uninit numa ref uh, when we initialize, which produces a numa mute. Um, and same thing here. Initialize that, that produces it. Okay. Um, and I might make alloc mute as well. I'm not 100% sure how I want to do that yet. Like, I might make a helper here. Yeah, well, here's what I'm going to do. Um, alloc, this is going to return a numeraf. And so is Alex Slice. So this is going to fail to build because it is expecting, uh, it's getting Numa mutes. So what we need to do is a knit slice, we then um, register. So register is what we're gonna call it when we convert a mutable into a reference, right? And that's lossy. Once you do that, you, uh, you lose that reference. You lose the mutable access to it. Okay. This is going to complain because that doesn't exist. This is going to be similar to localize. In fact, it's effectively the same thing. This is going to be... Um, this is going to be convert a uh, numa mute into a uh, numa ref. Consuming the 
Numa mutes um, in the process. Registers like make shared, yeah, effectively. I could call it make shared, but uh, I like register because this actually registers it. So this will take it by move. And since that's not clone and copy, that's the, it's gone. The Numa mute is gone. It can't be mutably barred. It can't be barred anywhere. It has to be moved into here. Then we just take NR index and we, yeah, that, yeah, this is literally correct. So this is basically a zero cost function uh, where we take the Numa mute by move. We produce a Numa ref. This works on unsized types as well. It's the same operation for both. It's just removing mutability uh, from that point. And now this is the only place where a Numa ref is ever created. Um, NR is Numa ref. And then we'll register the reference. And now we only register in one place, which is nice. Self dot uh, pool dot types dot register. Uh, inserts. Yeah, pool deep. Okay, there it is. Um, type db dot inserts. T pool type. Ret, uh, ret dot index, ret. So this is uh, convert to a numa, right? So this is converting to a numa reference, ret. Um, convert to numa ref. Then we insert that into the database. So pool type database insert for the type T, ret index, ret. And now we don't have to register in two different places for both the slices and the uh, non-slices uh, because we are always, um, everything goes through register now because this works on unsized types. Uh, okay, so then this, Oh, register not on, yeah, 261. Uh, this will be uh, self.register that. So that will produce a Numa mute here and it moves it in immediately. And we can actually do this because all these take uh, ref self now. Uh, 413, same thing here. Self.register and it slice. Uh, okay. Um. Yeah. Unit slice can fail. Initializing the other thing can't fail, but initializing a slice can fail. Um. Maybe it can fail. Wait. Uh, oh, this is map. Okay, mismatch types differs in mutability. Um, I can't use the try operator in these scopes, right? That's the, you can't, uh, in an and then I can, I think. I think in an and then I can, can I? Yeah. Are you gonna leave it? Uh, it really depends on these closures. The try operator gets really fucky in closures, so I often just don't use it in closures. In this case, there might be a an, a permutation that would work, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, deserialize, that's failing because these probably uh, have mute on something.
No, because it short circuits returns. Yeah, yeah, that's... Well, it sometimes works. Depending on how the closure is defined, you might be able to return from the closure... Inside of the closure. Um... It really depends on if the closure returns the same type, uh, which basically has to be an option. It almost never can be a result. Gosh, 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 gosh. All right, what well, we got going on now? Uh, 261, what's going on here? Uh, self uninit map X. Oh, this is wrong. Because we stole it. Uh, this one converts a NUMA ID to an ID. This one does not. This takes, it must be a NUMA mute from this local pool and a NUMA ref. This should fix that. Uh, cannot borrow it as mutable, 544. Yes, um, and that is a limitation of our pool stuff. Uh, or more specifically, parameters. So when we change to mute, we made these mute, but now they're no longer mute again. Uh, and because of that, we have to switch to interior mutability on this. So we'll do... Uh, uh, this is not clonable, so we have to ref sell this. Which is fine. I'm not happy about it, but it's fine. This is a naive implementation. It's not meant to be fast. Um, um, clear. And we do need a ref cell here. Yeah. Uh, it's been a while since I've used a ref cell. Uh, I think get mute. No, that requires mute. Borrow mute. That's what I want. Um, panics if it's already borrowed. Yeah, this should, these should never already be borrowed. I can't use a cell here. Yeah, because cell requires its copy, I think. Um, that needs mute. This doesn't need mute. This just needs borrow. Right? That doesn't need mutable access there. Um. Hmm. Shit. Oh, this is okay. Uh, wait. Um. I do have to borrow here. Oh, shit. Overgrown Carrot, thank you so much for the raid. How is your stream? Hope you had fun. How the fuck do we do this, dude? Mm -hmm. I really don't want to have a fucking guard on this. That would suck ass. That's oh, okay, class. Horrible? Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Why was it horrible? <laughs> uh Oh, one second. Did I fuck this up? No, okay. Thought for a second I put the wrong link. Uh, this is Ash Nico Daisy, and it's got a dank ass uh, progression. Like, tell me that's not the sickest goddamn chord progression you've ever heard. The AD network in THM is jacked. From there, there's the XSS in the room in THM is again jacked. <laughs> Sick. So how am I going to do this? Better than a nightstand. 
And it's okay, he was to me. I really don't want to return a fucking ref. Whoa! Oh, you can map on a ref. You can map on a ref. No way. Cursed. I didn't know you could do this. Um. Okay, so, uh, borrow is self.db.borrow. Uh, borrow the database. Um, map the borrow to the type requested. Self.db.borrow, uh, this is, um, ref, map. I've never done this before. This is sick. You move that in, you get a closure. And then here I can perform the operation. Sick! I didn't know you could do that. So then this is a ref of that? I thought I was gonna have to make my own like drop handled structure. Um. Well, the problem is I then have to change the trait. Is it distro? Oh, uh, what is it? What What is the... There's a command. Um... Oh, maybe I don't have one. I should have whim as well. Yeah. Oh. I don't like this. But it makes sense. I can't insert while I am viewing types. Right? Like, how do I make this work? <sighs> mm. 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 Uh, basically, you can't support resizes with this. Um, can I use ref myself? No. Um, wow, there's a ref cell leak. That's kind of cool. You can leak a ref. Well, we're just going to hack it in. We'll come back and revisit this when I'm really trying to, like, min-max this. Um. Uh, mismatch types. What is it actually returning? Um, 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 um Oh this Oh yeah like how the fuck do I do this then Oh Oh this sucks dude What do I do What do I do chat
Hmm. Use a closure? Yeah, that's... That's what I'm thinking. Mm. Um This will take a uh, F Bitch on Macau. Uh that's null TDB. Okay, here's the actual. Impl iterator? Nah. 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 That doesn't support seeking or random selection. I mean, it does if I do an exact size iterator. But even, no, like, no. No. That, I'm, that's a hard no from me. Sorry. Like that would work, yes. I, I, but nah, I don't like it. I think iterators suck, pretty much universally, dude. Uh, this is gonna take a fun moot, and uh, it'll take a ref index. Right, that'll give us access to that in immutable context. Uh, F. God, Doja Tech, Doja Cat's so fucking good. It's wild. Macau, bitch, I'm a cow. I don't. Bitch, I'm a cow. Bitch, I'm a cow. I go moo. <laughs> it's, it's so fucking good. <laughs> have I installed Gentoo? This is Gentoo, so I would hope so. I don't know how else I'd be running Gentoo. Uh, <laughs> uh, Map. That? I always forget about closures for shit like this, but this is exactly what closures are meant to do. I love this song so much. Like the piano, it's just, it's really good, man. Bitch, get out my way. Get out my hay, bitch. Hard to follow when you miss the beginning of the project. Yeah, uh, yeah, unfortunately. We're working on an allocator, it's super, super high performance. Uh, it's mainly designed for fuzzing. Basically, it allows you to deserialize things, and each object, as they're deserialized, are put into these pools very quickly, such that you can then request all of the objects, like, of a given type. So you can deserialize, like, a massive structured input, and then you can say, give me all of the U32s in there. Give me all of the IP addresses in there. Um, that is explicitly what is, is it, what it is designed for. Um... Okay, it's complaining about these. Better than yas. It's better than yas. But I have to charge. Mm. F. Fn mute. 
I think we will now move these here. And then we'll say, uh, where T is poolable and, uh, potentially unsized. F is a fun mute that takes a slice of numerafs. Okay. Um, how do you manage splitting files? It's default behavior. It's just a, a SP horizontal split command. I don't know if I've heard this song before. Am I a? Uh, from our parts. Uh, and then we'll invoke the funk on this. Uh... Does that work? I think that works. So that's the Numa pool, and then the local pool has the exact same implementation. Pool wall size, bam. Can't borrow as mute. Yep, all these need to be marked mute. My bad, it felt so smooth, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, it is pretty slick. I don't I don't think I know anyone who does it like this. It's definitely a unique uh, way of doing this. Honestly, do I just not even call the closure for the null DB? Yeah, for the null DB, not even gonna call the closure. It shouldn't break anything. Just literally don't even call it. Uh, Numa pool T. Okay, are we wrong? Can we not do this? Is it because now we have closures and closures? The resizing automatic? No, I'm doing that with the mouse. Uh... It wants an ID constraint? Is that all it wants? I can do that. That's totally fine. Anything that's poolable will also be ID. Uh... Sure. Oh, we build again. Do our test pass? Probably not. Oh, yeah, of course these won't pass because we literally, uh, we, we changed these APIs. Only the types APIs have changed. Um, so we'll do la dot get. Uh, okay. Uh, moose. And then we got the types in here. Assert that la.get, dref la.get types zero is equal to moose foo five. Right, so that converts that. Let's get rid of these temporarily. I think we use type somewhere else as well. Up here, yeah. Uh...
This actually converted really well here. Uh, expected two generic arguments. It's the closure. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, let mute temp is temp dot iter. Beautiful. Let's go. Holy shit. It just works. What's up with that? I guess we're getting Mia MIA right now on the playlist. MIA on the track. Is that correct? I think so. Uh, then this is going to be LA types temp Let's go uh, Let's mute temp is temp iter Okay, so everything still works identically to how it worked before. Beautiful. So everything's compatible, but now... Uh, yeah, so all of the APIs are the same compatibility. Uh, local mute now. Um, so Numa mute now gets created when you init. And then you can pass it into get mute. I think I'm okay with this. I don't know if I want to make like an alec. Do I want alec? Um... Do I want a wrapper so I can like alloc mute? Because we have alloc and I can make an alloc mute where it doesn't register it. Fuck it. It's easy enough. Uh, alloc mute and get a mutable reference to it. Newman mute. This one will just not register it. Yep. Um, alloc slice. Same thing. Um, getting a mutable reference to it. Okay, this is going to be mute. And then we'll just not register it. That's it. So now we have little convenience functions here. Uh, Alex Slice mute. So they're just little convenience functions such that it doesn't auto-register it. Um, I like that quite a bit. It might work it might not work what do you mean what might not work The function that finds refs uh, from the type pool could return impl as ref slice numeref. I think closures just optimize better. Like, I, I just like closures more in this case. I do think that would work. Um... I just really don't like dynamic 
typing. Even though... I mean, I guess that's a template. Uh, no, that actually would work. Yeah. I might actually like that. <sighs> that's the... Oh, why do you have to bring it up so late, though? Uh, that would only work if ref imples as ref. Well, it imples borrow for T, and then I think borrow imples as ref. Um, as ref, I think as ref is implemented for all borrow. Dude, this song is fucking nuts. I want to say I hate this song, but I actually think it's low-key fucking fire. I don't know where Azraf would work here. So I went for a walk to buy drugs? Why did you buy drugs? That's illegal. It's actually DREF ref cell. What's the song? It's Where's My Jewel. <laughs> She's got a sick voice. It's really good. Uh, let's see. So how would this work? So ref implements borrow as T. And in this case, T would be slice T. It doesn't implement anything else though, does it? DRF Russell. Um, does this work? Trade implementations. It implements borrow. Wouldn't it have to fork off of the borrow then? You can borrow as uh, as T through self. Um, borrow, 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 implement borrow T for, am I looking at, what? Into... How would that work? I think it does get Azref. I'm just I'm just not sure what the chain is there that causes that ref. Ref. Like, I think that code would work. I'm just not sure, like, what implementations allow that to happen. Because ref doesn't implement as ref for those things. It implements borrow. So then as ref must... Uh, it implements from and into... And it implements borrow. And I think borrow is what would be getting us there, right? ref t it implements dref as well oh is it dref 
Implement DRAF. Okay. Azref. Azref has the same signature as borrow, but it's different from that. Borrow's blanket for any T. Borrow also requires that you hash equal an ORD. If you want to borrow only a single field, you can implement Azref but not borrow. Um, I think Azref is auto implemented then for anything that's borrow, wouldn't it be? I just, I'm looking for the implementation. Not that it really matters. I can just try it. Um, I just don't know where it's getting that implementation from. Azref U for ref T. And there's coercion? Does it coerce through D? I think it does. I think it gets the implementation through the D ref coercion. DF co DREF coercion will give us a ref T, and then ASREF is implemented for all refs. Well, let's see if, uh, let's see if it's right. Infiltrate only allowed in function and inherent method types, not in trait method return. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That sounded too good to be true. Yeah, that sounded like a Desu idea. Uh, once again, Desu coming in with an absolute shit tier idea. Doesn't actually work in reality once you read two documents. Yeah, nice fucking try, Desu. <laughs> Never trust Desu. I know, we need the Desu command back. Sad. Uh, okay, uh, this is gonna be test um, mute. Ref. So we'll create these pools. We'll make an accessor, and then what we'll do is we'll uh, okay. We'll do local accessor dot alloc mute. Uh, we'll alloc mute. Uh, we'll do a structure here. Uh, fleeb, and then we'll have a. B, C. Okay. We're going to alloc mute fleeb. And then once we have fleeb, uh, one, two, three. Um, oh, this needs to be pullable. Yeah, can't, can't pull things that aren't pullable. Okay, and then we do that, and then we assert that rf dot get rf um get mute mute ref is equal to this, uh, and this is how this is gonna work. Right, this will take the local accessor, it will get, uh, that. Uh, oh, this can fail. Unwrap this. Um, cannot borrow as mutable? Perfect. So that requires that we borrow that as mutable. If this is not mutable, then this will fail because it needs to be mutable. Perfect. That's important. Um, then, uh, we can assert that MR dot uh mr is equal to fleeb a one b two c three uh we'll give this uh partial eq and eq you might as well um and that's a reference now what we can do is mr dot c is 69 um mutates and then we'll do mr dot or la dot register uh, not mr but rf.
What? LA dot. Oh, I just literally typed it wrong. <laughs> uh, register the reference. Ref is here. Now we can assert that uh, LA dot gets. RF is equal to 69. Yep. And then we can assert that LA dot uh, types of fleeb. And then we can assert that X0 is equal to fleeb A1, B2, C69. So we're making sure that everything is uh, registered in here correctly, and of course it will be. Uh, X types iter that. What am I doing wrong? Uh, two genargs. And equality. Oh, because that's a numeraf. L.A. dot gets. Thanks, Greg. Beautiful. So there we go. So now this works. We can allocate a mutable thing. We can, when we get it, we get a reference and it's the original. We then can mutate it using a standard mutable reference. So this is literally a mute fleeb, right? So at this point, we have a mute fleeb. We can play around with that like any other mutable reference in Rust. Um, we shouldn't be able to get another one. Oh, we can because we shadow it. If we do MR2, this will still work if we do MR2 here and we uh, bookend it. Okay, Russ is just really smart. Wait, what? Okay, now I'm just confused. Is Russ smart enough for this, or am I just dumb? Uh... Uh... Oh, mutate MR again. No. What? Uh, do I not understand how Rust works? It's this explicit lifetime. Holy shit. That's a monkas right there. Wow. Wow. Holy shit. Wow. That's really scary, man. Unbounded lifetime, yep. Yeah. Holy shit. I don't like that. Uh, that's only on the get mute. Yep, that's the only thing that produces that reference. So what all returns a reference? This does. Um, and this is okay because A is tied to the structure itself. Can I even do this? Yeah, I can't. Um... Yep, that's fine, because we we copy numeref, and we can have multiple of those. Really only matters for mutable references. Um, 
That's fine. This is fine. Yeah, no one in chat caught that. Nice job, chat. Fucking that one up. <laughs> Making me write unsafe code. Uh, we should be able to do... Like, this should be fine because... Um, oh, no. This should be fine because it will just drop MR2. But, yeah. Uh, okay, that makes sense. I think that's the only place where we need it. Like, these ones, it's fine because A is referring to the lifetime of the object. But in this case, we need to make sure that we're tying these two together. That's really, really, really important because that is what is the mutable lifetime. Deny unsafe code. Happy now. Ah, you, thanks, Tilted Tree. That's what we wanted. Okay. Uh, how do you like this API chat? So now um, we added mutable support for local pools. So now that allows us um that now allows us to basically get an existing thing and mutate it um yeah so now what we could do is like a example um this will be like test example fuzz right so we'll create all these we'll create these and this is this is gonna be hot chat okay not gonna lie this is gonna be hot Okay, prepare yourselves. Uh, we're gonna have an A and a B. Um, this is gonna be a uh, ID index indexer. Uh, ref, uh, not ref cell. Numa ref ID index of a U32. B. Okay. And then we're going to allocate a couple of these. So we're going to LA alloc a uh, couple U32s. 1 U32, 2 U32, 3 U32. Okay? So we allocate a couple U32s. Um, can't do equal on those. You'll, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, just poolable on those. So we allocate a couple objects. Okay. Um, fake deserialized things from some other place where we got U32s. So we're just pretending that we deserialized some U32s. Um, actually, we'll do like 4141, 4242, 4343. Those are our like, you know, our magic values. Then we're going to la.alloc a fleeb. And this will be a la dot alloc uh, one u thirty two b oh bad baby let's fucking go dude let's go so now we have a fleeb okay uh, deserialize the top level object oh actually we're gonna do this. Alicado? I think we have bang project, maybe. I should update that so it, it has more detail. Uh, another top-level object. We're going to call this a uh, packet. And this is going to be like IP, and this is going to be flags. Uh, right? What, what, why is there a fucking shout out mid fucking video? <laughs> who the, who the, who the fuck thought that was a good idea? I mean, it works, but. <laughs> okay. So this is like. Emulating deserializing packets. So we deserialize two different packets. Uh, these needs to be unwrapped. Um, then what we should be able to do is LA. We're going to say uh, get an existing packet. 
So la dot uh, types packet. So we're gonna query all of the packets that we've observed, and then we're gonna pick a packet at random. Uh, here's our random number generator. Uh, uh, rand is packets one. Okay. Uh, pick a random packet. It works. It's cursed. Desu, stop! Desu, stop! S stop! Stop doing this, Desu! Stop! S stop! Okay? <laughs> kind of a jam dude i'm telling you man bad baby everyone likes to shit on her she's a little bit crazy she's got some bops okay she's got some straight bops <laughs> all right so does this make sense pick a random packet all right now create a copy of the packet such that we can mutate it, right? Now we can do let mute is equal to uh, la dot alloc rand, right? So we're going to make a temporary copy of that packet locally. I don't give a fuck. Uh, 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 I have more fun than my hands. Eat my pussy like it's lunch. Uh, we're using U16 indices, I think, here. Yeah. Okay. Already borrowed. Oh, yeah. Get an existing packet. Um, Monkatas. <laughs> yep, so here we get that packet. Um, uh, uh, uh. oh, yeah, because this closure might not be called. I don't like it. This is why I want the Desu Cursed implementation. I don't want to do this. I've written worse APIs. Uh, you bitch, you wish I... Get an existing packet. Create a copy of the packet such that we can mu mutate it. This is gonna be alloc mute. Then we're gonna do la get mute packet. In you, you should get fuck boy tattoo. I don't give a fuck. Uh, uh, uh. Um, temp is this. Now, uh, now we have mutable access to the packet. So we could do like temp IP is la.alloc1 unwrap, right? So that will mutate the packet. Um, uh, uh, IP packet, that's a packet, packets one. Move it into here, unwrap that. Get it? Uh, why is that not the type that I expect it to be? Why is that a mute numeref? That's a numeref. Oh! 
la dot get. And this should fail because reference is not implemented. Yep, poolable's not implemented. We have to deref this. And we gotta implement copy for this. Nice. What if there are no pat? Then would then it would panic, Desu. Then it would panic. That's what would happen. Okay? It would panic. That's what would happen, Desu. Fuck. <laughs> oh, why are you typing communism chat in here? What's this communism letters? Jeez. What are you going to do? Set up a missile base in Cuba next? Fuck. <laughs> Uh, okay. Because <laughs> I'm also communicating with your coworkers in parallel. Pfft. Pfft. Okay. Uh, then we're going to uh, get an existing IP, uh, U32. A uh, U32. A uh, U32. A uh, U32. A uh, U32. Uh, this is going to be uh, U32. Uh, pick a random uh, U32. Okay, and then temp IP is equal to... Now, we can say AU32 directly. Uh, mutate the uh, U32. Right? Yeah. And now, we're not actually making a copy of that U32. All we're doing is we're just getting a reference to an already existing U32 that theoretically could be Numa duplicated and all of that shit. Invade Ukraine again, Cap, <laughs> but I'm already in Ukraine. Yeah, uh-huh. Is that not invading Ukraine? If you're in Ukraine, then technically you are an invader of Ukraine. Right? Right? Uh, checkmate atheists? <laughs> checkmate Stalin? <laughs> <laughs> Mutate the A32. Uh, register the packet. Or like, uh, at this point, we have a new packet that's been mutated. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. IP is this. And uh, flags is this. And this will be uh, la.get temp IP, uh, la.get temp dot flag. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Was Stalin even good at chess? I'm pretty sh I'm pretty sure Stalin was good at anything he wanted you to say he's good at. <laughs> okay, we got IP2 flags 5. So we cloned packet 2. This is packet 2. Oh yeah, look at that. We put flags in for the IP. Get it? We put we put flags in for an IP. So we got an existing packet. The existing packet that we got as a sample was this, which was a 4949 with a five. We then mutated the IP field by taking a random U32 for a collection of U32s. The U32 that we ended up picking happened to be the flags value for the first packet, which then gets put in for the IP. And there you go. And you can see how this doesn't require a deep copy to mutate, right? Isn't that fucking crazy? We are able to, this could be like a super deep nested structure and this IP could be a super deep nested complex. This could be like a whole XML document. And all we do is we have to take, we have to take a shallow copy of the top level structure and then we replace the thing we want to mutate inside of it. 
Done. Tell me that's not sick, dude. Uh, again, that was the kind of looks like the guy who made the 30 weird chess algorithms video. Really? I, you think I follow chess, dude? You think I'm a fucking nerd? <laughs> All right. Uh, assert that this is equal to, uh, two five. And all our tests pass. God, we're so fucking smart, chat. We're so fucking smart. This is so sick. Considering all these things will be done magically by macros, right? You kind of look like a nerd? The fuck do you mean I look like a nerd? All right, chat. Uh, so we crossed one thing off the list, which was this. We added mutable support. Uh, okay, that means we get to do one game. <laughs> how many frags? Chat, how many, how many frags are we gonna, uh, how many frags are we gonna play to? Gamora doesn't even like My Little Pony. 69? No, we're not doing 420 or 69 frags. We'll do 25. We'll do a longer round. Okay? Um. Godlike bot. Give it to the pussy ass. Turn that shit up a nut. Final Rage. We could do Final Rage. Zoiland's probably my best map historically. It's a perfect, perfect map for uh, 1v1. Fuck cash. Infinite time, 25 frags, one bot, godlike bot skill. Let's go. Hardest bots. This is a much, much smaller, more open map compared to the last one, so it will go much faster. Uh, and it's going to be a lot more dangerous. Um, I will play better on a map like this, but the bot will also be able to snipe me from across the fucking map. So you're mutating structs that other threads could be reading? No, because I had to make a copy of it. Ooh, ooh. Not a great start. Not a great start. Okay. Uh, let's get some map control going. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What does he have? Oh my god, he killed me. How did he... How did he have enough health? Oh my god, he got that fucking health power up! Okay, okay, we gotta, we gotta calm down. That was a big mistake. We played really sloppy. 37 on that. Uh, 37 on that. So we have the mortar. Let's see if we can throw them off the map. We have to hit these air shots, which is really hard. Got him. Uh, okay. It was 37 was the timing on that. This one's probably spawned the big health. You know what? On this map, I wonder if he's going to struggle to get to that more frequently. Bitch. Thirty-seven. So I missed the big armor. Woo! Woo! I'm fucked. I am fucked. I should be fucked. I'm not fucked. Uh. Oh, Jesus. I'm really bad at downward shots. So he got that armor. 
Woof. I thought I saw him. There he is. Fuck. Uh, so my weapon is dropped up there, and I don't think he saw it. Oh, what? What? That felt like lag. There's my sniper. A sniper and mortar, and now we gotta start getting map control. We literally cannot win without- Dude, that fucking melee is ridiculous. And, like, swapping to melee is just not easy, dude. Dude, fuck off with your melee! Holy shit, I'm losing. He hit me? Oh, holy shit. Okay, the bot is really strong on this. I have no map control right now. Nothing. And I'm gonna see him right when I peek next. I need to get map control. Wow. God, he has so much health, dude. Dude, I am getting fucked. He just got that. Fuck. Holy shit. He's literally like hitting everything perfectly at all times. Unbelievable, dude. This bitch. How much health does he have? Holy shit. Oh, thank God. And I get map. Oh my God. It's time. It's time. Uh, uh, 58 on that. I think he just got the armor. So it's probably like 58 on the armor as well. I really want the mortar. I have it. I literally have it. Oop. He definitely got the armor. Holy shit, he's tanky. Uh, 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 uh. Ah! God damn it, dude. There we go. Armor, 38. Hell, yeah, dude. God, he's so good. Holy shit, these bots are insane. I hit him. Uh, that health is probably right about spawn. He just got it. That piece of shit. Jesus Christ! I hit him with three fucking sniper shots! And he didn't die! Oh, there's two armor spawns on this map. Oh my god! Jesus Christ! Holy shit! Dude, I hit him with three fucking shots! And like two mortars! Unreal. Unreal. Okay. Uh, 46. How, like, how, dude? I pumped so many shots into him. Holy shit. He can't die. It's almost as if the bots spawn with more health, but I don't think they do. I think he just really is on top of these spawns. And I am not. I am, like, so flustered. Fuck. Well, this is a loss. This is a major loss. God, and that melee, dude. Like, I I I'm just not going to be able to switch to melee that fast. Can I get any fucking health or armor or something? Can I get anything? 
Jesus Christ, dude. He just got armor. Holy shit. Dude, this is unreal. This this is un fucking real. I have nothing. There we go. Armor 21. Oh, he killed himself. Upstairs armor is 21. Uh, 40. 21 and 40. I don't know downstairs armor. He's about to pop there. I guess not. That armor, he just got at 53. Uh, wasn't it 40 on that? Got it. 10. Mm, mm, mm. Let's go. Let's go. Get the fuck out of here. My house. I think he just got that armor and dropped down. Okay, he has map control again. I have nothing. I have nothing right now. Oh! Oh! We were both so low there. God damn it, son of a bitch. Oh, oh, fuck. I should finish him off. Holy shit, I put so much into him. Eleven. Nice. Come on. Oh, ho, oh, get fucked. Uh, 48. Let's go. Let's go. 48, 56, 59. Let's go. Yeah, let's see where you at now, bitch. Oh, where's your health at? Oh. Oh, where's your health at? Oh, you have no health? Oh! Boo-hoo! He got the armor up there, and I think the health.
Oh, 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 get crushed. 202, 207. He got the armor. That's all he got. Let's go get the fuck out of my map. I can't even remember the times because the fights are so intense, dude. Oof. He just got that armor. That kind of sucks for me. I, I took his armor off. So I'm going to disengage. Oh, he got that armor too. Shit. Yeah, bitch. Let's go. I need armor. He just got up here. You fucking kidding me, mate? <laughs> oh. He just, he took a lot of damage to himself there. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to give up on that fight. Wasn't going my way. Oh, he just got that arm. Oh my God, and he's getting that too. He's about to come around here. Bam. Nope. Okay, maybe not. God, he, he's just got all the timers. He's gonna be really tanky right now. I can't fight this! No, why are you here? Why are you here? No! No! Armor 25. Twenty-five, 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 and forty. He should be fairly weak. A one. Yeah, now he looks like a bitch. <sighs> wow, that just spawned. I think he'll be a little tanky here. He's gonna be really tanky. Got him. Oh three. Let's go! Let's fucking go! I had 52% accuracy on my fucking sniper and I still was like, dude, it's, I started down what, like 12 to three? Oh my God, dude. Oh. <laughs> Bot knows the RNG of the spawn. There's no RNG in the spawns. It does seem like he has perfect timers. 
just walks up and melees you. Yeah, melee, melee didn't exist in Nexius. So I don't know how to, I don't know how to use melee. I mean, I, I know how to use it, but I don't know how to like utilize it. That was intense. <laughs> I can't, I, dude, I thought I, I was going to just hard lose. What was it? It was like 13 to three to start that. I, I pulled it together. I big pulled it together. Ah. What's this? Mhm, 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 mhm. All right, let's see. Okay, back to writing code, I guess. Shit. GG, I was the bot. <sighs> I, I don't know how we did that, chat. Oh, God, I don't want to write this code. Is everything in place to write this code? We have local mute. We have Numa working. We have localized working. Ooh. Writing code is for nerds. I'm really scared to write this code. I kind of want to write that thread safe type database instead because it will be easy. Ah! Um. Okay. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta write globalize. Is it going to be hard? Is it going to be hard? Is it going to be hard? Uh, we, okay. So we need to be able to make copies of everything. Uh, how do we do that? Poolable. Send and sync is all we have on poolable, so we need to do better than that. All right, beer back. Hey, Ruben, how's it going? Uh, it should be easy for you. Americans are good at globalizing. I'm Emma and Discord. Oh, hell yeah. Working on the Nokia thing? Yeah, hell yeah. 
Good to see you. Uh, uh. So, poolable types. Uh, poolable types are only send and sync. Um... Okay, let's work on a trait for globalize. Uh, so we have the poolable trait. We'll have the globalized trait. <laughs> uh, is this going to be an unsafe trait? I think so. Hey, Surf Guy, how's it going? Uh, globalize. Probably the 80th time you get asked this. What are you working on? We're working on an allocator, uh, for, uh, mutational fuzzing. God damn it, Zom. Oh, how do I want to do this? How do I do this? What is this gonna do? Is this a trait? No, 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 no. We're, well, it is, but it's not yet. So globalize will only happen on a pool and we'll have pub FN globalize. We're gonna take a T, we're gonna take self. We're gonna take a ref. ID index T. Uh, this is going to be where T is poolable. Uh, can this be unsized? Um, can we globalize blindly? Um... Can we make slices copy? Um... Because we want to do a, a bit copy, I think. Do we? Do we care? Too high, too high, too high. What's the sleep schedule? Um. Globalize. So... There's only two different layouts of data. There are slices and there are structures. For structures, we need to go through every field of the structure. And if that field is a numeref, then we have to copy the numeref if and only if I think it's entirely going to be a trait. You say VODs? Eh, sometimes. Not really. Um... Global eyes. Do I want a trait? <sighs> Dude, I have no idea how to even approach this. Pub unsafe trait globalize. 
requires poolable. Okay, that's a good way. That's a good way to go. Uh, so things that implement globalize have to be poolable, uh, which makes sense. So these could be slices of poolable things. They could be ref numerefs. uh globalize and we will take in a <sighs> do we take in a numeref of self i think so uh uh the value we want to globalize has to be a numeref. We can't we can't globalize something that's not a numeref. So we strictly say it has to be a numeref id index t. Okay. Um so we take a Oh, uh, watch. Um Oh, and this is a self. Okay. So, self has to be poolable. Uh, numeref. So, we have a numeref to a self in an ID with a given indexer. And what we want to do is we want to, uh, we want to push this up. How do you sleep when you have that much compute power? Uh, very poorly. Um. So. We're gonna take. That. Is this all we need for the prototype? No. We need a... Okay, we need a reference. Uh, so we want to globalize that in a given pool. And the pool that we want to globalize with, this is the same thing as deserialize. Um... Uh, so we're going to have an ID and an indexer. Globalize. We have an accessor. Uh, okay. And then we take a uh, numeref in here. What am I doing? That, that. Fucking, this artist is dank, dude. Okay. That's the trait. Um, not quite. Now we need the value, which is a uh, numeref uh, id index self. Okay, so this takes a local accessor and a value that we want to globalize. And the... Uh, has to be a local reference. Doesn't make sense. If it's a numer reference, it's already been globalized. Um, okay. Now. This will 
To implement globalize for something. Are you working on your own, uh, on your OS? No, this is on an allocator for, uh, mutational fuzzing. Um... So what will this look like? So for each field of a structure, uh, will I have a globalized slice be separate? Will globalized slice be different than globalize? <laughs> uh can I do this where it's a unsized type? <sighs> All right. Let's see what we can do. Let's start uh let's start off basic. We're going to um So every field needs to be globalized. I think, do we start working on the procedural macro right away? Uh, we will call globalize on everything. Mm. I think this will return a uh, numeref id index self. That's been globalized. So we take an accessor, we take a numeref, and then we globalize that value. Um... Okay, let's see if we can do this then. Can we do this on primitive types? Impl base poolable. So for all the the base types, let's we should be able to implement globalize. Um So the way this will work is we'll do, um... Hmm. I kind of want to detect if it's local. Because if it's already global... Then we don't want to do anything. Can you put your high-performance allocator VODs on YouTube? I'll try to. Um... Hopefully my new internet comes soon so I can upload them. Um Dude, I have no idea how I want to implement this. Um Globalize will be the trait. I have to implement it specially for each structure and type. For base types, I need to call like globalize internal or something. Then you have fiber? No, I don't have fiber yet. It's installed, but it's not active yet. <sighs> How do I do this? I have to have a function inside the local pool that I can call here. Accessor dot globalize and I pass in the val. Uh, this is unsafe impl globalize for tie. I think this is accurate. Okay, so then this is going to be a pub fn globalize t 
self. Self. This will only work on the primitive copy types. Okay. Uh, yep, we're good. NR, numeref, ID, index T. Uh, where T is poolable. And copy. Uh, take a, uh, potentially local, uh, uh, numeref and place it onto the uh numa pool if it is not already on it okay so we're gonna say if nr.index dot check local um local and this is already uh on NUMA, no need to do anything. So that just returns NR. This is going to yield a NUMA ref ID index T. Um, okay, local. We must copy the uh, reference onto the uh, pool. Onto the NUMA pool. Okay, and then this is just uh, self dot, what is it? Self dot numa dot alec, uh, self dot get deref, self dot get, Um, NR. So get it from the local pool and then allocate storage for it on the NUMA pool. This can fail. Okay. Um, and then here we can say, uh, this does not recurse, thus this should only, wait, that's just not safe. I think we'll only implement this on the primitive types. Yeah. Okay. Um... Okay, so we have to make this into a macro. Um, this only works for primitive types as it cannot recurse. And so the way that we'll make this work is by making this a macro. Uh, primitive. Okay, and then we'll take a tie. Uh, that, that. Oh, I really don't want to tab this in, but fuck it. Here we go.
this is uh for Ty. Okay. And then I think we can do specialization, right? So for all of the primitive types, we will implement this. Let's just start with a U8. Alec, globalize. Uh, this can fail. This can fail. So for all of the primitive types, for the base types, we implement this. Expected F64 found U8. Can I do specialization here? I don't think so. Can I do this? Can I specialize these? I don't think this will work. I, I don't think you can do this. Base poolable. Uh, primitive globalize, was it? What was it? Globalize primitive. Uh... No shit. Did that work or did it just scroll fast? No, that doesn't work. Yeah, we can't do this. Um... Okay. That's fine. We'll just, uh... Alright. That's fine. I just didn't want to like pub this, but fuck it, we have to. Local, we must copy it onto the Numa pool. This is for base types. Uh, then NR here. This is just gonna be Val. So if the Val is uh. If it's local, then we get it from the local pool. We deref it. Uh, we know that it implements copy. Um, it's a base type, so all of these are fine. Uh, so we literally deref it. We allocate room for it, and that's it. And then already on Numa. So in this case, we don't actually have to do anything because it's already uh, local. Okay, self, uh, this is accessor. So we're using internal fields. These are private fields, so we're just going to have to say, um, so index, uh, this is, I mean, why don't I just impl this stuff in here? No, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Um, numa colon. Pub crates. So that's only accessible to the crate. We can access that field. Um, and then self.get, this is accessor. So we're gonna look up the value, which we know is local. Um, we get that value, we deref that value. Um, I could honestly use the unchecked here. Get unchecked. Um, K. 
Okay, unsafe, this, this. So get unchecked, that's going to assume that it's a local thing, but we, we've checked that it's local, so this is fine. Uh, that will make a copy that will perform an allocation here. Um, and then this is pub crate. Uh, that expects an index, so I'll just give it the raw index. No, we don't want get unchecked. We want, uh... That was the wrong function. That was get, get slice. Oh, actually, we do want get unchecked. Yeah, get unchecked. That gives a ref to the T. We deref T. We know T in this case is these, which are primitive types. We can deref that. That implements copy. We can then blast that off to the NUMA allocator. Um, because of the type NUMA ref that, which make which takes which makes the generic argument invariant. What is not okay about this? I should be able to say like five, right? I should be able to like alloc five. Doesn't work on floats, but yeah, okay, so it's... Uh, let va uh, temp. I think we need to do this. Temp. Get unchecked. This is weird. How does it like know? Associated function was supposed to return data with lifetime ID, but it's returning data with lifetime NUMA ID. Um. Oh. Oh, yeah, it's fine. It's totally fine. It's... Pff, Jesus. I'm being an idiot. Uh, yeah, we have to localize this. Uh, or accessor... Dot map... X accessor dot localize X. Um, allocate the copied data into the uh, in the um, Numa pool and localize the reference. Beautiful. Let's go. Okay. So we have it working on primitive base types. Uh, we do make it an unsafe impl. Um. Okay, so if it's a local reference, then we want to push it to the global. To push it to the global, we uh, get the unchecked, um, get unchecked to get a reference to it. We deref it, which gives us the raw type, so we've made a copy of the type. We allocate space for that type in the global... Uh, yeah, we allocate room for that in the NUMA node, which will broadcast that. And then we localize uh, the reference. Okay. So globalize is not implemented for anything. This is a globalize uh, trait, which allows um, deep copying a uh local re uh, uh local allocation to the uh numa uh pool it allows deep copying of a local allocation to the numa pool so it takes in a numa ref to a self it returns a numa ref to a self um this also works on unsized things
Oh, trade turn. Yeah, by default. Yep. So if it's poolable, and poolable can be um, unsized. <laughs> We're getting some deep cuts here. I don't even know what the f fuck these artists are now. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. This is dank. Uh, <laughs> this is dank. Okay, so globalized pullable. So we take the accessor. Uh, we'll end up pushing it to the NUMA ID, and then we localize that ID. We take the NUMA ref, and then we return a NUMA ref, so we just round trip it. Okay, let's check. Let's do a quick test. Test globalize prim. Um, okay. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Let's elk is la dot alloc five u thirty two allocates in the local pool. All right, so we allocate something in the local pool. Assert that elk dot index dot check local. Right, so that should pass. Um, that passes. Okay, then. Uh, globalize the uh, local allocation. So here we're going to do a globalize. Or no, I can do um, this can take a self. Yeah, I think we're going to change this to a self. And this is a self. Okay, I think we can make this work. Doesn't have a si oh, doesn't have a size no at compile time. Uh... Can I do a custom self? I think you can. I forget the syntax. Or a type that dereferences to it. Oh, okay. Okay, so I can't. All right, whatever. That's fine. Uh, so here we'll do a uh, globalize. Globalize. You give it a local accessor. And then you give it the thing that you want to globalize. Yes. That can fail because it has to allocate that on the global pool. So this is Galk. Uh, and then we're also going to assert that... We know that this is the case, but we're going to assert that la.getElk is equal to 5. Okay. Then we're going to globalize, and then we're going to do this on the global elk. Check local. This should fail because it's not local. Yeah, because it's now not local. So we assert that that's no longer a local allocation. Let's go. Okay, so for all the primitive types, this is now implemented. So we can now push up primitive types. That leaves... Uh, non-primitive types, which are structures and slices. Holy shit. Is this going to work, chat? So globalize that. Take the local allocator that will push it into the NUMA allocator for that. Um, let's print the... Let's print this. This should be, uh, this should be a zero. And this should be, um... Um, so the first one should be an eight, the top bit is set, and then a zero, and then the other one should be a zero as well. Uh, I think we can use standard in here. 
Okay, we'll just panic this. Fuck it. X. Elk and Gelk. Uh, we have an 8,000 ref. Yep, that's the local. And then we have a zero. And that's good. That shows that we correctly performed a new allocation. If we do this, we should have a 8,004 and then a zero. Yep, or 8,001. Oh, we have a shift of two. Yeah, we're using a shift of two. Okay, perfect. Yep. So 8,001 and then a zero. Beautiful. So yeah, it's absolutely pushing that up pretty straightforward. Okay, so now we need to make globalizing work on structures. <sighs> and this is really hard. <laughs> um... This will only work if everything implements globalize. I need to turn down the F sp stop. My exposure is getting too crazy. I turn up my F stop. There we go. Now my ice is not going nuts. Can we auto implement this for anything? I don't think so. God, this is gonna be really cursed, I think. Actually, I want this up here. There we go. Um, how do I want to do this? Can I do it on slices? I can implement it on slices of primitives. Right, so uh, let's test globalize uh, prim slice. Alex slice five and then index and the allocator. Um, uh, this is get slice, get slice. This is a five, 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 five. And this will be a five, 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 five. Uh, expected an option. So I'll fill a slice with fives. Global is not implemented for that. Perfect. Why don't your traits require clone copy, especially for globalize? Um, uh, it doesn't make sense to require a clone and copy because globalize is our clone. G like globalize is clone, but it's not clone. It is a, a clone with uh, more restrictive semantics. Okay, so now we can implement globalize for slice tie. Um, okay, so now we're gonna get unchecked slice, I think. So this is going to return a slice of this, I think. Let's just panic here. I think that's the correct typing. Get unchecked slice. Perfect. This is pub crate. Okay. 
So, um, we get a slice to that data. Then we will allocate and initialize on the local, okay. Local allocator dot alloc slice temp dot len length of a slice. And then we'll bang in here the, um, um, the local allocator and the index. And what we will initialize each field to will be temp of uh, temp index dot map x la dot localize x uh, copy the slice to the numa pool. Accessor. Expected option. Come on. Come on. What's going on here? Hey, Indie Monkey, how's it going? Why is this not valid? How do I do this? Am I being dumb again? Oh, Numa. I was allocating in the wrong pool. I'm I love how this is so strict at compile time. Okay, so allocate a slice that can hold the length of that for each index, some index. We'll do unsafe get unchecked here because we, we know that will always be inbounds. Um, so we get the slice. We then allocate this. Oh, and that just worked. Prim slice. Uh, allocate a slice, make sure it's local. Allocate, uh, or then globalize the slice of primitives and make sure that that's good. Okay. Okay. Then, um, so that's all the primitives. So that allows us to globalize... Um, slices of primitives as well as primitives, which is really, really, really cool because now that has built up uh, the basic support for us to now globalize. Uh, let's start uh, globalize. This is going to be a uh, prim struct. Uh, struct prim struct. A, we have a U32, we have a B, a U16, we have a C, a numeref, uh, we'll just start with this, it's just a prim struct. Uh, 
Allocate in the local pool. Get. Um, okay. So, Globalize works on slices. And that hopefully will be able to work transparently on slices. I think it's computers. Is it computers? Uh, what is it? The fuck is it? What is it? What's the what's the command? What is it? It's uh oh, it's computer. Computer. There you go. Uh commands add PC this. Okay, um, allocate in the local pool. Prim struct A5 B9. Work, yeah. <laughs> we might leave that for a while. Uh, Prim struct. A five B nine. Uh derive partial EQ EQ. Uh okay, so that uh globalize we'll do that in a second. Uh DRF. Uh Elk. Oh, this. Poolable? Yep. Prim struct needs to be poolable. Okay. Uh, so prim struct doesn't implement globalize. So we want to add support for implementing globalize on a prim struct. Um, okay. So we're going to start off with this structure, which doesn't have references in it. I'm scared, chat. I'm really scared, chat. Um. I don't want to be scared, but we're going to be scared. Poolable, this is going to be globalized now. Cannot find derived macro. Got to pull it in. Let's kill this. Uh, let's kill Numa pool and kill parameters. Okay. Re exports globalize. All right. That's going to fail. Uh, because of the... Yeah. Nice. That's deserialize. We'll implement this up here by globalize. I think here's where I want that. Okay. Is 
This should match on that structure now. It does. Um, okay, so we're now attempting to implement it, but we're not. Now, um... Okay. I don't think I need this. Implement for a uh, tie. This. Nice. Nice. Um, <sighs> oh, I don't want to do this yet. Let's go, um... What we're going to do is we're going to, uh... I think we can generically implement globalize on slices. Which is a good step in the right direction. So, like, up here, we implement poolable for slices of tea, where tea are poolable. And I think we want to do the same thing for globalize, uh, for both of these, actually. Return for more mesmerizing phrases, hell yeah. Glad you're having- glad you're maybe having a good day, I guess you're hoping everyone else is having a good day. But hopefully you're also having a good day. Uh... So, globalize. We want to do the same things here. Implement globalizes, glo globalize for slices of globalizable data. And this is uh, globalize for T where T is globalized. Which is now this. Okay, um, this, let's see, can we do this generically? For T, take slice, this is T, It needs to be copy. Yep, and I was expecting that. Where T is globalized and copy. So, 
Uh, unsafe impl globalized for T, where T is globalized and copy. I think I need to give an IED constraint on this. This is you can. I actually want this to live for ID. Okay, this is a, a our first like hard problem, I think. Um, can I give it a static? Yes. Oh, thank fuck. Thank fuck. Um, oh my god. That was scary. Uh, okay, so... Nice, so that worked. So now we are generically implementing... We can now globalize slices of globalizable data. That's also copy. Okay. Then, uh, let's add support here. Holy shit, I think this is just gonna work, man. Uh, globalize. Uh, these can be unsized types. Um, let's see what happens here. Those have to be copy. So prims are copy. These are copy. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to handle these lifetimes. How do I handle these lifetimes on globalize? ID indexer and this introduces another ID and an indexer. So I think what we'll do is we'll make globalize uh, I think we'll make globalize take ID and indexer here. And I'm tempted to maybe even do that for, uh, numerefs as well. Now they're all tied. Okay. Uh, for globalize ID indexer, where this is globalized for ID and index, I think I might do this for um, everything. Like even poolable, I might add this constraint on. Let's comment this out temporarily. up here yeah because deserialized does that i think i might do that for poolable as well i think it makes the lifetimes and typing a little bit stricter i mean i guess i don't need it um this is id index indexer let's go Come on. What are we shadowing? 298? Thank fuck. It's just a uh, bat. Okay. Oh, thank God. 
Woo! Like any any minute now, I am expecting something that that shows me that fundamentally Rust cannot express this data structure. But I'm pretty sure it can. Um, but like I'm like every time I get a compiler error, my heart sinks. I'm like, holy shit, is this is this impossible to express? Okay. Do I need this static constraint still? I think I still do because Rust doesn't know that that can't be a reference. Uh, has to be globalized in the same pool. And then this is just a wrong implementation, but that's fine. Um, so this is a numeref of a numeref. So this is a nested numeref. Um, so now we're adding globalized support for uh, numerefs to numerefs, which will allow us to recurse infinitely um, at compile time, which is big. Um... So, the way that this will work, this is actually the same implementation. If I'm not mistaken, I think I can use this implementation. Or no, it's actually different. Check local. Uh, all we do is we just call globalize on it. Because T is globalize. So, what we do is we allocate a... Yeah, it's this. It is this. Uh, tie. In this case, it's a T. So we get the T. T might be unsized, but it's a numeref. Oh, I th think we have to do this explicitly for both sized and unsized. No. Because we can numa alloc temp. Globalize. Uh, globalize the um, field, or the value. Uh, temp is equal to globalize, globalize. So for the first time we're doing recursive globalization. Um, so we're going to globalize the, uh, into a numeref, uh, actually into a self. And self is sized. And we will globalize the T. Uh, so I guess we'll do la.get on val. It's like this. Something like this. In this ballpark. In this ballpark. Come on. Globalize. Takes two args. First thing is the accessor. Come on. So we globalize in, oh, uh, fuck. If it's local, then we, well, no, we should be able to, no, this is the same as the primitive. Bitch, you don't know the half. Fucking Iggy Azalea, dude. Now that head over heels. Self is copy.
we're gonna get unchecked val index. So this is a numereth of a numereth. By nature, it has to be. Uh, so we get unchecked the numereth, even though it's unsized. That's okay because it's effectively a box. We deref that to get the original. How does this work? Ah! Um. Fuck! Why does this code have to be so hard? <laughs> oh my god. We have a reference to a reference. We get a self. Self is a numeref. Uh, then... Uh... So now we have a numeref to a T. T implements globalize. Does this work? That gets a self. Get unchecked val index. The numeref. Why does my phone stop charging? Um. Now we have a numeref. We had a numeref of a numeref. Now we need to take that numeref. Is this expressible? I have to call globalize on the numeref itself. I don't know if Rust allows what I'm about to try to do. Uh, so we have... We have... This is now a numeref. Now what I want to do is I want to globalize on that. This is nuts. <laughs> this is actually fucking insane. Do I need a static lifetime on this? No, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I don't even like know what type I'm operating on right now. <laughs> We're like that far in the fucking weeds. Um. Globalize. Temp. I don't even understand how that works and or doesn't work. ID declared there. Numa ID there. We get the internal Numa. Uh, Numa. We then call globalize 
on that value, which allows us to recurse. That gets us a numeref. In the right ID space. Let's do some, let's do some strong typing. Uh, uh, uh we're gonna do some strong typing. This is a numeref ID index T. Good. This is a numeref ID index T. Right? That should just round trip it. Like, this is not a numa ID, right? If this is a numa ID, we'd get a different error. Type annotation, yeah, yeah. Which VOD can I find a description of this allocator? Maybe the first one? I don't know. I don't remember. I'm an alloc. Get that value, we know it's local. Get the numeraf. Get unchecked. Done. We make a copy of the numeraf, which we now have on the stack. We then globalize that numeraf. Arguments. Alec temp. Temp must be T must be static. No, fuck. Oh my god, dude. Um let's try it without size for now, just to make sure. Not that, okay. Whew! Oh. Uh, fuck. <laughs> we have a numeref. That's a local numeref. Well, it's not guaranteed to be a local numeraf. Um So numa alloc requires numa id for the argument. And in this case temp Oh. Oh, we have to do um Yeah. This makes sense. It makes sense. We basically have to do the opposite of localize. So we have a local uh, thing here. This actually needs to be a NUMA ID. And uh, here's what we're going to do. Um, since we've now globalized the uh, NUMA ref, we have to convert 
the lifetime to uh numa id and i'll do this by doing a uh, numa ref fuck yeah numa id index t is equal to uh numa ref we're gonna construct one out of thin air uh index of temp index and then um Uh, convert a numa reference from the numa pool into uh okay this is going to uh convert a reference that is tied to id unless i want globalized to return numa refs and I think that might be more correct. Here's what I'm thinking. I could have globalize. Yeah, we're going to do this. This is more correct. A lot. This makes way more sense. This is... This is, uh, stricter and more correct. And then you will localize these yourselves. So after you call globalize, you will then relocalize them. It's a lot of lifetimes. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Numa ID. Mm -hmm. This more clearly uh, defines what this operation is doing. Three twenty eight lifetime on uh that's wrong place. A lot two ninety eight. So now any place that localizes uh we don't want to localize anymore. Bam, just allocate it in the Numa pool way more clear makes way more fucking sense didn't mean to close that that was a mistake two ninety seven not compatible with trait yep because this is a numa id awesome three fifty one missing marker that doesn't need to happen anymore um Globalize the reference. Um, what's going on now? Is it this? Something's localizing. ID Numa, ID Numa, takes ID, gives Numa. Numa Alec. We have a tie, we pass it in there, that should be fine. Uh, right? Uh... How many lifetimes you got? A lot. 
<laughs> um, two ninety five. Ah, shit. Let's see. Let's see what the first problem is. Oh, I told you this was going to be fucking hard, chat. Okay, Val. Ah. That's right. Convert to uh Numa ID. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Chat, this code is not fucking easy. <laughs> so we create a new invariant reference. This is the same operation as this, right? So uh, we're already on NUMA, so check if it's local. Let's go through all our implementations now. Globalize. We're on NUMA, we're good. Um, globalize. If it's local, um, then we have to copy it. So we get the value into a, into a local stack variable. Then we allocate that variable onto the NUMA pool. Otherwise, it's already on NUMA. We don't have to do anything. We just convert the lifetimes. This is undoing a localize, right? For this condition to be hit, localized must have been hit, which is this. And we're undoing that operation by switching the lifetime back. And it's just a pass through. Oh, oh, fuck yeah. Same thing down here. ID Numa, ID Numa, ID Numa. That's an ID. We get the internal. We then globalize the reference itself. Um. We pass in an ID index T. This works on slices. Then we have the prims above. Do I still need static? I think I do. No, I don't. That's good, I think. Three sixty one might not live long enough. How? Shit. 
Uh, we must copy the reference onto the Numa pool. That's what we do. So we get unchecked that because we have a we have a numeref of a numeref. We grab that. That gives us that numeref. Maybe unsized, but that's okay because the numeref makes it sized. We then globalize that, which does a conversion. What am I doing wrong? Fuck! Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, I don't know if this is expressible. Um, okay, this is the first- this is the first spoop. We got the first spoopiness. Uh, for a numeref IDT... Mm. And I Come on Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go! Let's fucking go! Alright, uh, now we want to try it on a... Let's see if we can get this working on... Uh... Let's try it on, uh... Globalize, uh... Uh, we want to try and globalize a reference itself. Okay. Allocate in the local pool. 5u8. Unwrap. Elk is equal to la.alloc. Elk. Unwrap. Um, right? So if we strongly type these, we have a numa ref of a u8. Then here we have a numa ref of a numa ref of a u8. Uh, these want indices, uh, we're using U16 indexes. Um, wrap the allocation in an allocation. So now we have a reference to a reference. Um... 
Ella get. Index. LA dot get. LA dot get. Get, get. This is the value. This should be five. Beautiful. Uh, okay. Um, so then, can we globalize this? Globalize using the uh, local accessor of the elk. <sighs> Fuck. How does that cause the above one to fail? How does it? That's really weird. Six fifty six. How does this cause that to fail? Uh, because it changes the implicit lifetimes. Yes. Um. Are you winning, son? No. No, I'm not. <sighs> this globalize needs the inner to be numeref. And that is correct. That this is correct. This is correct. This is we can't globalize like this. Can I make this work though? Well, here we go. <laughs> this allows us to globalize uh, index with a NUMA ID on the inside. So now we want to go this way. Um, that's not a conflicting implementation. Okay, so then if I can't do that, then I need to find a way to make this work. Globalize the reference.
What if we ARF this? Uh, we'll ZRF this. Still over, over. Hi, it's me back again. Here to remind you that it's not worth it. <sighs> to be honest, it's sharp as fuck. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Right? It's not actually 1080p. Or it's not actually 2160p. It's just 1080p upscaled. But it looks sharp because... Because it gets around stupid encoding shit. <laughs> uh, consider adding. <sighs> Fuck me. Disrespectful. Maybe I can't express this in Rust. <clears throat> so. I don't. So over, over, hides me back again. Here I mean, we're never gonna have a numeref of a numeref. Right. We're gonna we're never gonna have a numeref of a numeref. Are we okay with not allowing that? How do I handle this? I think I can do this with the macro, but not with generics. Very dairy like hides me back again. It's a money. Hides me your best friend. Can I do this with erasure of lifetimes? To me, I'm over it. Yeah, we're so over, over. I mean, the fact that we got slices working generically is hot as fuck. Numerefs of numerefs. We cannot do this. This is not possible. And the compiler is right. Um... We can do this. And this is okay. And I actually like this. Because this is correct. Like, the compiler is actually totally right. That this is fine. We can globalize, uh... If that's already a NUMA ID ref. So what we do is we get that. We then globalize the reference itself. So we remove one layer of indirection. Okay, so if we go in here, I think that that generic implementation is still important. So here's what I have to do. So I have to go the other way, right? Basically, traits can only go top down, and I have to go bottom up. And to go bottom up, I have to know the type all the way at the bottom, and I can't do that with a recursive trait. So what I can do here is I should be able to say let temp is equal to uh, uh, la dot get um, elk, and then we globalize this la this uh, globalize the uh, the inner reference first, right? So we'll globalize the inner reference. Here, uh, 
right? So we, we globalized the inside part, and now that that has been globalized so that that has the right lifetime, we then can globalize uh, that value itself, which is the outer one, right? And this is an unwrap. So now we have globalized that. Um... Oh, this is a get get. Yeah, we have to access the inner component first. You have to globalize from the bottom up. You can't globalize from the top down. So that's what we're doing here. So we're going to globalize from the top down. Um, uh, oh, wait. Um, no, it should work on this, shouldn't it? It should be this level of indirection. Because that's the inside one? Yeah, that, what, um... Right? This should be a, this should be a numero ref U16, U8, right? Yeah, it is. Sorry, mom and dad. I did something bad. Temp. That's a numeref itself. Borrow data escapes closure. Let's do this. Right? Like, this should be fine. That should be tagged ID. Borrowed data escapes closure. That's a numeref of a U8. No. Come on. Come on. Why can't I do this? Why can't I do this? Hell, I get. Can't I do it on the first allocation? Like, I can globalize this, right? I should be able to do that. Fuck that. Yeah. Is that not what I have at this stage? Because I'm back to the original U816. Is it? Oh, it's because of this. Because that's not finished yet, right? And I can't 
I can't globalize on this. I think this implementation makes no sense. I don't think there's any situation where I'd use this trait that I'm using, that I implemented. Because um, here I'm trying to globalize a reference that's already been globalized, which is pointless. Right? If the thing below you has been globalized, then you should just alloc. There's no reason, like, what I really want here, this is just na.alloc temp. Right? There's no reason to globalize something that's already been globalized. Um, in which case, this hasn't actually done anything new. This is, uh, this is not reliance upon this implementation. And basically, this implementation is pointless. So we can just get rid of it. Right? This will pass all the tests because that implementation is not even being used. You, there would that just never would occur. Um, yeah, you'll never have a local reference that has a NUMA reference inside unless you've already globalized internally, which makes no sense. Um, Okay, uh... So, that works fine. This implements globalized for globalizable data. Does this even work? Yeah, we tried this. This works. It has to be copy, uh, which should terminate the end of the loop. Do I want... Let me figure out if there's something else that I want. Do I want this? This would have to be on primitives. Would I ever use this? Okay, so I have a structure. I have references in that structure. Can I do a slice of references? I don't think so. Allocate in the global... Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do... Let elk is la.alloc slice 5. Uh, the allocator in here and then inside here. We're going to do la.alloc5u8. So we're allocating a slice. Right. Um, so we have a slice of references, right? This should be a numa ref. u16 of a numa ref, uh, a slice of numa ref. Uh, U16U8s, right? So this is the type that we've created. This is something I'd like to globalize. All right, I want to be able to globalize things like this. So I can create that, that's great. And then I don't think I can do this. Um, using the local, uh, local accessor of this. Globalize is not implemented on numeref. 
And that's really what I want this implementation for. But this requires that you already globalize the sub-elements. Right, so this just doesn't work. Um... I guess this is only for primitive slices. This just only helps for primitive slices. And it kind of helps me in my mind to maybe move this implementation up into the concrete primitive slice implementation. Um, oh, this also works for, oh, this works for any copy data. Um, and numerefs are copy, but they have lifetimes. Um... Hmm. Four IDs. The problem is this is top down. We have to go bottom up. I think that's the true crux of everything here. We have to go bottom up. Um, and bottom up really is only going to like work on structures or if you do it manually. So let's, let's try and get a prim struct working. Globalize not implemented for prim structs. Um... Okay, let's see what this looks like. Implement globalize for a given type. Uh, so basically, what we need to do is we need to reconstruct the structure... Before globalizing it. Isn't that what I was doing in the other thing, though? Um... Structures have to be sized. Okay, so since this is sized, then uh, already on Numa, no need to do anything. Just convert to a Numa ID. I see no brain enough. Okay, and then we can just panic here. And this should build. Uh, oh, we changed globalize. Now takes, uh, I'm guessing, an ID index indexer. And a NUMA ID. Come on. Build, you fuck. 
Uh, this is a Numa ID. Good. Um, uh, alright. That failed with a panic. Yep, because we're trying to do this. So what we need to do is for each field... We need to globalize each field. Let temp is equal to, so this is create a new variant of the, uh, uh, create a copy of the structure uh, via, um, create a copy of the structure create a copy of the structure. Yeah, that's it. So what we're going to do is we're going to instantiate a name. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. For each field. Uh, this is the outside repetition. We have a field. And we want it to come from... Accessor dot... Um... A ridge... Is... LA dot get... Oh my god. Oh. LA gets. Uh, this is accessor. We're gonna get the. Val. Now we have a ref self. Then, inside here, we can do a ridge dot fields. So that has made a copy of the structure. Now we have to do that through globalizing. But only for fields that need to be globalized. So this will work. Like right now this will work, but this won't work for things with references in them. I think we got this. I, I'm not going to count my chickens. Uh, Accessor dot... Numa dot elk. So this is the same as just doing copy. So this would currently work on anything that's copy, but we're about to make it way more complex than that. Uh, dot alec temp. Um, copy is not implemented for prim struct, which is required for alec. Um. It's kind of a shitty message, but it's okay. It has to be anything that we put into the Numa pool has to be a clone and copy. Good. Okay, so this has globalized it, and then what we can do is we can do a Gelk lookup on the global uh, the Numa accessor. 
right? So like that has globalized the structure now. Um, now it did that through clone and copy, but that's a prim struct. Let's go to a more complex one. So that's fine. That's super fucking easy because the structure implements copy. Um, so now we're going to go to this. Uh, now we have an index, an indexer, and now we have a numeref inside the structure. I uh, can't partially queue on that. Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, prim structs. Uh, primstruct ref. Uh, this is gonna be LA Alec, uh, U32, just a 69. So now we have a numeref inside there. This now fails. Perfect. And this needs to fail. Because we are now, we need to globalize that field. Do you call globalize on T or numeref T? On numeref T. Yeah, I think globalize on T should be a NOP, while numeref T will move it. Yeah, so that's... I don't know if I can do that. I don't think I can do that. Because, uh, like, can I? If I can do that, that, that solves a lot of my problems. Um, I mean, this is nothing. Can I do that? How would I make the trait? It seems more natural, I agree. Um, so, basically... <sighs> that's deserialized. Um... Globalize, so this would take self directly, right? So instead of taking a numeref self, this would take a self directly. But that doesn't make too much sense. How would I access the, it if it's a numeref? Would I just make multiple implementations let's try it let's try it self and returns to self okay oh well that's gonna be a problem right away <laughs> um Hmm. I would have to have a size and unsized. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. I don't think it's going to work. I think with like a billion things I could get it to work. Maybe. I don't know. That gets really wonky. So what we're going to do is we need the globalized macro to work. You also need to support unsized. Yeah. And I could have separate things, but then I'd have to detect basically in the macros whether or not I call the sized or unsized variants. Um, so it doesn't really make sense to have it be a NOP. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do that. We're, 
We're gonna do this. We're gonna fucking do it. Okay, so, um... Mm, 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 mm. Mm. These are fields of structures. Macro rules. Globalized field. Can I do this? I don't think I can. <laughs> My Auric Java Sunlang too long nested folders. <laughs> that's a good that's a good first message. Oh Yeah, this is not this is not this is not rust really at this point. Oh Expected comma. Can I not invoke a macro here? Okay. Because I don't think you can do an if statement, but let's see if I can make an if statement happen.
I think I might have to write an actual procedural macro. I don't know if macros are powerful enough to do this. Um... Hook! If I could call a macro while constructing a structure, I'd be fine, but I, I don't think you can. If I got rid of these fields, I think this would work. Not quite. Um, globalize U16 not implemented for primstruct. Um, so we filled the match ID index tie. Really? Because I can match on this. Mm. What? Expected Numera found that. Oh, that's on Prim. Yeah, uh, let's turn this off temporarily. But I think this will work. Let's see. How the fuck?
field. Globalize field. Am I doing something stupid here? Let's try it manually. Oh. Wait, no. Um. Globalize on that. It's invariance over ID. Um. Will the Alicado series be uploaded to YouTube? Probably. Oh, uh, what the fuck, dude? Numa Alec Temp. Why can't I do this? Um, What? I didn't save it. Uh, okay, so this is not valid. Oh, that's globalized complaining. Okay, let's get rid of that. Okay, yep. Yeah. Hmm. Um, okay. Uh, accessor.numa.alloc, a ridge field. This should work, right? I'm just gonna unwrap for now. Uh, la dot get or accessor dot get DRF that. Really? How? That's the same as this. Numa ID. Oh, 
because it's a different structure. Oh, shit. <sighs> Fuck. We cannot do we do have to localize these. I don't know how we're going to make this work, but we're going to have to make it work. has to be the same type in and out I don't know how we're going to do this It might just work It might just work Um, okay, it's already on that node. Then down here. Okay, Val. Okay, Val. Uh, localize. This is a uh, allocator dot localize or er, accessor. Uh, fuck me. Localize. This needs to localize. Where are these all from? 134? What? Weird error. Three on four, T might not live long enough. It has to be static. What?
Oh, test. I was about to say, how the fuck are we not hitting that? Okay, that makes sense. Val, then we need to globalize or localize this. Gelk. These are now on the locals. Three fifty six. Um, that error means bad news. Nah, this error is fine. This error is totally fine. Maybe. Hmm. <laughs> I can't alloc a temp. Unless the temp is Numa ID. Okay. Temp right now is a, uh, this is a name. Lifetime index. Yep. This macro is very broken right now, but this is okay. It's temp. I don't think you can transmute lifetimes.
Primstruck doesn't have a fixed size? That's not true. It's not true. It's literally not true. I don't, I don't understand that. Can I transmute it to itself? No. How does that not have a fixed size? It, it just does. Um, Um, how do I change lifetimes of a structure? That's the problem. I have to change the lifetime of the structure. It is an ID. Fuck. Can I even do this? I don't think this means anything. Like, this makes really no sense.
Yeah, it just you literally you can't do that. Uh, I need to change the lifetime of the structure, man. And I think I need to convert it to a Numa ID. Mm hmm. Oh, fuck, dude. Is this impossible? Okay. <sighs> Shouldn't it always return Numa ID? Yeah. Try a couple other things. Yep. 
Um, okay, so I this might be a problem with the globalize. Let's try this. The problem is self. How the fuck do I make that work? Um... Shit. The problem is I have to return a different type than I take in. I don't think I can do this with a trait. Um... Yeah, I can't do this with a trait. Right? Okay, uh, let's try this. I don't think we can use traits for this. Is it possible to access the Maple Story Gidravid that got taken down? Not right now, no.
Arigato. Okay. We're not implementing a trait. Takes in. We're just gonna hard code these uh, lifetimes right now. Uh, ID index. This takes in a name, ID index. It returns a name, Numa ID index. This has to be pub. How do I call a... How do I call a function on a... Mm -hmm. If it takes self, I can do it. Um, oh, I have the type. Um... Okay. Um, you can't get a T off this, can you? <laughs> Let's see. Oh. Uh. I'm gonna hard code it, I think, for now, maybe. Well, this is a U32.
You need impulse on base types? Yeah, but I can't do impulse on base types. Dude, I don't know how I want to structure this. Oof. Can you use RF specialization so that globalization on intrinsics does nothing? Maybe. Well, let's do this. Um... Why? Um, ba 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 Field. DRF. Okay. <laughs> uh Can I do a traits, dude? I think I can do a traits. I need an associated type. I don't know why I didn't think about that. Uh, Numa type. Right? This is all I need. I just need I just need a different type. An associated type here should work. I don't know why I didn't think about that. Um It's just the output. Uh, the pneumotype for sliced teas. Uh, this is... This can actually be self in this case, I think. Yeah. Pneumotype is T. Oh, and this can be, uh, can be on slice. Let's go! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Um...
Mm. What's the problem here? Oh! Holy shit, is that it? Oh my fucking god! Oh! Uh. This hurts. I think that means that Numeref would work. Okay, well then can we make a globalize work on T's? That did work, right? We call... That's on Prim Slice. Prim Sluck... Uh, Prim Slut... Uh, ref. Globalize? L.A. Elk? Yeah, that's just the original allocation. Then we're actually returning Numa ID, which I like. That's more correct, in my opinion. So the only thing now is that uh, we can't just call this on every field. I don't know how we do that. This is like, this is starting to get pretty tough. Uh, okay. So we have a different output type, which is critical. Which makes sense. So these output their own types. This outputs their own type. I think we could actually do the numeref implementation now. In order to make fake impulse for the base types. <sighs> The problem is it has to have the same prototype and the prototype has to take a numeref because it has to work with unsized types. I do think that we can make this work on the, the recursive numerefs which we tried before and then failed. And I think with the different output type, I think it would work now. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Um, I don't know why I didn't think about an associated type. That was stupid of me. Um... Feels hacky. Can you just can you not distinguish between refs and not refs with pattern matching? That's what I want to do. Legitimately. I know that seems hacky. That's what I want to do, but I don't think you can. 
I, I don't think you can. Unfortunately. Just parse the string. Globalize. Numeraf. Could I make this work on T's? I don't think so. I think if I made another trait, I could maybe make it work. Right? If I made... If I made globalize take in a T, and that T must implement numeref or primitive. Okay. That would be sized. The exact signature must be the same. Oh, okay. I see what you might be saying, Big Fox. Okay. I see what you're saying. Since we're invoking this with a macro, we could implement a different trait that's not called globalize, that has a function called globalize, that we pull into the scope, and we implement that on the prims. Like I, see, I see what you're saying, bruv. Definitely a monkas. Oh, function overloading and rush. Um, I think I could have it take a trait, and the trait is numeref for primitive. Right? Could I do that? Can can I do that? Can I make globalize take in a T where T is a numeref for primitive? Oh, <laughs> say, man, you're cool. Oh, uh, yeah, very, very cool. This is what cool people do. I think so. Yeah, I think. Numeref for primitive. How does that work with our associated constants? <laughs> Can I just not take a T that sized?
Need to support slices of base types and slices of refs. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Okay, I know. Uh, do I need another trait? Why would I need another trait here? I feel like the hacky overloading is promising. I kind of agree. Kind of agree. I mean, if it works, and <laughs> see. Well, that, that's just not right. Do we never fix this? I'm terrified. Uh, 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 We're in the code for the current whip of save transmute. Yeah. I don't have high hopes for save transmute, to be honest. I really fucking wish I, I could say I did, but I don't. But it's not as gross as what we're about to do. I'm just not thinking very clearly right now. I'm pretty sure that we could do this in a correct way. Case would you like that? My still hard. Uh, 
saying you don't have high hopes for me. <laughs> I mean, you know. Look. You know. Everyone has hopes in their own ways. Alright? Everyone can be hopeful of their own hopes and dreams. You know? <sighs> Ooh. I feel like I'm doing this wrong. I don't like this. This new. Coulda, shoulda, woulda, but you didn't. Great and bullshit. Don't know what to do with that. I just want to safe transmute slices of pack types into slices of bites and back. Yeah, I don't understand why they're doing... Like, I understand that they're... I understand that they want it to be this, like, perfect fucking thing. But... It doesn't need... You don't need to have, like, stability guarantees. Like, actually, I think the stability guarantee stuff is just stupid. Confidently describe what I'm doing. Holy shit, that might be really hard. I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see here. Uh, okay. Uh, basically, right now, what we're doing, uh, very confidently, is we are... We are taking... Uh, we're taking rust macros and we're abusing them to make them automatically transfer heaps to other heaps. Uh, it's a really simple operation and we don't really have too many concerns about how we actually want to implement this. We're just kind of experimenting with like what not to do, uh, to demonstrate to chat some bad ideas so we're mainly just kind of demonstrating all of the ways that you can do it wrong before we actually end up just doing it the right way um i think that best describes what we're doing <laughs> that was really hard <laughs> <Dun -dun -dun. sighs> oh. Uh, Golden Kappa check? Anyone? Golden Kappas? Why is this not... Why is it expecting that but found Numeref? Let's see what sort of dumbass shit I hard-coded. Yeah, no good. No Golden Kappas in here. Bunch, bunch of losers in here. Original field. Field. Accessor. Uh, globalize, numeref, expected a numeref found a U32. But we're a toop. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Okay, so this needs to take a T that can be a numeref. There's no way this is gonna work. There's no way. It's gonna have to be a T. 
And then we have to have another T? Implement this for a type. Come on, come on, we got this. We got this, chat. We got this, chat. There's no way, there's no way that this is gonna fail. We'll implement specifically, specifically for Numa ref ID, Numa ID, uh, uh, this. The Numa type is a Numa ref, Numa ID. Index tie. Is this just gonna work? Have we just been making this way harder than it needs to be? Because then this actually just takes these in. Well, that doesn't, uh, this returns a self pneuma type. Um, and this is just a self, right? 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 Can we- could we have just done this the whole time? And we're just like spinning in a loop because we're like so fucking deep in our brains of how to even do this in the first place? Because that's- that's very possible. T is globalize ID Numa ID index. Oh, no. T is just copy, I think. All right, we can just comment this out. There you go. Okay, so how do we do it for this? Implement globalize for numeref id index slice t uh, where t is poolable and copy. Um, and t is static. Huh? Huh? Monkas? Monkas? Self Numa type. I knew. I knew we'd. Okay. Um. I also want to say where a uh, slice T is poolable. Right. Not that that really matters in this case. Uh, types are that. Okay, we're good. Now we run this. Up on your skin like a skeleton. You can stand if you didn't shine. Better buy a visor. Now, this is a Numa ref. Numa ID index. That. Mm hmm. ID index. And the rumors that you said you made me who I am Think you're the man, you're so toxic Like Brandy, bitch, you drive me just because I can Dude, fucking Ash Nika is so good, man 
Okay, uh, base. Here we go. Now we get to implement globalize for our base types. Now you beg for a dime. Begging for, begging for, begging for some relevance as soon as I pull up on you. Something like this. Okay, self. Right? No, that's not gonna work. Okay, Val. Yep, we don't need access to the accessor because we don't use it. We just pass through Val. So happy just because I can. Yeah, the man. Begging for, begging for, begging for some relevance as soon as I pull up on your skin like a skeleton. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, and this we can say globalize here. Just so it's more explicit. This won't build. Um, this is just because of really, really, really sloppy things here. Um, this. Um, yeah, so this is where it's really tough for a macro. Uh, I think I might need to make a different macro uh, for when you don't have a lifetime. Because when you do have a lifetime, I'm like assuming that you have a Numa ID lifetime. The problem is in macros, you can't do conditional, like I can't do this, right? Because I have no way of matching on that. Um, and I'm also like hard coding ID here in many places and stuff. So, I think what I have to do is I have to make two implementations of this. I can't have this be conditional. I, I literally do not think it's expressible in Rust uh, macros to have it where you may or may not have a lifetime because then I have to know what the other lifetime is. Right? So all of these where I have ID, all of these can be uh, lifetime, but it has to be lifetime or ID is the problem, right? That's the biggest problem here. Um, like, I don't know what I could do here, right? Like what what can I what can I do to make this work? Right? <laughs> Fucking geek pirate getting stomped on. Uh okay, we're going to match on I think I'm going to explicitly match on this. I think I'm going to make it where you don't get to provide your own lifetime. 
uh, when you implement structures in this, you don't get to specify your own lifetime. Uh, I don't. I mean, we're already hard matching on indexer. Really, we could work on maybe improving these macros a bit. But here, we'll do lifetime, 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 right? So that has to be the same lifetime throughout. Uh, nothing matches on that. This, lifetime, here. So this one, it's, a, it's strictly a structure that has a known lifetime. Okay, and then we have 661, globalize. Uh, trait bounds not satisfied. Globalize not implemented for prim structs. Yeah, that's on, I think, the first one. So this is, uh, this is four types with a lifetime. So basically, things that have lifetimes go into this. And if they don't have a lifetime, then we just have to make a, another copy of this entire macro. And I, I literally do not know if there is a better way of doing this. Because these won't have that. Um, and in this situation, a lot of stuff changes. Now, I have to specify a hard-coded ID. And then there's no longer this. Uh, and then name, there's no lifetimes on that, it's just name. And then there's no lifetime here, it's just ID. I, I literally don't know if there's a better way to do this. Um, no matches. We're probably missing a couple things. Struct name, ident. Yeah, you still need to copy and paste macros with minimal changes. I think you can use conditional compilation of another macro. I don't know if you can. Like, I, 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 know, I think I understand what you're saying, but I, I don't know if that's actually possible. What did I fuck up here? Uh, I need a semi. Is that what it is? It's the semis? I need to get used to putting semis on macros. Um, 371. Uh, yeah, there's no question on that. Yeah, there you go. So, now we match on both. <laughs> um, yeah, so now this works in... In this prim struct, I'm able to globalize this, so I can allocate a prim struct, I can check that it's local, I can then uh, check the value, I can globalize the value, then I can check that that's not local, and I can check that I can access that correctly on the, um, on there, whatever that is. Okay, and then prim struct, um... Does this work on nested structs? Uh, only if they're in numerefs right now because I have to make another copy. Basically, as you kind of saw, I have to... Um... The fuck just happened? Okay, I didn't lose everything. Git commits am maybe working. God, for a second I thought I did like some weird ass undo in Vim. Um, okay, so basically, as we did up here, we implement globalize for the base type, and we also in implement. Oh, I don't think we need this. Check this out. You ready, chat? You ready for some big shit? You ready to open your eyes? Open your eyes. Open your poggers. Wait, wait. 
No, nope. I have to. I okay. I have to. I thought I was. I could generically implement it for all T's that implement copy, but technically, like this structure implements copy. So if I allowed, uh, basically automatically deriving thing, if I derived globe globalized for things that implemented copy then you could globalize a structure without fixing up refs. So I have to explicitly do it. Um, so we implement it for the base types where it's a pass through. We implement it for numerefs of the base types where it will correctly grab the original value and then allocate a new one in the pool, moving it over. And then we implement it for... Um, I guess, wait, if I do this, can I generically implement it for numerefs? We implement this, and then I could implement it for numerefs where the tie implements globalize? Can I do that? Is that sound? If tie implements globalize, then we could auto implement it. This would then mirror uh, how we do it for... So deserialize, that's how we do it for deserialize. So deserialize, we implement it for numerefs where T is deserialized and poolable. Um, and then we do the same thing for slices here. Okay, let's try it. Okay, so uh, implement... Yeah, I think we can do this. I think we have all of the information to do this. Um, unsafe implements ID numa ID implement globalize for T's. Uh, or more specifically for numa ref ID index T's. Um, unsafe implements globalize for numerefs of a T, uh, where T implements globalize, uh, ID numa ID index, and it implements poolable, right? Then this is a numa ref numa ID for the T numa type. I'm just gonna do that to make it explicit. Uh, or yeah, we'll just do this, right? 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 Um, does this reply apply recursively? I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. ID index T. So Because we do this for deserialize, right? We implement deserialize for numerefs, where it kind of is that same recursive uh, sort of shape. And then the implementation that we can provide in this situation is we check if it's local. If it's local, then we copy the reference onto the numa pool. More specifically, we have to globalize 
Yes, we have to globalize the um, T. And T is sized. And that's okay because we have a custom implementation for slices. We have to implement our own implementation for slices. Um, accessor get unchecked val index. That gets us a T. More specifically, what we actually need to do is... We just need to globalize it, right? Is that all we have to do? Uh, T is equal to um, globalize, globalize, accessor of val. And this should then give us a self numa type. So uh, globalize the value. That will do that like pass through thing for for like U32. This will just pass through the U32, right? For those base types. Um, and then all we have to do is we just have to move it to a pool, which is this, right? Right? 3.30. If T is already globalized, does it uh, create unnecessary NUMA allocations? Uh, no. Because it just doesn't. Because it just doesn't do it. It only, it only globalizes if it has to. Um. Uh. How do I constrain that? Um, consider adding an explicit lifetime bound that. Yeah, and that's true. I actually want to enforce this. This is totally correct. Literally verbatim, this is correct, right? Um, the NUMA type, or I can probably just say T. Can I do that? The NUMA type has to, has to live for NUMA ID. Or, uh, T has globalize. Yeah, the NUMA type of T itself has to be NUMA ID. And that's actually true. It does have to be. That's the output NUMA type. Um, the input has to live for ID. Expected associated type found struct NUMAREF. Um, this is T NUMA type, not self NUMA type. Self NUMA type is the output of this. Uh, that's a val. Oh, yeah, we have to get the original. Right? No. We globalize directly on the val, which is the self. That then produces... From self... Uh... Oh, val in this case is actually...
LA get. Uh, accessor. So we look up the value. And then we need copy on that. Makes sense. On, uh, on the Numa type. Uh, T also needs to be copy. Yep. So we take in a numeref. We output the numeref. Here we access or get the numeref to get the contain T. We then copy that. Uh. I kind of don't like that we're making a copy here. We could maybe make globalize work on references. I don't think it would really change anything. Right, so we can make globalize take in a ref self for the value. That way we don't have to make a copy of it. In this case, we just make a copy of it. Um, I mean, I guess eventually we have to make a copy. Like this. This is for slices. Uh, val. Val index. Yep. Since this is a numeref of a slice, it has no effect because we just dot index on it. And then for 342, uh, this is a ref, which means that this accessor dot get now, we can just, we don't have to do the copy here. That expects a numeref, we can deref it there. I think that's better. Now we're making a copy of the reference, which is, it's just a U size. We then pass in a reference to globalize, which will then globalize. It has to make a complete new copy of the NUMA type, the output target for the globalize, and then we throw that into the global's pool. Right? Conflicting. Yep, and now these are conflicting. We have to update these. These now are not going to operate on numerefs. These are just going to operate on the raw structures. Um, and it doesn't check local anymore. And it doesn't allocate it. So this is no longer an allocating version of this. We just literally... Uh, Oh, yeah, we just create a copy of the structure uh, globalizing uh, recursively, right? Literally, we just make a new structure. That's the output, is this. We do nothing anymore. This always succeeds. This is just okay. Right? Uh, val.field. This is ref self. So we just go through and we brrrp all the things. Um, ref. Is that supposed to be a reference there? Yeah. So a reference to the field. Now, uh, hey, Rudy on duty, thank you so much for the four months. Hell yeah. And this is just name. This makes so much more sense. It took a couple iterations to figure out, like, what was the best way to architect this. Uh, that's just name. And then this is just the internal part. Where we return success. 
right? I think this will now just work. And then this will automatically implement for everything. Uh, that needs to be ref. Oh, this is Val. Uh, 629. Gelk. Expected reference. Sure. Yep, globalize now takes a reference. That makes more sense. All our tests are good. So what do we do now? Now we implement globalize for all the base types. It takes in the type. It outputs the type directly. All it does is it literally just copies the type because there's no, there's nothing that needs to be fixed up to globalize those. Then when we want to globalize a slice, uh, it has to be a numa ref. It outputs a numa ID, uh, lifetime slice, and for that we take an ref self. We output a self numa type, which is the owned copy, a new numa ref. Uh, we copy the reference onto the new, so we get the original slice out of the pool. So we, we basically deref the numa ref to get the slice T. We then allocate on the numa pool for temp len. And then we initialize everything with the, uh, copyable, uh, T's. So for each T in there, if it's already on the numa pool, then we just convert it to a numa ID lifetime. Um, and we just refer to the same data. Globalizing here, so we implement globalize for numa refs, um, where the T contained in a numa ref itself is globalizable, and it's poolable, and it's copy, and the output of the uh, globalize function for a T is copy and numa id tagged uh we output a numa id reference which is the same as the input except it's numa id tagged and then the numa type which allows us to have the numa id lifetime on that type uh if it's local if it's if it's already global done if it's local then we globalize we get the original so we deref it such that we have t um, yeah, and we do have to special case this for slices, and that makes sense. So the slice version is just, the only difference is this calls get uncheck slice and then does alex slice. This one globalizes, it does accessor.get, uh, which gets the original, uh, the original T. So this is a ref T. We then globalize that T into the output target NUMA type, and then we allocate the copy data on the NUMA pool itself, and we move it on to that. Uh, if we're already on NUMA, um, no need to do anything, just convert to a NUMA ID. And then for the base types, we derive, we don't derive on NUMA refs. NUMA refs is derived for everything for us. Um, so all we have to worry about is for structures, we just have to go through and make sure we globalize every field. And I think this will, I think this is actually done. Like, this might be universal. This might be complete. Like, like, genuinely, this might be done. Uh, let's try one that we haven't even planned to architect for. Uh, let's try... Um... Let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try something wild. Chat, you ready to get wild? You ready to get fucking wild, chat? Let's go. Let's go. Let's let's go. Uh globalize fancy struct. 
Okay, we're gonna have a Numeref to a uh let's try a slice in here. And then we'll make another thing that's globalized, and this will be like foostruct. And this is going to have a, a D numeref ID index of a U8. And then this is going to have a, a numeref to an ID index foostruct uh, ID index. Right? So we're going to have a structure that has primitive fields. We'll put a primitive in here as well, just for funsies. F U8. Okay, so we have a structure that has primitives in it. It has a, a reference to a slice. It has a reference to another structure. And that structure, uh, a reference to a structure which is allocated on the heap in its own thing. And then that itself has its own allocation inside to a U8. <sighs> okay, so let's create it. So we're going to make a prim struct, A, B. Uh, this is going to be Alex slice. And fuck it. The slice is going to be numerefs. So the slice itself is references to U128s. Okay? So we have... This is like nested inside of a slice. I think this is like kind of all the permutations at least of like one level of depth. Okay, so we're just going to be figuring this out now. Yeah? Yeah, bruv. Should be fucking easy. Right? Can you directly use foostruck without numeref? Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, numerefs only have to cover things that actually have a slice. Right? Anything that's unsized, we have to put into a numeref. Otherwise, what's this accent? I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what fucking accent I'm doing, mate. Brav? Brav? <laughs> What's up, uh, Destrun AS? <laughs> How's it going, mate? You having a good day? You having a laugh? Yeah? LA dot Alec 6969. This is the slice. We'll put fucking 10 entries in here. I don't, I don't fucking care, right? Or unwrap that. Then we'll make a D, Ellie dot Alec, a foostruck. Then we'll have a D in here, Ellie Alec and a 5U8. Yeah? 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 Unwrap that. Uh huh. Unwrap that. I don't want to call that yet. I just want to make sure. Uh, expected an option. Ah, okay. Uh, what? Uh-oh. That's no good. Oh, uh, let's comment these out. Oh, uh, fuck you know, mate. Is it fuck? What's broken? What's broken? Is it the slice of numerefs? Yeah? Is it that? Unused parameter? What about this one? Yeah? Yeah? Can you give it the D? Okay, this works. So something... Something is wrong uh, with... with C, right? <laughs> ah, fuck. Now I gotta spit... Uh, e, uh, aquí, uh, estoy un error. Uh, no estoy bien porque es malo cuando no compilo. So, uh, 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 uh mm. sí. It's muy malo, uh, porque, uh, yo quiere, uh, compile. Y, y, 
uh, Aora, uh, uh, El Code, no compile. <laughs> Gotta re up that Duolingo subscription. <laughs> Perfect five out of seven worth 10k points. <laughs> okay, uh, what's going on here? So it seems, okay, first let's comment this out. Let's make sure that it was working in this case. So I do think this works. The nested structures and stuff works. Let's try it. Well, we didn't call globalize. Let's call globalize on it now. Yes! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Uh, assert that uh, uh, the Numa Allocator gets the Gelk. Uh, so that's going to give us access to um, the Primstruct. Uh, we want to assert that D is uh, not local. So that's making sure that D has gotten pushed up. Uh, that is index. D got pushed up. Okay. Then we can do na.get na.get on D dot D, which is now this D, and we can see if that got pushed up. And it did. So this structure was pushed up. This structure was pushed up. And this field was pushed up to the point that now we should be able to do assert that na.get.na.get. blah 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 dot d is equal to this field, this 5u8. We'll say this is a uh, 41. We'll just change this. Um, which means that we're actually derefing it all the way through, only accessing it through that pool. Um, and and I'm pretty sure we we did this. Uh, just deref that. It knows the type. Yeah, that passes. So by calling globalize, we've pushed up recursively this entire entire structure and all of its references. So we've basically moved an entire object from one heap to another, which is fucking dank. Okay, I'm sorry, but this is sick. I kind of didn't expect this to work. Holy shit. Like, we got to clean up a lot of this code, but this is sick. Let us be going. <laughs> um, okay. So, we need to fix this C. I don't know why. Why would a uh, reference to a slice of references not work? Get off my lawn. Thank you so much for the gifted submarine. And you, you hit a good target. Oh, that was a targeted one. I thought that was a random one. Uh, that's a good target. <laughs> Hell yeah. Thank you so much. Cheers. <laughs> okay. Uh, why does this not work? Um, so this would be on this. Requires that NUMA ID must outlive static. T is pullable copy and static. T is pullable. Um, where do we have static? We require that T is ID, right? T might not live long enough. Where T... Can we do this?
that's not the problem. So this is uh, specifically a problem with a slice of numerefs, I think. Um, so if we have a slice, we should, like, slices should work, right? Slices should work just fine. Okay, so let's uh, make an R, and this is going to be a numeref ID index uh, this. So it is specifically uh, these that don't work. So we have to do an LA Alex slice uh, or Alec 771. Okay. Um, oops, other way. There we go. Okay, so it is specifically a problem with numerefs inside of a slice. So let's figure out why. Um, so here's a slice. In this case, a T is a numeref. Is a T is a numeref poolable? Yes. Is it copy? Yes. Is it static? No. It is actually ID. Okay, T might not live long enough. Um, right? Because T, a numeref lives for ID. A numeref is not uh, static. Right? If we do this, it'll say has to outlive static. I'm guessing. Doesn't live. Yeah, numa ID doesn't live long enough. Okay. What's happening here? A quick summary? Uh -huh. We can't really do a quick summary right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're writing a very, very, very sophisticated high performance allocator, pool allocator, and NUMA thing for deserializing and mutational fuzzing. And we are very, very deep in the weeds right now. Uh, T might not live long enough. And that's because of this. And we can't have this live for two lifetimes. Correct. I think this is correct. Um, what's your question, babag? Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so we can't move a T. Oh, this needs to be globalized. It needs to be this. Uh, okay, let's, uh, 293, parameter T might not live long enough. Uh, correct. This is going to be T pneuma type. T implements globalized, which means that we know the pneuma targeted type for it. Um, we have a T, T has to be globalized. It has to be poolable, it has to be copy. The NUMA type has to be uh, copy and NUMA ID. This has to be ID. We have no more statics. So that's good. So it has to be globalized, poolable, copy. This also has to be poolable, copy, and NUMA ID. This is for NUMA I ID index T. This is NUMA ID index T NUMA type. Oh, we got a first plus E redemption. You're going to be the ice cream cone because it's right on top again. <laughs> the waffle cone. Hell yeah. <laughs> ML forgets to be that. Uh, mm, what do we got here?
Um, hmm. Waffle cone, let's go. Fuck yeah. Okay, uh, I think we can make this work. We just have to get everything right. You know? But I think this is now the correct, uh, generic. So, uh, Numa Alec, this is failing because... Uh, no, that returns Numa type, so that's correct. Um, uh, mismatch types. Expected associated type found parameter T. Yes. We need to, uh, we need to globalize the type. Um, is temp get unchecked index, right? Uh, so this is unsafe. So this is, uh, oh, actually this is just get a reference to the original, uh, slice elements. Okay, uh, globalize the slice elements. This is what we weren't doing. Uh, temp is now, uh, globalize, globalize, uh, accessor val. So now we'll globalize the slice elements. Um, and if that happens to be a numeref, which it is, then it's fine. So we just globalized this. Uh, and then, okay. Right, so we get the original. Let's go! Let's fucking go! Easy! Easy! Holy dick! So all of this stuff got moved. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. I think this is now fully featured. I think any I anything that I can implement poolable on, I can also globalize now. Holy shit. So the other things that we can do for better perf is we make a lot of copies that we shouldn't be doing. Right, we make a lot of stack copies. Here we don't, that doesn't matter. Um, here, I mean, that's a reference. Um, this is a, yeah. So like in this situation here, I guess Numa type in this case is this is just a numeref, so that's basically free. The the slow part is actually on our impulse. So these impulse here, this will create a new copy of the structure on the stack, and then it will move it into a global here where it allocates it. So like this, where we get the Numa type for the T. What we should probably do is we should um We should, like, basically allocate the uninitialized memory and then fill it in field by field rather than creating the whole structure on the stack and pushing it out, right? That's the sort of thing that we could do to optimize this, but most things you deserialize are going to be pretty small structures. Like, arrays might be large, but arrays won't have that problem. Arrays won't be, uh, or not arrays, uh, slices. Um... How's it going? It, well, now it's going fucking great. Uh, I think we just finished. I think we can cross this off. Globalizing is done. Unfucking real. I I did not think we would have that done this stream. Um. Wow. Wow. Uh, we need to make a. We probably need to bang out this. The thread safe type database so that we can like do maybe an example. Um, so the big thing that we can do now is I can, we've globalized this. And now what I should be able to do is I can take the top level globalized allocation and I can, uh, 
I can make a copy of it locally, right? So check this out. So now we can localize the global allocation. Or actually, here's a great example. We're going to globalize that shit. Um, then we're going to flush the uh, local allocator, right? So this is going to give us a new local allocator instance. So we're going to wipe the local pool. So now the, the object no longer exists locally at all. Um, so if I were to do like uh, la.alloc5u8, you'll see that this will be... Um, uh, or panic. So this will now be, um, this should be index, uh, it should be index zero, right? 8,000, which is index zero. Because we now have reset the local allocator. But the global allocator still has those allocations. So if I were to push that out here, and I were to say, like, moose is none... And then we'll say moose is gelk. Uh, and then outside, we should be able to do moose equals moose dot unwrap. I think we can do this. Right? So now we persist where that was allocated, which I think we can do. Um... Mismatch types. Uh, what's wrong here? Expected option got numeref. Oh, I gotta, yeah, shadow it. Um, okay. So now we have moose. And if we take a look at what moose is. Um. Uh, fancy. Okay, these don't have debug. Sure. Yep, so it panics with 5C, which makes sense. It makes sense that the top-level structure is allocated nearly last because it has to deserialize from the bottom, or it has, to, um, it has to allocate from the bottom to the top. So now that that is complete, um, check this out. So now I can say la.localize moose. Um... So this is now going to give me a reference that I can use for local allocations. It's still backed entirely by Moose in this case, I think. Maybe not. Okay, maybe everything falls apart at this point. Localize... LA... Localize Moose... Requires one must outlive static. Whoa, okay. I guess I can't pass things in, can I? I mean, this should be a NUMA ID allocation. 759. This. Where do we have static? Parameters? Oh my god! That's because it's an indexer. An indexer actually should be ID, I think. Uh, I mean, that can be static. Is this only a problem with that one line? You would never really be doing check locals in a different context. Let's see. Is this going to push this all the way down to be a problem? I think so. Okay, okay. It's not just that. Um, it's way more complex than that. Um, I think we need to get that reference from the local pool. Localize requires... Oh, yeah! I don't think I can move an allocation into local 
I can query that uh, from the... Um, I can query that through the type database. So I should be able to... We're gonna have to... We're gonna have to quickly, 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 quickly... Uh, we're gonna have to implement, if I'm not mistaken... So this should build, this should run, this should be fine. So we have to write... We do have to do this. We have to write a thread safe type database. Um, and I'm gonna do this by... Uh, this is in parameters. So, basically, we need to implement, uh... How do you do config standard? Does anyone know? Do I have to make my own config flag? I think I have to make my own config flag for that. So we're going to very, 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 very temporarily... Here's what we're gonna do. We're going to implement uh, a type database. Um, implement type database uh, atomic. I don't know why you call it atomic. We should call it like sync type database. Um, for uh, sync TDB. Uh, for a global, uh, for a NUMA pool. This is just going to be a mutex now. Sync TDB. Actually, an RW locks makes more sense in this case. Um, bam, this is now... I'll do a, 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 a mutex. I don't really give a shit. Um, mute uh, lock dot unwrap dot entry. And then this is db uh, lock dot unwrap dot get. I don't think I can get directly off that. Can't find mutex in the scope. Yeah, we're just gonna say uh, extern create std use standard sync mutex, right? Um, default not implemented for this. Can I uh, derive default? Uh, index is, does not have default. Okay, yep, we have to do this again. Uh, default for this. Mutex new on, uh, sync. Uh, TDB, let's go. Okay. Nailed it. Then up here, instead of null TDB... This is now going to be uh, sync tdb u16, and we'll say parameters. We'll just pull it in right now. Okay, everything passed, which means that we're actually pushing things to this database. Yeah, check this out. Print ln registering uh, x in this uh, at this, which is the index uh, type index. Uh, standard. Check this out. Doesn't implement debug on index. Okay, we can add that, actually. Uh, let's just add debug on this. And display. Um. Yep, we'll pull it in. Uh, use alloc format debug display. What other things do I have in there? Uh, Rust, uh, Alec. How many formats do we have? Uh, I want. Fuck was it? Alec. Alec. Formats. The options I have are. Oh, there's a fuck ton. Display, debug, octal, lower hex, upper hex, pointer, binary, lower exp, upper exp. I think we want lower upper hex. Uh, 
Octal, lower hex, upper hex, binary. Uh, plus debug, plus display, plus octal, plus lower hex, plus upper hex, plus binary, plus static. Okay, and then if I do no capture. Yeah, look at this. Registering at 0, at 50, 54, 58, 62, 66. You can see all the things that we're allocating here. Fuck yeah. So we are pushing things into the global database now. Um, okay. So the question is... Um, can I now, inside another scope, and I don't know if I've tried this before, a uh, foo dot... Or this can be the NUMA accessor dot types uh i don't know what's uh we'll just grab the u8s for now and then this is a closure and it gives us the stuff right uh expected another generic i forget what it is but oh that's the closure type okay so we can do this and then let's panic on uh on a stuff just on stuff, actually. This should tell us all of the U8s. And we have one U8? Is that accurate? We only deserialize one U8? That's true. We have one U8 here. This is a U8, but it's not actually stored in its own object, right? Since this is not stored in its own object, it doesn't show up here. Uh, so we should be able to look that up. Let's try a primstruct then. Let's do this. We should only have one prim struct, uh, and I have to give this an index, and we're using a U16 for indexing here. And there's one at 5C, okay. The question is, can I localize this now? And I don't know if I can. Uh, panic. So when we localize this, it will be, yeah, it's the 5C. It's the original. So we can, so we cleared out the local accessor. Now what we can do is we made that mutable thing, alloc mute. Check this out. So we allocated a bunch of stuff. We cleared out our local pool. Now what we can do is we can alloc mute. Um, we can alloc mute on a na.get of this. Um, so now we have a numa mute of that. And I can say temp dot. Uh, let's replace a field. So let's replace one of these u128s so let's get a random u128 uh so we'll get uh we'll just query this uh let me temp is none uh temp is equal to stuff three the third u128 uh temp local uh let temp is temp dot unwrap Okay, and then we should be able to do uh, uh, mute. Let mute uh, ref is equal to la dot get mute on temp ref dot. Uh, let's just replace. Let's just grab, let's just make another U on 28 G. Uh, Numa ref ID uh, U on 28. Okay. So I'll have G, LA, Alec, uh, one, two, three. Oh, and this is going to be, we'll add the index. This is the index of the allocation. Uh, G. Um, 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 um. Uh, index. Uh, 
Uh, okay, and then we have RF dot... RF dot G is equal to temp. Uh, indexer for U128. Uh, stuff should be a slice. What did I break? 748. Oh, um, uh, as U128. Uh, and then unwrap. Seven sixty seven. Is there a straightforward way to communicate with a running pro? Yeah, proc pid fd. Seven sixty seven. Indexer is not satisfied. Oh yeah, because that's yeah. We want to get a un twenty eight. Um, and then unwrap that. That's a numeraf. And what's going on here? Stuff. Oh, some. Okay, we're just not even paying attention to what we're writing anymore. Uh, and then that expects immutable reference. Temp. And yeah, we have to unwrap this. Then uh, that has to be a mute temp. Okay, we're like, you know. And then this will fail because it expects a numa ref. Uh, temp. Oh, uh, temp six nine. Okay, so that's the value that we randomly picked. Now this is wrong because we have to localize this because that's a global. Bam. Fuck. Uh, and a get stuff zero deref. Um, 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 ooh, ooh, dot get. Ah, yeah, we have to implement a. Oh, all we have to do is localize this. La dot get. Um, we have to localize it. Which will convert it to ID lifetimes. So, uh, la.localize stuff zero. Shit. Uh, lr is la localize this. Ooh, l, uh, that has to do type conversions now. Yeah, localize. This isn't the same T. This has to support different T's. Uh, where R is poolable and sized. So this is now unsafe. Um, but that's okay. Um... This is just going to be, uh, yeah, T has to implement, um, globalize. And then this has to be, uh, the T, uh, numa, numa type. What was it? Numa type. Numa type. This will take in a numa type and this will give a T. Uh, globalize. Globalize it takes an ID and an index. Actually, a NUMA ID as well, right? N 
nice, maybe? That's a Primstruct. Type annotations needed. So, uh, if T implements globalize, then we can convert from the global type with NUMA ID into the local type, uh, T. Uh, give it an explicit type. Okay. This is going to be, uh, uh, it is, a uh, numeref. Uh, U16, primstruct U16. I'm surprised Russ can't figure that out. Oh my god! <laughs> then we did it. So what we've done is we've allocated a bunch of stuff on the global pool. We then push that to the, uh, or we allocate a bunch of stuff on the local pool. We push that to the uh, global pool. Then we reset our local allocator such that the local allocator is wiped clean. We get a random U128. We uh, get the top level prim struct. We make a copy of the top level prim struct only. Um, we get mutable references to it, and then we replace a field with a temp 69. Now, what you'll find is this is the only allocation that occurred. So now we can assert that L, uh, temp dot, um, temp dot, uh, index check local, right? So the um the top level structure is local. Um and it should be that should pass, but everything in it la.get So since that's a local, we use the local accessor, then we can do dot index on this. So temp.index uh and what are our fields on here? So every single thing inside of here crdg uh, C, R, D, and G. None of these will be local. Um, uh, C, R, D, G. Temp is allocated local. Uh, R, F. Uh, LA temp. Um. Oh, found Numa mute. Yeah, because we have to commit it. Temp is equal to temp dot, uh, register. Is that what we called it? Uh, no, it's, uh, LA register temp. That always succeeds. And here we go. So now, all basically what we've done is we've fuzzed. We've done like a, a fake fuzz here where we have, we've gotten the original primstruct from the global pool, but we want to change a field in that structure. Um, so to change that field, we have to do a shallow copy. So we do a shallow copy of the top level structure. We replace the one field with a reference to another global thing. So the only thing locally allocated here is just the top level structure. But every single field in here is on the global pool, which means it's been duplicated. It's close to your NUMA node. And yeah, this works. Everything works. It's done. Literally, it's done. <clears throat> right? So basically, this allows me to construct very temporary objects extremely fast. Then, this allows me to push those temporary objects to a global place if I want to archive them for later. 
I can then reset my local allocator. I can get a an ex like I can look up an existing type. I can look up another existing type. I can decide I want to do a small mutation to that type by allocating a top level structure. But keep in mind, like I don't have to reallocate these. None of these things get reallocated. I can do this probably pretty fast. Let's see. Let's see how quickly. Um, let's see how quickly I can do this. So I'm going to probably be bottlenecking on the mutex being slow. Um, I'm not going to, I'm going to get rid of the register stuff. Normally you wouldn't actually register something if you're going to serialize it. Let's just put this in a loop here. See what happens. Uh, four blah and zero, I don't know, that? That's probably going to be instance. Okay, that's instance. Is this actually doing things? It is. <laughs> it's definitely doing things. Uh, standard time instance now. Print LN, uh, or just panic. Uh, this IT elapsed as sex F64. Uh, standard. Mm -hmm. X turn crate standard. That got optimized out. Hmm. Um, is it because of the panic? Because that's doing something. I think it. Okay. Uh, no capture. Oh, that's printing every time. Sick. That would explain it. Yeah, it's definitely doing stuff. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> so this is mutations per second? Oh, we're doing, uh, what is that? Uh, 15 million mutations per second? That's pretty good. <laughs> And keep in mind, this is structured data. What we're mutating is a U32, a U16, a slice of U128s, uh, a pointer to pointers to U128s, or a slice, a pointer to a slice of pointers of U128s, a foo struct, all that shit. And all that is hitting uh, local references. Yeah, this is really good. <laughs> this is extraordinarily good. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm happy with that. That's pretty good. Uh, wow. Wow. And keep in mind, this is with like a shitty uh, uh, mutex-based type database. And we have to hit that type database every iteration. Every iteration of this loop, we're like getting a lock. <sighs> like we're bottlenecking 100% on that lock. I can tell you that right now. This accesses and releases a lock, and this accesses and releases a lock. Um, holy shit. Yeah, so this, like, isn't even close. It's probably off by, like, a factor of 10. Uh, basically, it's just instant. Um, yeah. And then when we go to serialize this data, first of all, we can save cache copies of the serialized representations such that imagine this imagine that we save the serialized representation of a of everything as we deserialize it which then means as long as we haven't made a local copy where we've mutated it so like for the top level stuff we'll like emit the top level structure but when we hit these numerefs that are on the global pool anything on the global pool is constant 
which means that we can pre-serialize that data. So we can just know ahead of time, like, oh, just fucking bang out these bytes. That's the data that it will be. And you can do that at the top level of each nested level. So this literally could just turn into like a mem set or like a mem copy of the top level things. And the only things that you end up having to uh, re-serialize are the things you mutated. But that, you can't get around that. Um, so yeah, this is really good. This is, this is incredibly good. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I'm glad everything works exactly as I expected, and I'm really excited to replace uh, the version of this that I made offline, which was uh, the same thing, except I just put a big unsafe block around everything and then got rid of all the lifetimes. <laughs> so this is actually, like, strongly uh, checked at compile time. Um... But yeah, this is, this is hot. This is hot. Uh, let's see if we can get a Miri uh, update. Let's see if Miri, let's see if we got a Miri this week or this day. Uh, rust up components add Miri. Please. Fuck! Ha! Ah, what is the way to do this? I want to install Miri, but I also want to be able to update Rust. Uh, 0705 had it. Uh, rust up, toolchain install nightly, um, 05. Uh, rust up plus nightly components add, uh, Miri. Okay. Uh, cargo nightly 2022-07-05 cargo test or just test. Yep. Miri test. Yes. Add allow downgrade to update to a version that has... Really? Rust up. Uh, tool chain remove nightly. Where? Components? What, where? Uh, okay. How do I do Miri here then? Add specific components. See Miri. Uh, 
I think, I think we did it. Uh, 0704. Syncing that. Latest update that. Uh, skipping, skipping, downloading, blah, blah, blah. So now our uh, Rusty version. Now we should be on 704. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted. Uh, because now I can do Rust up update, and this will try to update it, but it will give up because there was, uh, it was missing Miri. Okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. Uh... Uh, rust up update. Uh, okay. Cargo test. Cargo test release. Cargo Miri test. <sighs> Will it pass Miri? Will it pass Miri? Why is it 04, not 05? I don't know. I don't care. Yeah, passed. Everything. Everything. Uh, let's see if Miri is, like, working. Working. Let's do, uh... Uh... Yeah, if we change this to const, and then we do, like, pointer is... Uh, pointer as mute. This should break Miri, I think. Um. If this code path is hit. No. Um. Do we hit this? Get mute pointer? We probably do. Maybe it doesn't care because it starts off as mute here from unsafe cell. I'm trying to think, like, what's a good example of something that would be wrong? Cons versus mute is strict, mostly cosmetic. Well, provenance will affect it. So, it, this actually started as mute. Um, and since that started as mute, it's, it's fine. Um... What's a good thing I could break? It's so hard to make undefined behavior when my code is so fucking perfect. To be honest, I write my code very defensively where things fail catastrophically bad if you fuck anything up. Um. Get unchecked. Mary, okay. You got some more stuff. No longer has any effect. Passed. <laughs> Passed. Easy, dude. Yeah, come on. You got you got some harder shit for me. See, it's just easy. All right, uh, I gotta go. I've actually like have an appointment here pretty soon. Um, I'm finally getting my ears, uh, ears impressioned, so I can uh, get those headphones I bought a year ago and didn't have made because uh, I didn't get them ear impressions. Um, I mean, this is literally everything works, uh, and we did this. Um, obviously, it's hacky. You know that that. Database is kind of hacky, but, uh, yeah, git status, git commits, am, uh, globalizing, and Miri passes. Uh, okay, so what we need to do is we need to find someone to raid. Dirt boys?
Weed shop stream incoming. Uh All right, uh we're going to raid Primogen, but you need to you need to bully him for using JavaScript, okay? You got to you got to like, you know, you know, ask if he's not smart enough to use like a compiled language, you know. Just uh don't be a dick, but but be 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 funny about it, you know. Give him a give him a good little uh, love, little love kiss. Uh, see you later.